from I. Six, seven for us or eight? Are you sure eight? Five, six, seven. Anyone like to join the council table? <laughs> Help us make some decisions. No, it's 15 with Mangai Māori. It's 15. So we have to have... Oh, so it is seven. Sorry, you're right. 14, not 15. Well, that, that's very true. Norm is worth two. <laughs> OK, so good morning, everyone. Let's get going since we have a quorum. Um, welcome to the, goodness, what is it, 23rd of February, the first meeting of the Infrastructure Operations Committee of 2021. Let's hope we have many more uh, in person so we can see and share each other's delightful faces and company. No more lockdowns. Right, um, so let's crack on. Uh, I have a couple of apologies, Councillor uh, Forsyth, for full session today. Um, she's expecting her first grandbaby, so that's great news for her. Um, Councillor Thompson has a flat tyre. This is why she should ride in a car and not a bike. <laughs> so she'll be joining us soon. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Richard, where is he? Bike work? Yes, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, Councillor Pascoe for lateness, and he'll be attending on Zoom. Councillor Kish is on Zoom, so this she's not an apology. Are there any other apologies? No? There being none? Oh. oh. That's right, you do. Thank you, Councillor. That's great feedback there. So with that, I'll move that the apologies be received, seconded by Councillor Gallagher. All those in favour? Any against? That's carried. Um, I just wanted to say we have the lovely, lovely Tania in the hot seat today. Please go easy on her. I've promised we will go easy on her. Um, the general manager has had to attend a family um, situation. <laughs> so she's away for the day. Um, confirmation of the agenda. Now, item eight, the Regional Council Public Transport Update has had to be pulled. Um, Andrew Wilson is unable to attend this morning uh, for personal reasons, so that's gone. So that's a good thing, probably. Um, a shorter agenda is better. There are no other changes uh, to the agenda, so with that, I'll move that the agenda be received, seconded by the Deputy Mayor. All those in favour? Any against, that's carried. Now, it is quite a lengthy agenda today, committee members, um, and obviously there's some topics that we're all very, very interested in. So I'm going to ask you that you uh, keep your... I'm just going to go to everybody once for questions. So please make sure that you um, organise your questions and when I come to you, get them all out, unless there's something really burning, but otherwise I think we'll be here uh, for a very long time today and we want to be efficient with our time. Uh, any declarations of interest? Uh, yes, Mr Chair. Um, the item 9, Mr O'Donoghue, I serve with him on the Community Radio Board, but apart from that, there's no relationship to the matter that we'll be speaking about. OK, thank you, Councillor Gallagher. Uh, so they'll be noted. We don't need to move. No, we don't move declarations. That's noted. Right, let's move on to the uh, public forum. Now we have... One speaker in the public forum and committee members, you'll see um, at the back of your agenda there is a written submission from Roger Stratford um, as well. He's not here to speak. We were not Roger. What? No, but it's a very good submission this time, unlike his Beale Cottage one. <laughs> um, so that's there for committee members. So we'll, uh, I'd like to invite Richard down from Bike Waikato. Good morning, Richard. Richard, you know the drill. You've got five five minutes, and um, allow a couple of minutes for questions within that time, if you'd like. Great. So over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity to come and talk. Um, I'd like to talk about some of the aspects of the infrastructure operations general manager's report, um, primarily around cycling. So, Bike Waikato has this vision for cycling across Hamilton and the Waikato, and 
I think it's quite a shame that um, one of the people that was supposed to be here happened to suffer from some potentially some maintenance issues across the city. So a flat tire. That's probably not one of the things we we're going to talk about, but it's one of the things we probably could talk about is the size of our roads and what the state of them are for cyclists. We know that cars can deal with that sort of stuff a bit more, but bicycles probably need a bit more maintenance and it's probably something that we should keep in mind. So on to the rest. Um, there's, some, there's some great things happening. I mean, we can't deny that. We're making some really good progress with adding some extra infrastructure and making the, the city safer. But Bike Waikato, I mean, there's plenty of people in Bike Waikato that want to see things happen faster. Hmm. Like, everybody wants things to happen faster. I uh, would like to see more emphasis. I mean, it was evident this morning, sitting, standing in the CBD, while I was um, doing some other work, the number of cyclists that are out there. It's not something that's off on the side now. It's something that people want to do to get themselves into the city. They're, they're trying to come up with other ways. People are wanting to leave their car at home, and so we need to be giving them the option to do that. Um, I think there's been overwhelming support for things like that. Was it more than 80% of respondents to the questions and surveys for the biking micromobility plan would like to have safe infrastructure? Two thirds of the community has said that they would get on a bike if it was safe for them. That's a lot of people that we could get out of vehicles and into some other means of transport which would help, I mean, idealistically, solving so many problems that we have might not solve all of them, but it would probably go a long way. So we want to see, we'd like to see more. Uh, I know that things don't quite happen like that, but having cycling as part of our everyday agenda, while there, are, there is a need for um, individual projects, um, we'd like to see more than a keystone project every, was it six or seven years? Um, making sure that we connect our city, effectively ungapping the map, filling in all the pieces so people on bikes can get across the city just as easily and safely as somebody that chooses to do it in the car. So we agree that we're making good progress, but we would like to see a lot more. We'd like to see what, what we don't really see is a vision. What is the vision? I mean, there's, there's priorities of getting more people walking and cycling. That's great. But what is a vision? We've got a city that is relatively flat, could be one of the best cities in the country for cycling and walking, e-scooters, um, to be able to get people around. What is our vision? So we're asking to, to understand what that vision is going to be. How is the city going to be led to fulfil that vision, so more than just people that want to ride their bikes, but anybody that decides that it might be a good idea can get on their bike, enjoy it, have fun, and do it safely. So our biggest, our biggest ask is, how are we going to do that? What are we going to do? Thank you. Thanks, Richard. There's a, a bit of a lineup of questions, so I'll start with Councillor McPherson. Thanks. Thanks for your submission. Um, you're concerned, you said, about the fact that we th we're not moving fast, we're not proposing to move fast enough. Would you be even more concerned to read some of the information coming out from Waka Kotahi, the NZTA, about uh, no money, new money at all being available even for the existing programs? So I've only, I've only just heard about this yesterday, mm. and so I haven't delved into it very deeply. It's really concerning because one of the things that at least Bike Waikato submitted on, on the GPS, at least, was why are we only getting 2% of the entire transport budget for walking and cycling and adding in some public transport? So, and, and it's one of the things that we'll be asking all the time, is why is there only such a small impact where we could be making much bigger changes elsewhere? It's really concerning, and until until I've found out some more information, we've found out some more information. Um, don't really have much else to say. And, you, and you'd share our concern that... Oh, it's um, that huge uh, concerns. No, hang on. Uh, mm. That, that uh, the funding, even the funding we've put in, can't be matched at the moment by NZTA. I mean, it would probably be worth understanding why is that the case. 
um, like as is it that we're too slow to the um, to the counter, or is it because there is just none that's been taken elsewhere, or somebody else has used more than they needed to? Mm. Um, yeah, that's look it's at transmission galley. Thank you. Okay, thank you, um, Councillor McPherson. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Chair Ange. Angela. Uh, Richard, thanks for your submission. Um, and uh, you, have you, you've been through the general manager's report. You mentioned that. Yep. There's um, there's some stuff in there about um, Anzac Parade, Victoria Street, mm. that that bridge area there, um, and attempts to um, to widen the cycle lane there and squeeze in cycles amongst cars and buses. Uh, I'd just be and, and pedestrians. I'd just be interested in your views on that because uh, I, I tend to. I think some of us tend to favour separating as much as possible. Mm. Uh, you know, cyclists from cars and the rest. But this, this is sort of squeezing them in, and I worry about that. Do you, do you favour that doing work like this, or would you rather some well, sort of alternative route was found? I think it comes sort of down to um, Dave's question as well. It, it, it obviously comes down to money, doesn't it? And so, and the city with a, with a river and bridges, um, we've made good tracks with Claudelands Bridge. Um, we we were presented with the, some of the, some of the design for Anzac Parade minus the bridge last year and commented on it. We had Bike Waikato had concerns. Um, the the plans in the report, the first that we've seen of the bridge. Um, if we can make the space, then yes, um, I think we should be doing that because the bridge itself is not ideal for probably one of our narrowest ideal for cyclists and vehicles. Um, comes down to this, this bold vision. Um, what, what do we want? Do we want to be squeezing cyclists, pedestrians and vehicles into the same no. space? Or do we want to make a call <coughs> that maybe vehicles have had their time in a particular space and now we're going to hand it over to some other users? Um, yeah. So in some cases, it might be the way to get us started, but it shouldn't be the way that we carry on. Um, the walking cycling bridge proposal um, that's been brought into Eastern Pathways would be an ideal, mm -hmm. not a replacement, but an ideal um, something to sit alongside the other connections. But that's not going to happen right now. So getting something in that still works makes sense, but we shouldn't just leave it as that being the solution. Mm -hmm. well, just a very quick follow-up question. Would Claudelands Bridge be a better way to divert some of this, or is that oh. too far away, or, or it, it, I mean, if we've done the work on Claudelands yeah. Bridge, would that not be a better place to divert I think cyclists? we have to remember that we've <clears> got a transport network across the entire city for people to get wherever they want, however they want, and we should remember that people on bikes want to be able to do the same thing safely Just as well. Maybe some areas are not going to be as safe as others, especially right now, and part of it might be due to the behaviour of other road users as well as the infrastructure. So, yes, we do have Claudelands Bridge, but what happens when you get to the end of Claudelands Bridge? Where does it get you? How do you get to Claudelands Bridge? Like, currently, you can't. There is a proposal from Victoria Street, but if you're using the Western Rail Trail, one of our signature projects, how do you get to Anzac Parade or Claudelands Bridge? These are some of the things that we need to understand. What are we going to do? What what could we do? Okay. Uh, and make a call. Thanks, Richard. Thanks, Thank Chair. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Gallagher. <coughs> Two questions. First of all, can you confirm that Bike by Cuddle will be making very comprehensive submissions we will. to the long term plan? Yes. Uh, we're we're working mm. on multiple or mm. sitting down tonight to work on multiple right. submissions. Around uh, education for cyclists, um, we have some really excellent river pathways and currently they're sort of based, I think, on the Oz Road share with Kia. Mm -hmm. But I think there are potential problem. It can be problematic in terms of um, speeding cyclists and pedestrians such as myself who probably are wandering uh, and I'm wondering whether whether there's more work needs to be done in that area. I mean, um, in terms of your submission, I'm sure. just trying to think what overseas examples are. I think um, it's we've also got to think about the fact that why are all these cyclists on these routes? Because it was probably some of the safest places that oh, they yeah. feel it is. And so, is the infrastructure of that. a size mm. for that, or do we need to be making many more areas 
more desirable for cyclists. So the pedestrians, the children, the people on scooters have somewhere to yeah. ride. Uh, in the LTP, it would be very interested in your idea of, of a delinear, you know, where you have the cycle green th and the pedestrian, you know, where you divide a path, maybe make the path wider. I'm interested, I'll be interested in your views I think, on yeah, I think it's, it better for both. It comes down mm. to, obviously it comes mm. down to a money thing, doesn't mm. it? And mm. how many people are, are we expecting? Are we mm. expecting to, to cater for the next five years or for the next mm. 25 years? Because mm. things could be very, very different then. Right. No, thank you. OK, yeah. we're going to have to crack on here. We've sure. still got a big long list. <laughs> Councillor Bunting. Oh, look, actually, in the interest of time, I'll hold. Thank you. Are you sure? Yeah, no, I'm fine. This is got... your bag, cycling. <laughs> yeah, I've got plenty of questions later on, so OK, thank all you. right, thank you. Um, uh, Mayor Southgate. Oh, thank you. And uh, Just in terms of uh, that bridge, Anzac Bridge, and, and, and not necessarily conflict with private motor vehicles, but passenger transport. You're right, it's a very narrow bridge, isn't it? If, um, if we could get some advancement or bring forward the walking and cycling bridge and then connect through Boyce High, etc., that would that be the preference? As the options stand, yes. When you think about it, it moves the cyclists out of many conflict zones hmm. um, in terms of, I think we talked about it the last time I was here, Effectively, um, about the risks involved in the, the public transport route on Clyde Street. Mm. So thinking about, yes, yeah. maybe we have the space on Clyde Street and it makes sense, but if we think about who do we want to encourage? Mm. I, I mean, I'd definitely like to encourage my children to ride along there. Living on Queen's Ave, um, my boys are likely going to go to Boys High unless other options pop up. How am I going to feel safe for them to ride across the bridge and many other mm. clearance? Mm. Um, and so, so on that matter, you'd be if we could come up with a supportive of the the mind you, you haven't seen the draft LTP. I'm aware of that, but you'll have had some conversations um, coming from the Western Rail Trail, which is you're coming from Queen's Ave, right? Um, making it safe through town and then being on that bridge as opposed to Victoria Bridge. If or we could would have you use Claudlands. I mean, I, u I use Claudins at the moment because it's the best of the bunch. But mm. if we could have what? Safe, attractive, direct, cohesive. And I always forget the other one. Um, <laughs> like, these, these are things okay. that everybody, everybody looks for in all the places we are. So um, how can we provide something that does that? And it might mean creating some other um, areas to make things safe. But yes, that would be what we would want. So um, we can expect from your, your group a great okay. submission on what the priority... Because, I, I, you know, we, it looks like the national context is as, do, as hard financially mm. as our context is yep. about funding. So you'll be looking for priority wins and rather than just diffusing your money across many cycle areas, well, you're looking for some gains on some... I would like to see... I'd like to see everything for us, wouldn't we? But it's oh, not going to happen. I would um, too. So yeah, <laughs> everyone, everyone would. But there's always going to be somebody mm. missing out. So yes, we'll be putting in. So you'll be uh, identifying we'll what be, the priorities yeah. are. Thank we'll you, be, excellent. We'll be working hard to make sure that we get our point across. Okay. Um, again, people, we need to crack on here. Um, Councillor Hamilton, you are up next. Thanks, Chair. Just interested in your feedback. Um, mm. Obviously, the Claudlands Bridge is a great example, and yep. um, it was designed uh, own the road. But I see cyclists still clinging to the left and cars overtaking them, and it, it, it does my head in. So, is there? It, obviously, it's a two-way educational process. But is but your what's the view from the side? Are you educating cyclists that you know? We are. Like, how many people here ride a bike on the road? How many people here that ride a bike on the road own the road when they choose to? A lot of people Claim are scared. Like, okay, look, you're, we're, you're fighting, yeah, so, we're drifting off here. Can no, but what, no, so what, what I'm saying is we're fighting with vehicles that are starting off at one tonne and you weigh 50 to 90 kilograms. A lot of people are really unsure about what's going to happen. So it is, it's an education thing, but it's also like, you want to save yourself as well. So, yes, we do. We encourage lots of people to own the road. But we don't tell people just to ride out in the middle of the lane because you don't know what a driver's going to do. Right? So it's, it's, going to, it's going to take some time, but it's something that we need to continue to talk about, that cyclists are valid road users. And if they need to, they can 
own the lane I mean, and they can keep left as safe okay. as practical Thank so you. it's it's one of those things where it's a conversation that we'd like everybody to have we don't want to be the only ones that are saying that we should have this as we need to all understand that hang on we all have these rights and if we share we don't actually need to do a hell of a lot more well we do but we can get away with doing things that make people aware that we can share these spaces. Thanks. Okay. Good. Yep. Councillor Wilson. Yeah, thanks, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, Richard, thanks for all the work you do. Um, look, I'm a little surprised that Bike Waikato doesn't have an immediate list of priorities. And I wonder, as an organisation, do you not endanger um, your influence by not having already identified a critical list of priorities? Uh, in, you know, in an ideal world, you, as you've said, every road would be cycle-friendly and we would all learn to share and you know, it would be wonderful. The reality is we are far from that. Mm. And, and I, I'm very keen to support uh, uh, a enabling cycling, but I wonder if, uh, if you as an organisation don't have a critical, clear set of priorities, how can the rest of us start to, to make the challenging decisions we need to make? Uh, that's the first part. And the second part is, and it's further to Council of uh, the Deputy Mayor's comment, is Claudelands was supposed to be, Claudelands Bridge was supposed to be the ideal cycle connection. Uh, it hasn't, in my opinion, worked at all well. Um, and now we're talking about trying to do another ad hoc on Victoria, uh, uh, sorry, on Anzac. Are we not just repeating the mistake again? So there are two questions there. First answer to the first question. I agree. Um, personally, Bike Waikato, as it's as Bike Waikato stands now, is in its early stages. Um, not, um, we are working ourselves off the the great work that Cycle Action Waikato has done, but we are also in the phase of reforming ourselves and coming up with those things. So yes, we don't have that list right now. We are working on that list. Cool. Um, it is not there yet. Um, we are a volunteer organisation that is putting our heads together to work on these things and invest in quite a lot of time in this and appreciate the time that we have to engage with yourselves and with council staff. Um, that list is coming, so um, keep an eye out. Yes, um, well, no. Like I said earlier, it's like, why do we need just one bridge? And I don't really agree that it was the solution that was going to solve everything. It's not. But when, when you think about it, like we're, we're giving cyclists an area to ride on, we're then spitting them out onto a bridge where people don't want to slow down for them, so they feel at risk, and then we're saying, right, now, now come back off. Understand that the, the bridge has other aspects to it as well. We've got buses going over it. We're, we're trying to keep it open for vehicles. Why don't we be bold? Why not just close it down for everyone but cyclists and pedestrians? I mean, it might not work, but how about we think about that? I think um, Anzac Parade Bridge, from what I understand, and cycle counts is one of the busiest bridges in the city for cyclists. So why would we not do at least something to make it at least safer now and make vehicles, drivers, aware that cyclists do use this bridge and they have space? Um, it, like I said, it might not be the permanent solution, but we need to make more people, as um, Ryan said as well. So like, we've got to get cyclists out there in some space where drivers can recognise them and know that they're out there sharing the road with them. Oh, OK, sorry. thank you. Um, there are That's no fine. more questions. Great. So thanks, Richard, again thank very much for your, um, for your passion in this area. And um, as some of the other committee members have alluded to, we do look forward to some really great um, submissions we and engagement win. with Bike Waikato through the long-term plan.
So thank you Get very much. Thank, thank you, you very much. Welcome, Councillor Thompson. I hope you got your tyre sorted. Oh, and no, <laughs> having to drive to work um, <laughs> after walking at home in heels. So. And just, um, oh, OK. Um, just to let you know that because we've got quite a long and um, engaged agenda, I'm just going to come to members once for questions, so just asking that everybody has their questions prepared. OK, we have a second speaker, John uh, Donoghue, who will be speaking on item nine. Good morning, John. How are you? Nice to see you. So yeah, Angela, there may members. be questions as well for you um, at the end of your presentation, so we'll make time for that. Great. This is going to be brief, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, um, it really is a, a simple matter. Just um, from my perspective, looking at the paper, it's, um, it, is, it is complicated. There's a bit of legalese in there. But um, we've been working with council staff for uh, some months now, since October, trying to resolve this matter. Uh, and it just really, I think, is coming here for, uh, for approval, if I understand the process correctly. Uh, so this paper is just really about resolving a historic problem that we've had with the easement mm -hmm. on this on this parcel of land that I'm the owner of. Um, when when, the, when the, the piece of the land was put together, it comprised a various number of parcels that, were, that have all come together. And when one parcel was brought in back in the 1950s, uh, the easement wasn't uh, done properly, I understand. I'm not going to try and explain that. There's a <laughs> far more qualified person here who could help us out if that needed necessary. Um, so, look, that's the, the, this thing, because it's on the right of way that affects both of us, the city and, and us uh, in our personal capacity, um, we, 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 I think it needs to be sorted for the benefit of both of us. Um, just wanted to point out too that within the report, um, Mr Harris has outlined that we plan on putting some townhouses onto the site, it's quite a large site, um, so we're going to try and do our, do our little bit to help with the, the housing shortage in, in Hamilton. Uh, we're not developers. We've, this is the first thing we've first developer we've tried development we've tried to do. Uh, we're planning on making quite nice quality, uh, spacious townhouses, and I'm keeping one for my own uh, for, as a rental property. We're, we are building one for our son, and our builder is building one for his daughter. So we, we intend to be long hold um, on these things, and so we want to we want to do things properly and establish a long term relationship with our neighbours, uh, of which councils are. Very important one. So, um, I don't know whether anyone's familiar with Nick Holcroft. He does. Um, he built a house for me. He does. Um, only specialises in quality construction. So we're, we're not looking to build uh, the cheapest, um, highest profit uh, development in this in this uh, location. So, really, I just wanted to come back. That, that that process is going through the planning process with your with your planning people. That's progressing well. Uh, we just need to overcome the the, the, the defective easement, which I guess is just, again, just coming back to this is the purpose of this paper, I understand, so yeah. uh, we would appreciate uh, the committee's support. Okay, great. Thanks, John. Couple of... No, no, we're not there yet. Well, this is public <laughs> forum, but thank you. I'm, I, I, I'm going to suggest with the committee's leave that we bring that item forward, so um, John's here for the decision and then he can go. But questions, Councillor um, Thompson? Oh, no? No? Councillor Bunting? Right, so just very, very quickly, in a, in a nutshell, um, you're happy with the way this has been tidied up. Uh, council's happy with the way it's been tidied up. Council can still get in to fix their reservoir. You can get in to build your houses. Correct. I'll be happy to second when mine comes along. Thank you. That makes it a lot easier. Thanks, John. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks, John. Thanks very much. Um, Thank if you. you just like to take a seat at the back um, with the leave of the committee, we'll deal with that item now, if you like. If that's okay with everyone, um, committee members, while um, John is here, so we can just move to item nine, which is page 20. Uh, and what staff do we have? Trevor. Trevor? Where are you? Hello, Trevor. Hello. So we've got Trevor up at the top table, or the bottom table, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> Good morning. Um, morning. Trevor, I think you can take your report as read. We'll just see if there are any... Um, uh, questions from the committee, and uh, uh, Councillor Hamilton's already indicated that he's moving, and Councillor Bunting's seconding. So, committee members, are there any questions? Councillor McPherson. Yeah, it's actually not to do with the easement as such, but it's to do with the looking at the photo on page 24, Trevor. Um, is that where the Hillcrest Bowling Club is or was? Yes, yeah. correct. Uh, so, which part? I'm just looking at that green shaded bit on that photo. And it looks like it goes across the greens or so. 
the middle of the one of the greens or something. I was trying to understand how that, that works. I mean, they're they're mm -hmm. going to have ex well, they've they've ceased, haven't they? That that or they're still operating. No, the bowling club's still operating. Um, the bowling club itself has access outside. If you um, you got the red outline for the easement, yeah, you got one. Um, 109, right, and then there's a right away up to the club rooms through uh, there. Okay, yeah. so they don't need that particular easement area. They they do use it from time to time, and they have a number of people playing bowls. Yeah. But most times they use the right. one direct to their but, club rooms. So this they are happy with this arrangement Correct. that's proposed yeah. as well. Sweet, yeah. thank you. Great. Okay, thank you, um, Miss Southgate. I haven't been involved in this, and I'm glad it's re reached a, a favourable conclusion. Just a question out of, because it occurred to me when I was looking at the map, Dave, that um, the easement could have gone through Council's land and down the existing access, uh, access way from the bowling club, and, <clears throat> couldn't it? Or could it not? Was there some reason why it couldn't go that way? So, the so it could go between 109 and 113, because that was already in... The, at the moment, the boarding club leases um, the, the right of way to the 111, so they lease that land. Yeah. And the boarding greens, as Councillor McPherson pointed out, the area in red is not leased by the boarding club, um, but it, it's the only, only vehicle access to the um, development that's proposed. Mm. Oh, that I moment. thought. Yeah, I just wonder because weren't we? St was the um, the use of the bowling club still in review or no? Not not a piece of land that we potentially thought was strategic. I'm not sure. I mean, you might not know that. That's okay as long as it as long as it's a satisfactory arrangement. But of course, I, th I was thinking if there was a right of way already there, why you wouldn't hook into an existing right of way instead of creating a completely new one? But that's fine so long as they can get to their property. I'm happy. Yeah, no trouble. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Councillor Wilson. Yeah, thanks, uh, Madam Chair. Um, thanks for the report. I just want to confirm that all costs uh, relating to uh, this change is um, to the applicant and not to Council. Correct. Yep. No, uh, no cost on Council. And do you want to expand on how the mistake was made initially, or is it too complex? <laughs> As um, John alluded to, it's 1950 easement. <laughs> there was a subdivision in the 1960s, and the technicality is that the easement created in 1950 didn't include the land that was added in 1960. They weren't as smart back in 1950 as us today, eh, Trevor? <laughs> I think that's what I'll take from it. Thank you. <laughs> okay, that's... Oh, Martin um, was here. <laughs> no, he wasn't. <laughs> Even Martin wasn't here then. All right, um, thank you, Trevor. You can um, leave the table. That's all the questions disposed of. So the recommendation committee members is on page 20. It has been moved by Councillor Hamilton, seconded by Councillor Bunting. Is there any debate? No, no, no. OK, we'll uh, put that to the vote. All those in favour, please raise your hands. And there are none opposed. That's unanimous. Thank you very much. OK, so that's done. Like, Let's go back to... Uh, com item five, confirmation of the minutes. Thank you. Uh, yes, so we've just... Sorry, hang on, let me get to that. Um, Councillor Wilson has moved the minutes. Um, I will second those. Councillor Bunting, question? Yeah, um, just regarding the attachment of Appendix 1, the foodstuffs submission yeah. um, in there, I'm just wondering, is that normal practice to put um, a submission in there? I was just mm. questioning why that's actually in there. Because uh, we don't normally put attachments in to the minutes. So any of the written submissions that we receive from public forum, they are attached to the minutes as record, so that the public has access to them as well. So that's so, a public forum submission. So that's quite normal, is it? It's the first one I noticed. Okay. <laughs> no, so, so I'm assuming, that like, for example, Roger Stratford's okay, one will be in the next minutes. Normally, yes, but, but as that item was pulled that he was referring to, it won't be sorry, in this Sorry, I'm just one trying to hear the answer, time. guys. I'm oh, sorry, I'm just trying to hear the answer. What was that? So, normally that would be the case, but because the item that his public forum submission was in relation to has been pulled from oh, this yeah, agenda, okay, right. it won't be on it. But right. going forward, yes, you will okay. expect to see those. 
OK, thank you, Simon. Good you. question. OK. Uh, <laughs> um, all right, so that's all the questions. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favour, please raise your hands. Are there any there are none against? That's carried unanimously. Thank you. All right, item six, Chair's report. Um, it's very short and brief. Uh, just quickly, um, yeah, welcome everyone back. I do hope that it is a, a good year, and as I said at the start of the meeting, that we are able to do these in person. Um, and thanks to the general manager and all of her um, team. And Tanya, I know you played a, a very important role on that morning as well, and, and um, it, was a, it was a really great thing to be able to celebrate. Um, and as you can see, Councillor Gallagher and the Mayor were there as well. So it was a nice way to round off the year, I thought. Um, and hopefully there'll be many more. Hmm. So that's all in my chair's report. I'll move. Um, or seconded. Councillor Hamilton got in first. Yeah. Councillor Gallagher. It's really good that uh, elected members have the opportunity to attend such things because uh, obviously we're a collective team. We each have a particular role, all of us, all thousand of us. So I really <laughs> valued, no, no, I really valued that opportunity. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's just That's great. Cool. And I just want to encourage management to give us more of those. Hmm. Here, here. All right, so with that, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour, please raise your hands. Are there any against? There are none against. It's carried unanimously. Thank you very much. OK, let's move on. We have got um, our new regional relationships manager, David Spears from NZTA. No, Robin? Oh, yes, and, Ro and the lovely Robin, of course. So uh, David's going to um, introduce himself to the committee. Some of us who sit on the Regional Council Transport um, Committees have met him, uh, but we, and we look forward to a, a long and bright and uh, uh, positive working relationship. So um, no pressure, David. Over to you. Tēnā koutou katoa. E mihi ana ki te whare ane tū tēnei. E mihi ana ki te ranga te rama. Um, Ko, ko Taupri te maunga, ko Waikato te awa, ko Tainui te waka, uh, ko Ngāti Mahuta te iwi, um, ko Tauwhari a hau, um, ko David Spears te ko ingoa. Um, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Um, thanks for having me here today, and um, it's, a, it's a privilege to be here in my second week <laughs> in the job. Um, I've just very briefly come to Waka Kotahi from the Department of Conservation. Uh, I've been there for uh, nearly eight years in the department, uh, in, in principally in two roles. Um, one is the Regional Partnerships Director for uh, the Central North Island, which was uh, Whanganui, um, Taupo uh, and Bay of Plenty, and then more latterly as the Operations Director for um, what we we couldn't find a short name, so we called it Hauraki Waikato Taranaki Region, <laughs> <laughs> um, where I've had uh, the principal responsibility for all of the delivery work the department does across across that region, um, and uh, really importantly, an interface role between the region and the regional stakeholders and uh, the central government component of, of the Department of Conservation. Um, Prior to that, I, I was at um, Waikato Regional Council, um, uh, who worship um, Mayor Southgate, uh, for 17 years uh, and um, uh, played in all sorts of spaces from the regulatory group right through policy. Uh, I have a science background in um, freshwater ecology uh, and also in, in um, more, more latterly in the asset management group, uh, managing the flood protection schemes, land drainage, catchment works. Um, so, and I'm a Waikato boy, uh, my, apart from having been born elsewhere, my entire life has been lived in and around the Waikato, so this is my home, this is my place, I'm very familiar with it, um, and I'm really looking forward to, to making the best of this regional role. I, just the way I see this role, and the way it's been described to me, to be fair, is to be the regional interface between Waka Kotahi and the regional stakeholders. So I really see myself as a um, your key relationship with the central agency. My job is to make your voices heard and to, to bring the context of the national um, agency to you and to the table and to work with you so that we can find a, a good place for us both to live um, in, that, in that interface between 
um, regional stakeholders in a, in a very large, very complex national agency. So the more we work together, the better. Um, and I think the more continuity we can have in terms of our relationship and um, sharing issues and working on them together, the better. So I look forward to a, um, an honest and open, constructive <laughs> relationship. You'll get that. <laughs> <laughs> and then some. <laughs> Cat pie. OK, thank you uh, very much, David. And, and I, I did promise David we'd go a little bit easy since he's only just got his feet under the table. Um, but that would only uh, be for this one particular meeting. Um, I also said that Councillor McPherson is Chair of um, Strategic Growth, who's going to uh, question you soon. And I will uh, look forward to having that coffee catch up so that we can um, build a strong relationship with you as well. So with- I did wonder though, do you want me to, there's a few things I can front foot Oh, yes, for you, okay, yes, do that, briefly. absolutely. I, I, Go for I don't it. want to put up a presentation, but no, I don't know how many of you sat in on the Nicole Rosie's um, briefing to the. Okay, That's great. so all right. At the risk of repeating some of that, okay. um, there's just a few highlights from that. So what Nicole has, uh, so Nicole Rosie, the CEO of Wakakotei, what she started to do is every couple of months she wants to have a regular session um, online with the um, key stakeholder agencies just to pass on the big issues for her. Um, and really the highlights this time around, and, and Councillor O'Leary can, can pick up if I leave any gaps. Uh, well, maybe they're not all highlights, but she talked very, very uh, openly about the National Land Transport Fund, and I know that's going to be an issue for us, and the affordable, affordability challenges that we're facing. We're essentially rolling into the 21-24 NLT proce process with a 90 plus percent committed program with existing works. Uh, and that leaves very little room for funding of new projects, if any. Um, and it brings a challenge with it in terms of responding to the road, uh, sorry, not road to zero, to the um, Climate Change Commission's uh, desire to see changes and an uptake of their recommendations, clearly around public transport, around um, reducing carbon emissions in the public transport fleet, uh, reducing carbon uh, emissions from the fleet generally. And there's some big challenges in there which we're talking with MOT uh, and Treasury at the moment about um, what does that mean from a funding point of view? Um, because obviously rolling into that at the moment, um, that's, a, that's a, a significant issue for us. Mm -hmm. The other significant issue, and, and again, um, Nicole was pretty open about this, is we roll into this year having funded 100% the shortfall in public transport um, revenue over COVID and continue to do so at the moment, uh, a, a, a significant drawdown on our debt. Uh, and again, as you roll into a new funding round with that, there are some pretty significant com um, considerations that have to be taken into account. So, uh, you know, put that on the table. Um, that doesn't mean we can't have conversations about what our priorities are, nor does it mean that those priorities necessarily are, are not going to um, move forward in the National Transport Fund. But. Um, I think it's worth us all being cognizant of the affordability issue we've got. Um, the other thing that um, Nicole touched on, and it's close to my heart, obviously, is Waka Kotahi are moving towards establishing a more regionally focused model. And as part of that, obviously, my appointment, um, there will be five directors, regional relationship directors across the country. You'll be familiar with Steve Mutton, who's been filling this role. Steve is, is moving to focus entirely in the north of the North Island, so from the Bombay Hills north. Um, I will be uh, in this central area from the Bombays down to, um, well, to Taranaki and across to all of the Bay of Plenty. Um, Emma Spate is currently filling the rest of the lower North Island and the upper South Island. There's another role to go in there to support Emma so that we have four directors in the North Island and one in the South Island. Um, with those regional directors, there's also a move to appoint three um, regional managers for each region. Uh, one in system design, so there'll be a system design manager who will be the go-to person for that sort of system design work, strategic planning, an infrastructure delivery manager, uh, and a maintenance and operations manager. And essentially that will be the core of our regional team, supported by um, comms and media and safe speeds and, you know, the, folks like Erin who do the actual work. Um, so those roles are not full at the moment. They, there are acting folk in those roles. And of course, you'll know Joe Walton, um, for example, who's, who's um, uh, 
you know, should continue to be your contact. But as we fill those roles, you'll see that regional model being strengthened and our ability to be um, more responsive to you um, will increase, I hope. <laughs> um, the other thing uh, I think I should highlight is um, the Road to Zero program. So we're year one into a 10-year program towards Road to Zero. Um, we're about to start the consultation process on some new speed setting rules to make things easier and clearer. Um, I've already, I'm two weeks in and I've already realised that that's a significant issue across the region um, and I'm not surprised. Um, that's a process that we are looking to streamline and make a lot easier. And the other thing that um, we have deferred, we, meant, we, we intended to start, and I think we even advertised the fact that we were going to start on a 30-year plan um, at the start of this year. For obvious reasons, that's been deferred, but the plan is to pick that up at the end of this year and start that process. And I think there's a real opportunity for us as a regional team to have a big input into that 30-year plan thinking uh, even in terms of the, you know, the conversation this morning about um, cycling and, and public transport and mm -hmm. mode shift in general, uh, because those are long plays and those are things that are going to take a long time and a, and a long sight, I think there's a massive opportunity for us as a regional team to really start thinking about how we want to influence that 30-year planning process. Uh, and that'll be a real focus for me to bring that proactively to, the, to this table, to the regional land transport um, mm -hmm. committee table. Uh, other than that, I, I, I'll, I'll probably pause there and, and okay. take any questions you've got with the, with the caveat that I probably don't know any of the answers, um, <laughs> but very capable team behind me and I'm really happy to take those back and, and quite quickly turn around the answers to the questions that you, you raise and I can see Erin out of the back of my head taking notes furiously right now, so um, over to you. Okay, wonderful. Thanks um, very much, David. We'll go to Councillor McPherson. Yeah, welcome here. Um, but I am a bit disappointed that Steve wasn't here as well because we do want some answers. Um, I, I'd say, no offence to you personally. Uh, uh. Um, and are you aware? First question is, are you aware that the regional focus that NZTA is moving to, we actually had four years ago. We had a regional directors and a whole regional team approach back then, not not very long ago. Uh, look, I am I am aware of the history that goes with these roles. Uh, in my previous role, I had an awful lot to do with NZTA um, and um, Parakafia mm. McLean yeah. when she was in the role. And um, probably like you, I was disappointed when that was disestablished because we were working very closely on State Highway 3, um, uh, it, which is going through a significant part of conservation estate. And, yeah, so look, I've experienced the difficulties. I, I hope that I can bring you know that back to what it what it was, if not better. So Good. yeah, well and truly aware of the history. <laughs> Good. Um, look, um, just you you mentioned working with us on councils in this area on the LTP um, about four three years ago, I should say. Uh, NZTA submitted to us in support of our. Uh, transport initiative proposals in our LTP, the, the last one, not the one that's yep. going through now, and there were a number of PT and walking and cycling and mode shift related initiatives, and uh, we haven't had any funding for implementation for any of them from NZTA other than the rail service. Um, so that's something we'd like We'd like to actually see the. I realise you can't give an answer now, mm. but could we see the history of of the proposals that you submitted to us in support of? We rated for our share of, but we haven't actually implemented uh, over the last period because I think leading up to discussions on the new um, uh, RLTP and uh, GPS and all that those alphabet soup initials, mm. yeah. uh, we. There's a certain reluctance, perhaps, to invest in things if we're, if there's not going to be matching investment from um, NZTA or Kotahi. Hmm. Yeah, look, it's one of the things that I've already started is trying to unpack the what's currently on the table that isn't delivered, what's currently on the table that is being delivered. So things like, for example, I'm aware that we've, you know, there has, has been some funding going to the um, the eastern. Um, yes. Sockways and you know those kind of things. So, so what I'm trying to do at the moment is establish exactly what you've just described. What sits where, 
what what has moved on? The world's changed an awful lot in the last twelve months, let alone the last four years. Um, and understanding the context within which those sit, I think, is a really important conversation for us to have. So yeah, and we can't have that conversation without knowing what was already on the table. So yeah, we'll. That's, I look forward to that. Good to hear. Look, uh, in a uh, it's a presentation produced by NZTA last week. Um, it shows, and I'm not sure it's the same one you're referring to, but it shows Waikato as having um, amongst, along with Auckland and Canterbury, the highest uh, CO2 emissions um, of any regions and uh, over a 1,000 kilotons per year yep. of CO2 in, in this region. Um, and the majority of that from light vehicles, mm -hmm. not the heavy transport yep. ones, which one might sort of a lot of people might colloquially assume. So one way is it not to reduce that is to divert use of light vehicles into public transport and other modes, especially in urban areas? Yeah, look, I, I think, um, you know, uh, Hamilton and Tauranga are the two, uh, Waikato and Tauranga are, are the two regions that have the highest... Um, the closest relationship between vehicle owners and their vehicles, shall we say, the highest reliance on private vehicles across the country. So it's hardly surprising that the emissions from light vehicles are also very, very high. There's a whole range of solutions. I'm not, you know, right now, uh, I can't sit with you and tell you what those are, but, but absolutely I think that's the kind of thing we need to be looking at. And I, you know, mode shift, for example, is going to be one of the things we need to look at as a tool to address the Climate Commission's um, uh, priorities, but it's also something we need to look at as as part of the Road to Zero program. Yeah. Uh, it's also something we need to look at as part of uh, community wellbeing and making the city a great place to live. So there's a whole bunch of drivers, I think, that we need to um, work together on to, to sort of understand what what are the levers that are we're best to pull for multiple outcomes rather than getting focused on one or two, and I think that's what you're getting at. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is the, perhaps the last strand of questioning on this sort of yeah. area is um, we are a member, along with the Regional Council and some other district councils, of the Waikato Connections Committee, yep. which basically promotes and monitors and uh, sets up initiatives for PT, 90% um, of which in the Waikato region are actually in Hamilton City. Um, we're involved in promoting uh, priority bus routes as a more direct, uh, frequent ones as opposed to zigzaggy little suburban ones, um, and they're proving very successful in including in uh, recovery from of patronage figures over the COVID period, um, far more successful than the small services. So it seems to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, that the latest announcement on NLTP funding not being available for any new projects is going to affect those services that in that area that we've proposed, including ones that are starting in the next six months? Uh, yes, I think, the, I think the reality we're going to have to face is there's a very small amount of, of funding to go around. We are going to have to prioritise, and this is where I, th where I think there are some opportunities to address, for example, and this is why I'm saying there's multiple levers to pull. Um, what are the responses to the Climate Change um, Commission's recommendations and are they some of these things? As I say, we're talking with, at the moment with MOT and Treasury about what the funding implications of that are. I don't know what the answer to that's going to be and kind of until we do, it's a, it's a challenging... Um, well, it's impossible to have, a, have an answer for that. But um, it's definitely something that we, need to, we, need, we do need to address. Yeah, it's a bit yeah. more... Um, specific than that, for yeah. instance, we've proposed the east-west meteor service equivalent to the, the north-south comet service. Uh -huh. um, that's due to start around in winter. Um, that fund, uh, we'd like to know whether that funding is in jeopardy or not, because we're faced with investing in infrastructure for it, yep. and the regional council's faced in investing about a million dollars extra in service delivery uh, for that. Um, are we are going to be left high and dry by NZTA not matching that is really what I'm coming to, let alone the ones that are slated to follow. Yep, yep. So let, let me 
capture that or Aaron capture that behind me and we'll we'll address that one as quickly as we can. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Thompson. David, thank Order. you for coming in um, to speak with us. Uh, are you familiar with the Eastern Pathways project and the biking and micromobility program that Hamilton City Council is working on? Uh, to, to the extent that I've had a very short briefing, yes. <laughs> Okay. Um, in particular, the Eastern Pathways project, which uh, the council has been working on for some years now and the community has been consulted with on and uh, is expecting to actually start to go, you know, be constructed, uh, what impact do you see the, these funding constraints having on our ability to deliver Eastern Pathways now? Um, so again, I, I'd be premature for me to be able to comment on that. What I do know is, at the moment, I think we've funded 51% of the of the investigation work into that, and then, and the next part of that process is the design component, and then obviously um, understanding the funding implications of that into into the National Land Transport Fund. Um, I don't know, but um, again, what I come back to is this is one of those opportunities for us to talk about what uh, what what are the multiple benefits that might arise from um, a project like that? And what are the most appropriate funding levers to pull? I, and I don't know, and I can't, I can't give you an mm. answer beyond that at the moment. Okay, thank you. And the other part of my question was in regard to the Regional Land Transport Plan, the draft that's been put out for consultation yes. um, for the Waikato region. I, have you gone through that document and what do you see the implications of that current document being on Hamilton's projects and the priority that they'll be given, particularly those mode shift projects? The, the as it stands at the moment, the level of committed funding f fits, is consistent with Nicole's message that you know very substantially existing programs commit most of that funding, um, and so there will have to be some um, some hard decisions to make about what does and doesn't put push through. Um, the moderation is happening at the moment, so I'm I'm not sure mm. what the what the outcome of that's going to be, um, but it should be complete by the end of this month and. and Post that, we should be able to come back and give a pretty good report on the okay, so it's current un status. Unclear with that document, say, for example, gives enough priority to Eastern Pathways over other projects to ensure that it's given a good look. I, I don't think that's... It's, it's not really for me to judge yeah. that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. OK. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Bunting. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. I'm a little bit of today, to be honest. <laughs> Um, I'm just referring to uh, a recent NZTA newsletter that said, look, um, we don't have the money as a result. We're not currently approving funding for any new delivery projects in this NLT period. How long is this NLT period that you're talking about? So this is the 21 to 24 right. period. Okay. Um, we're reviewing it, etc., but it's unlikely we'll be approving funding for any new work for the remainder of this NLTP. Um, and yet we have ministers extolling the virtues of mm -hmm. um, mode shift, climate change, etc. Have you told the minister about this yet? I haven't even met the minister yet, so no, I haven't. <laughs> yeah, funny, I'm, I'm with you. Um, so I'm just wondering what the pressure is coming from that angle, because it seems to me we, you know, <laughs> there seems to be a disconnect between what they're saying and what's being carried out. Um, so, so as I said, the... Um, uh, Nicole, uh, so Nicole Rosie was pretty clear in her in her briefing the other day that that we are sitting down with Treasury and MOT and saying to them, okay, there's aspirations around giving effect to the Climate Change Commission's uh, recommendations. There's a whole bunch of aspirations that we need to work out how to fund. What are the funding implications for that? And that's an ongoing conversation at the moment. Mm. And obviously, I have not part of that conversation. Um, so, you know, beyond saying that conversation's occurring and it is a priority to kind of explore how do we actually give effect to all of this and so, what so, are the priorities. So, so how do we get you into that conversation? Because oh, otherwise... look, it's just a matter of time. Um, you know, t two weeks in, um, those opportunities haven't presented themselves yet, but, okay. but, but they will. So is there anything that we can do 
um, because we're in the middle of an LTP at the moment. Mm. We're about okay. to boldly go out and and rate people for these ambitious projects that we're all walking hand in hand with until someone lets go, and this mm. is just a little bit familiar. Um, what can we do to put political pressure on MPs, ministers, etc., to help your situation? Look, I think the best thing, and you know, far be it from me to tell tell you what your job is, but but just consistency, and and as uh, as as the more we can. Um, understand each other and be open about what is and isn't possible and what our priorities are, the, the better. Uh, but I think just consistency of messaging is, is critical at this point. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Gallagher. Just a couple of brief comments to make when you go to debate. Yes. But uh, just the question around the um, NZTA's road safety initiatives around road design and obviously the tragic horrendous road toll, including mm -hmm. life-changing injuries, which is often under not stated enough. Can you just give it an idea of the sort of in the region, what, what are the major initiatives, particularly looking at the south of Cambridge to Pierre Erie, some stuff happening there, and are there any other significant projects you want to update us on? Um, I, I'd be remiss to try and do that now because I'm yeah. absolutely sure I will miss sure, no, things no, no, out, but, no. but we certainly can come back to you with the, these are the major programs. Yeah, and, and why I say that is obviously we, we want to keep our citizens alive yep. and uh, without life-changing injuries. As that do we all, yeah. Just enough to uh, acknowledge the huge work there. Thank you. Yeah, goodbye. Thank you, Councillor. Um, David, I just have one question. Obviously, a lot of the other uh, members have, have questioned and raised concerns around uh, the funding, and it's always an issue. Yep. Um, but can you just um, explain to me how you define a new project? Is that where there won't be funding? So is that anything outside? Obviously, it's not going to include our LTP, but is that anything in addition to the RLTP, or did I hear that wrong? Um, I think the no, I can't give you an, an accurate definition of that. No. Okay. No. So I'm not going to because I think that okay. <laughs> that'd be dangerous. But but look, we'll come back to you with what the how that is being defined. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. That would be really helpful. I think because um, I think we're going to need some clarity on that because obviously, as Councillor Bunting said, we're in an LTP and we're going to have to prioritise. Oh yeah. And no, I look, I understand that yep. the, the tension for you. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Is, uh, that's all the. <coughs> Will we get that answer by Thursday, which is when we are discussing what um, uh, the final yes. document yes. that's going out? Answers yes. Yep. We'll, we'll get to. We'll right. get that to you. Well before Thursday, so that you've got. Uh, you don't get it after the fact. That'd be great. I'm gonna make a note of that. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Look, that's all the questions. Um, thank you very much, David. You can take a seat up. Thank you, you for like. having We're me. We're going to move into debate. It's uh, lovely to have you on board. Okay, thank you. I'm seconded by Councillor Gallagher. Um, and I know Councillor Gallagher's got some comments. Councillor McPherson is the mover. Thanks. Look, firstly, it's good finally, after th two and a half years, to have a regional representative of NZTA present after we lost the last one. Um, and uh, I am glad that David has obviously got some of that context, uh, personal knowledge of some of that context, which is quite helpful, I think, uh, and the usefulness that was to people in this region when we did have a regional representative. So I would say to him that we want you, David, to be our advocate in Wellington with the NZTA board and with the government and with the Ministry of Transport, not the NZTA's representative up here, they may be paying you, uh, but only <laughs> only paying you on our behalf. <laughs> and uh, it's important, and we've always felt this, that we have someone going to bat for us in Wellington. And this uh, region has felt that it's been a bit short-changed for a few years, and in previous years also when we didn't have a regional rep. Um, it's relied on occasional bursts by politicians to get a new highway or a new railway or something like that. Without, we haven't had that consistent um, support and, and a person that can interpret our projects for the powers that be in Wellington. So that's, that's his number one job. And Hamilton being the biggest city, that's the number one of the number ones. Um, <laughs> Look, uh, the real worry with the latest announcements 
uh, and we've had discussion about this, and we certainly can't blame David personally for them, um, is that it's impossible for a council like us or an agency like Waka Kotahi to support the government's tr proposed transport plans if with the current levels of funding. It will not happen. We will not get more people on cycles. We will not get more people in buses. Uh, we will not get more people walking if we don't have funding that matches ours. We're not asking for 100% government funding handouts. We're asking for the same share that the Waikato Expressway is currently getting as it's being built. We're asking for the same share, in fact, probably a lot smaller share than Transmission Gully in Wellington, which is soaking up nearly a billion dollars cost overrun, is getting, or the Holiday Highway north to Wellsford. Um, we're asking for, really, for rats and mice, for walking, cycling and public transport in Hamilton, so we can come some way towards rebalancing the transport expenditure that we've had. Not everyone in this um, council supports the same level of funding that we do, but we all, I hazard a guess, support some level of decent funding for alternative modes. And if the government is not going to support us through Wakakotahi for that, then we cannot expect our citizens to pay a share for it. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Gallagher. Yeah, well, thank you. It's really good that you come here direct because, as everyone knows, um, of the strong view that the so-called Regional Land Transport Committee, while it is an excellent voice for the broader uh, region and particularly our rural communities, um, I don't think it adequately uh, is focused and can articulate the aspirations of Metro uh, Hamilton Waikato. That's a personal view. So I think this direct relationship is, 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 is really good. Totally endorse everything that uh, my good friend Councillor McPherson said. I'm just going to um, give an example, and that's one of the privileges of being a public elected person, is did a road trip to Wellington, and it's illustrative. It was in Bulls, and um, you have this bizarre 50k speed limit that goes to 100k. The 100k started on the, the bridge, the concrete bridge. So if you've got someone else coming, at 100k opposite you, and they decided to go across the the, the, the line into your lane. You're, you're you, you know you're, you're departing to the next world. Uh, you know, bizarre. Not in our region, of course. But what I did notice is, I'll give you a good example, folks. Um, for the new Taupo to uh, Turangi, uh, Ryan, where they've now done the speed calibration. So it's a combo of 80 and 60, and really realistic. So I really want to do a huge shout out to our innovative region compared with other regions and I think that's indicative that this region I think is now doing a really serious piece of work around road safety and bringing our kids and our family and loved ones back to our city alive and well. Thank you. Thank you Councillor. Mayor Southgate. Thank you um, Chair. Um, just to let councillors know that of course I was in Wellington um, on the uh, week before last for the metro sector and um, I met with Minister Wood, managed to get a, was pretty much a last minute, James had been chasing him for some time for a space. We said, well, we're in Wellington, so we got 20 minutes. And um, it was really good, it was really good. It was a really engaged conversation. He's very excited about the transport proposition in our area from a number of point of views. He is particularly um, aware of the transport hub in Rotakauri and the opportunity that presents for um, for bettering our rail offering. We did talk about that, the, um, uh, the services going off peak. And so Blair mm -hmm. presented me so with some notes. So I had some of those strategic notes in front of me around um, uh, the train. We talked about being able to have the train running down for special events and so on. He was particularly enamoured of the conversation around light, um, fast, rapid transport. And, he would quite like to see the underground station, of which he was unaware that was part of that. He didn't realise the east-west connect and the north-south connect were as easy as what they are in terms of rail lines anyway, not the infrastructure. So um, in terms of motive, we talked about that and we talked about the gap in funding and the, he's very aware that there's two sides to um, cycling issues, cycling and walking and mode shift. One is what we do in the new suburbs as we build them and very, very pleased with the kind of planning that we're doing for Peacock, the sort of um, success we had with Rotatuna when we put the cycling 
facilities in before the school was open and those kind of things. So he was particularly keen on that. He recognised the difficulty with retrofitting an old city and some of the big metros are in the same position. How do we put money so that we can significantly change the network? Uh, we did talk about the interconnection with um, climate. And um, the other thing he was particularly um, hot on was our connect with Auckland and our connect to markets. So he was looking at that economic interplay too, as I was being part of the Golden Triangle. Um, and he was impressed with our H2A planning. We talked a little bit about the opportunities with Tauranga and Rotorua, with those kind of reaching out that regional planning a bit more. Uh, and um, in terms of local Hamilton issues, he was aware that we had some innovative streets uh, projects on the go, and he was aware that we had a pretty tenacious and uh, ambitious uh, um, proposal around mode shift, which by and large he's supportive of, but he didn't offer anything specific about that whole climate conundrum. We all just both, did, we both acknowledged but he does want to come down and meet with us, and I think that was a really good use of time, even though it was a bit last minute and it was a little bit, he was a bit late. But we managed to get that much conversation going. It's a good start. Thank you. Thank you very much for the update, um, Mayor Southgate. Councillor Bunting. Uh, um, you know when you're, you're sitting on hold with Spark or Vodafone, <laughs> And you're talking with a really nice person who's doing their very, very best for you, but you know they're not the problem and they can't do much. That's how I feel at the moment. David, welcome to the job. Um, <laughs> um, I'm very excited to be working with you, etc. but uh, I've just got that feeling again and again and again that we are talking to the wrong people. Um, and, uh, Mayor Southgate, I'm glad you went and met with the Minister, but next time, please take us with you or invite us up Invite him up because I didn't oh, yeah, hear miss. Great, because yeah. I want to hear the eastern pathways. I want to hear, I want him to hear what we're doing here. I want him to hear what our citizens are expecting, based on the promises that we've been made in the past. We're not asking for money over transmission gully. Okay, it shouldn't come down to a blowout on a highway versus the safety of our citizens. They blow out their their highways. That's their business. It's not ours. Um, we have been talking with politicians at the central level for a long, long time. Especially before elections, we all talk about making this the most wonderful city to get across because we're warm, small and flat. And we hear these great promises, and they mean it. They want it. And last term we were driving around with uh, the Associate Minister of Transport, and she was appalled that this was this big block, the funding block was there. Right? They have got the same frustrations that we have got. We there's a disconnect in the middle of it. And it's frustrating. It's really frustrating. Um, it's frustrating for us, and if imagine if it's frustrating for us, how frustrating is it for those people that Richard Porter was talking about who are trying to get across town on a bike, while this big soak up of money happens in the middle and nothing ends up on the roads? I'm s yeah, no, I'm really frustrated. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Thompson. Thank you. Um, I echo what Mark just said. Um, this. There are a lot of projects that we have planned, uh, funded on our draft LTP, which are incredibly worthwhile and that our community have been waiting for. Eastern Pathways particularly being one of them. It, parents are way too worried about their children's safety, a lot of them, to let them bike or walk to school. We're having more and more crazy behaviour around school gates as we have more congestion, more cars around the school gates because parents have to drop their kids off because it, they just feel it's too dangerous to allow them to walk and bike, which in turn makes it even more dangerous again. We have the opportunity to improve people's lives, to improve people's health to make it possible to kids to get exercise and have fun on their way to school and back again, to make it possible for parents to give their children independence for them to get to work not stressed like a, and, and, and worried about being on time. We have so many opportunities to improve the lives of residents in the city. And now I see that that is all being put at risk because this funding looks like it may not come through. And when I read that email from Waka Kotahi saying, we don't have money for new projects, I mean, there's uncertainty, maybe it will come through for Eastern Pathways and other projects like that. 
but it's looking really grim. And I have to say my blood boiled quite a bit <laughs> reading that because our community is going to be bitterly disappointed if we can't come through and deliver these projects. So uh, I do want to say thank you, David, for welcome to the job. I was going to start with that, but then um, forgot. And uh, uh, yes, after hearing Mark's impassioned speech, um, uh, this is these are such critical projects that uh, I appreciate Mayor Paula's um, advocacy, and I hope that this council will fight hard to ensure that we can deliver these projects for our community. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, I'll just say a few words. Look, I, um, I hear the frustration from members and, and I accept it. Um, but I also, in the back of my mind, remind myself, actually, we're the masters of our own destiny as well. We have a, a massive capital project to sign off on the LTP with priorities. So if there is really something in there uh, that we deem to be to need to bubble to the top of a, of a list, then that is up to us. Um, yes, we are a, a funding partner with NZTA and it is disappointing when the funding envelope um, shrinks on us, but we have to prioritise things. I guess uh, as this is my first term as Chair of Infrastructure, I'm a lot more um, positive about the new relationship. Um, I, uh, the Mayor um, did contact me prior to her meeting with the Minister just to see if there was anything burning on my mind and I, I um, uh, gave her a couple of ideas that she'd already thought of anyway so um, it was great to hear um, a full report back from that although um, James did touch base with me. I think uh, the challenge for us as a city and a region is that the, uh, everything that is coming out of um, from the Minister's office is asking us to build and retrofit a city with less cars. And we had the fabulous Sarah Loins last year working with us uh, on one of the, I think, the premium um, strategies for our mode shift plan to achieving a city with less cars. But to hear that there is possibly not going to be funding to help us achieve that is frustrating. Because the last thing I think, if I can speak on behalf of the committee members, we want to see is just a whole bunch of more green lines on the ground for cycleways. We, you know, our topography of our city is flat and it's so well positioned to be a game changer for New Zealand in terms of cycling. And I say that as a 99% car driver. I love my car, but I really would like to get out on a bike as well. But there's no way I'm going to do it because it's just not safe. So in terms of a win in Wellington, um, David, if I could get you to take something back as, uh, you know, in terms of mode shift, I think we are the we are the golden uh, egg in the basket. We're the ones that will be able. We're motivated as a council, as a city. We're the ones that can do it with it with the topography of city. Um, I can clearly see your enthusiasm and passion. And um, when I was talking to Miss Southgate earlier, she said she worked with you for a number of years, which you you touched on as well. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. I, I think if there is one frustration that I would like to share, and we're involved at the moment um, in terms of innovating streets business case and Eastern Pathways business case and every, everything else business case related, is if there is at all an opportunity for NZTA to, re to remove some of the constraints around some of these lengthy and very expensive processes um, that would be a great thing to hear because it is cumbersome. It's cumbersome on the elected wing because we get frustrated with the timeline that it takes to do these things just to get some money and just to get a spade in the ground. So um, that, I guess, would be my parting um, message. Councillor McPherson, as the mover, did you have anything you wanted to touch on? Eastern Pathways has been mentioned several times. And the ironic thing about that, that was in our last LTP. Uh, the, the funding for implementation was in it. it. The first spade in the ground was supposed to be in the 2019 construction mm. uh, season at the end of that year. That was when we were supposed to start it. NZTA submitted to us specifically in support of that. They used that as an example of what they supported within our transport initiatives program. Um, we can set and should set priorities in our budget, but 
uh, if we're not going to have the funding partnership, uh, Chair Angela, we will only get half of them done, and only then if we fund 100% of them. Um, and that is the conundrum for our mm. council, and I can understand councillors being unwilling to stump up with all the money mm. for a transport project that clearly has wider benefits than just for our ratepayers here. Um, I also emphasise with Sarah's point about the vicious cycle, if I can use such a term, of uh, vicious safety cycle outside schools. The, the more dangerous it is for kids to walk and cycle to school, the more parents drive them there, the more danger there is for kids. Um, and uh, we're having that problem, even though we've been taking steps for 15 years to try and limit that, we haven't got on top of it. All we've done is slowed down the problem there, and we want to really tackle that. The final thing I'd say is, that with the funding that's available at the moment, the 20-minute city that the government was saying great things about that we were proposing in Hamilton um, during the COVID sort of recovery period last year is at high risk of being a one-hour, 20-minute city. That's really what we're looking at if we don't get funding support. Great, thank you. All right, uh, the recommendations on page 18 that the report be received and the committee thanks um, Waka Kotahi for their update. So um, all those in favour, please raise your hands. And there are none against, that's carried unanimously. Um, I'm going to suggest, because the next item might be a lengthy one as well, that we stop uh, till 10 past 11 for morning tea. Um, and uh, David, you're welcome, both welcome to stay with us if you feel like it. You might want to run away. Yeah. <laughs> yes, not much. <laughs> uh, Tim past a
Let's go. We've got enough in the room. Welcome, Councillor Pascal on Zoom. Nice to have you um, join us. Right. Good morning. Oh, well, we're here now. Okay, and uh, we're up to item number 10. So um, I already have a mover for this, uh, which is Councillor Bunting, and a seconder, which is myself. Um, and we've got some staff up at the table. So um, remember, people, this is already funded in the annual plan, so hopefully there won't be too many uh, discussions. But I'll go over to staff if there's anything. You can take the report as read, but if there is anything you wanted to highlight, and then we'll go to see if there are any questions. Uh, no, I'm, I'm happy to take the report as read, but, right. yeah, happy to take any questions. Yep, OK. There are none. No, it's all fairly self-explanatory. We've been kept up to date on, on the whole project, so pretty excited to just get on with it, I guess. All right, so that's it then. Thank you. <laughs> well done. Um, being moved, uh, Councillor Bunting seconded myself. Councillor Bunting, would you like to say anything? I, I would briefly, and I'd, um, this one's actually remarkably significant, and what I, I mm -hmm. thought about this last night, and I'd invite you all to close your eyes for a minute. Oh, close your eyes. Um, Martin yeah, will... Not yet. You'll want to after this. You'll want to. Just, I'd just like to let you into a dream or a vision that this is actually the very beginning of. Now, Richard Porter mentioned earlier on, where's the vision? Here is one for you. Please close your eyes and, I, and join me in this dream of the Flora to Fauna Trail. The Flora to Fauna Trail. This is a shared cycle path that winds its way from the zoo to the stadium to the museum to the gardens. One that starts at the zoo, cruises down Baverstock, under the roundabout, along beside the Avalon Bypass. The order that he's given us, not flora to, to close your eyes, Dave, and your mouth close too. Close your please. eyes, Dave. Right. <laughs> Sorry. Close your eyes and your mouth. No, come on. We're doing okay, so, drop, so well. As you go down the Avalon Bypass, you go across Forest Lake Road. You drop down to the uh, Waita Fiti Fiti Gully, and you gently cruise through this restored gully path, listening to the tui, breathing in the air, rich with kofi nectar, and you pop up behind the mighty coliseum that is FMG Stadium Waikato. You cross a new, no, a walking and cycle road bridge. Your senses are alive with the drums and dancing and smells from the Umu from the Pacifica Festival that's on the new, that's there by the new Fale. And from there you wind down the gorgeous and serene green spaces that, that is Hamilton's new answer to the Central Park. It's the dazzling pink of the cherry tree glade along the Western Rail Trail, a uh, Western um, uh, park there, along the, um, past the crack of leather on willow at New Zealand's premium cricket venue, past the modernist outdoor performing space that is Founders Park, over the now um, established flowering maple groves of Norris Ward Park, past the community arts centre, Oh, there's an arts market on, should I stop or not? You go down the wonderfully remodelled Ward Street between the new um, regional council building on your left, the exciting new accommodation block on the right, down to Garden Place, past the most modern and funky library in the world, down Victoria Street uh, to the cultural precinct, past the wonderful new theatre, then across the Taylor Bridge, um, past the wonderfully uh, refurbished Waikato Museum of Art and History, across that beautiful bridge to Memorial Park, along the Awa to the pumping Wellington Street Beach, where you stop for a quick dip, cup of coffee at Hayes Paddock, and you cruise down along Hayes Paddock and pop out of the Governor's Lawn for an extra treat, you zip up to the car park and come down the treetop walk across the Rhododendron Lawn. It's actually almost all there. It's actually almost all there. And what we haven't dreamed of, we've already built. What we haven't yet built we've asked for in the 10-year plan. It's actually a flora to fauna or fauna to flora, flora trail. So what we're doing here is a jolly good start to a very cool vision. It's not that far away and I invite members to think that way. Yeah, yeah. Or, depends very on where you Very good. Go. Councillor Gallagher. I, I, I commend the vision and it's a good reminder to our new councillors that this vision builds on the decision of previous councils. And on a sober note, let us not forget, while we celebrated the joint entranceway to Lake Whakawakariki in the zoo, this council, in a despicable act in my view, that is my version of history, we're going to tear up part of the Whakawakariki reserve and put it into housing, which would have utterly compromised 
that particular piece. And I, I remain very, very disappointed with the staff report that basically supported that at the time. Not their finest hour, they do fantastic stuff. Uh, the Fono again, was a casting vote of our mayor. Um, you know, these things, these, and I'm not, I'm not, this is not a just, you know, chucking some cheap shots, genuinely, but it just, I just want to emphasise how every meeting of this council can be critically important in building that vision. You know, I hope we do have the vision, for example, for the pedestrian bridge under Jeff's uh, River Plan Committee. So these are the critical, important ingredients to, I just say, as an older councillor, slightly older, to some of the newer lot, uh, newer ones, that, that everything you do every day is building that vision. Great speech, Mark, and let's keep it up. Councillor Hamilton. Thanks, Chair. I'm just checking we're still on the Brimer Road urban upgrade. Indeed, we are. <laughs> yes. Don't, don't we moved on, didn't you? <laughs> Yeah. Good point. Um, okay. Then. I, I, I was still talking. Yes. Yeah. Look, this is um, this is a no, this is a no-brainer for all of us. I think it was Steve Jobs that said, with regard to the iPhone design, sometimes you've got to develop something people don't actually know that they they want. They don't. They haven't even seen the vision yet. And I think this is one of those things where. The, the vision of the zoo, Waifakariki, this urban upgrade is going to be something really special. And I don't think our residents have actually probably seen how special it's going to be. So this is, this is a really easy decision today and I'm excited and, and um, it's pleasing too that we've had such a unanimous round the table support around this and the related projects. Thank you. Um, I I think just before I go to Councillor Bunting for his right to reply, the, um, yeah, look, I think it looks really great, and I'm excited. Um, as you know, I've been involved in, with the zoo for a really long time. The only thing I'm a bit disappointed in is there is no big, huge hedge of a, um, a of zoo animals. That was one of the things we discussed on the approach. I can see that we've got the zebra um, crossing, which is really cool. And it actually looks like a zebra. Um, but there was also, on, on some of the landscaping along the road, there was uh, the vision of having some structures, a little bit like the trons from the garden, but uh, shaped into animals. And, you know, maybe that's a possibility that through the community uh, committee that we could fundraise for something like that because um, to really enhance the approach to the whole area. Um, but this is great. Uh, Councillor, oh, Mayor Southgate? Sorry, Madam Chair, just wanted to catch up with those comments. Support you, and well done you for suggesting the zebra crossing and other elements that represent the zoo and uh, are different and creative. It's a very attractive design. I'm really excited about what this um, does around road safety because um, when I was there recently for what? Um, why were we there? Recently, we went and had a look at the zoo, at the, the chimpanzee probably exposure, uh, the, the chimpanzee new um, enclosure, I think, and, um, and blessing of the site. We, that's what it was, we were at the blessing of the site. I knew I'd been there again recently. <laughs> that's more important. Uh, and that was a very lovely occasion. And while I was coming and parking for that event and standing talking with some of the other guests, some of the driving past there was just horrendous. I don't know, there but the grace of God, are they airborne? Because yeah. they really, really do go fast. And you can tell from the, that rise that the, um, there's very little visibility because of the curve in the road at one side and the dip in the road at the other. So the fact that people will be safer, because I've seen people running the gauntlet from one side to the other with children, um, pram, children holding onto their hand, that that's... Uh, not good at all. But going that step further, like you say, Madam Chair, the, the making this entrance look really, really appealing and exciting, I think is really good. Excited about the um, um, one side looking very natural and in keeping with Waifakariki, and the other side, as you say, alerting people to the experience that's inside it with animals. Mm. And I'm um, meeting with the Astronomical Society, who are doing some work in tandem with the zoo at the moment, I think next week. Um, who also have some really interesting cool. ideas to discuss with us about the whole site and how they, we can help them become more public as well. Mm. And then, you know, you can go to the nature, you can go to the zoo, you can look at the stars. Yeah, the I mean, stars. it doesn't get much better than a, yeah. uh, three different opportunities all within 100 metres of each other, does it? Mm. So 
Thanks, thank you, Madam Chair. Great, thank you, Mayor Southgate. Our right of reply, Councillor Bunting. I'd like you to close your eyes and I'll take oh, you the other way. No, no. Just kidding. No, let's, let's get on with it. Thank you. <laughs> no, well said. <laughs> All right, so we'll put that to the vote. All those in favour, please raise your hands. <laughs> um, there are none against. That's carried unanimously. Okay. <laughs> right, let's move on to uh, the first of three submissions. Now, this one is um, on the Water Services Bill. Uh, on page uh, 43. Hi, Myrie, how are you? I think you can take this as read. Um, this was emailed out to uh, all the committee members for feedback, and I think there was very little feedback. I think yes. I gave something. Was this? Sorry, my computer's over here. Um, on the emergency, I was concerned about the emergency um, powers that the new authority might have over us in, in a civil defence situation. Yes, that's correct. Um, but yep. staff agreed with that, and I think. Uh, uh, the Mayor also supported that, so that was probably one of the only changes? Uh, yes, that was the main change, um, but there were a couple of other small um, amendments that were made, but they were all highlighted in yellow in the appendix, yep. so um, they're quite minor in nature. Yeah. can see but happy to answer any questions anyone anyway Okay, thank you, Myri. Are there any questions? No? The, oh, Councillor Gallagher. Will, with the, that submissions are due, will obviously the council be represented directly either through video link or in person when making the submissions to the bill, or what's the...? That's the intention, yes. Good, if, if good, that good. is the desire of... I guess we just need to determine who would... No, no, I that. mean, obviously, probably appropriate appropriate start, you know, who, mm. yourself or the team, but very important to be in the, in the room. Thank you. Sure. OK. All right, that looks like that's all the questions on this submission, so thank you. You can leave the table. <laughs> all right, um, look, I'm happy to move this one, seconded by Councillor Van Osten. Um, nothing that I need to say. Thanks, staff, for the work on this. Um, so we'll put that to the vote. All those in favour, please raise your hands. And there are none against. That's carried unanimously. Thank you. Okay, the second submission, item 12, um, on the draft national parking management guidance from uh, Waka Kotahi. Now, I do have, I'll just indicate, committee members, that there is a, a motion uh, that will get up on the board, moved by the Deputy Mayor, seconded by myself. This is just to allow a few more days um, to get some staff, uh, to get some elected member feedback. Hi, Jason, how are you? Um, okay, so we'll get that up on the board. Um, Jason, you can take, again, you can take this one as read. Okay. Um, and we'll just see if there are any questions. Uh, question, Deputy, um, Deputy Mayor. No, sorry. It wasn't a, I, oh, I just okay. had, in case just... you needed me to explain it, that's oh, all. Oh, actually, yes, I do. Yeah. OK, thanks. Uh, thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, I, I uh, very briefly, I have some concerns that the submission uh, that we presently have doesn't ref necessarily reflect the views of elected members. Um, the NZTA parking guidelines um, support the NPS urban development's um, plan to remove minimum car parking requirements for developers. And as it stands at the moment, our submission, uh, without reservation, supports those NT NZTA guidelines. So um, I acknowledge that elected members did have some time to make um, to their views known on this. It was quite a short time, I think about mm. three working days, and it clashed for me with a, with a family bereavement. So um, submission isn't due until March the 12th, and uh, I would just like a, a few more days um, to provide feedback and then leave it at the discretion of the chair um, uh, what submission goes ahead. Great. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Councillor Gallagher, question? To, to our streets engineer. I mean, basically, in a nutshell, could you summarise what this new will do? Because um, I'm just, I, I think I'm hearing our Deputy Mayor's concerns, I think. I just want to make sure. How well, um, introducing a bit more time to get feedback, yeah. is that what you're talking about? Well, in terms of the implications. No, um, we, we can certainly got time to take on board feedback um, to the, the draft parking principles. So, like um, Deputy Mayor Taylor uh, indicated, that we don't have, need to have our, our submission until the 12th of March. 
However, this is the last opportunity in a formal setting to be able to uh, discuss this matter. And so, as part of the recommendations, we're asking if we can get under yeah, item C, um, that we delegate approval to the final submission to the to the chair of the Infrastructure um, Operations Committee. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McPherson. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Councillor. Um, does the submission? I was. I couldn't find. I might. I might be looking for the wrong words. Couldn't find um, for sure where in, uh, a suggestion that had come up at workshop was that um, in, in lieu of the pa minimum parking rules that Je Jeff's referred to, there be a, a transport plan uh, required of developers. So, because that was quite strict. So if you're not going to have parking, you've got to have some transport um, plan in place for a new development because you can't just say no parking and forget about them sort of sure. argument that was that was brought up at least twice during the early discussions so I couldn't see that in there which uh, is not exactly on Jeff's point it relates to the same point in the NPS yeah so is this separate form under the NPS that's saying that re uh, road controlling authorities should manage parking through developing parking management plans? Are you talking about No, that? no, no. This is no, no, separate no, for the this developers? Is, this is to do okay. with the developers no longer, as the proposal goes, being yes. required to have parking, parking. on site. Um, and the suggestion, I know, because I, I raised it mm. probably about three times, actually, in return mm. for not having a developer doing a development in the suburb, not having to have parking on site, we <coughs> require... A transport management plan, not a parking management plan, a transport mm. management plan. In other words, if no parking needed, what are the alternatives? And, that, and I, so I've sort of got, I'm saying that because I've got some sympathy with Jeff's point, but I'm not sure it covers the discussions that we've mm. had. Um. I, I couldn't see it, it may have been couched in different phrases to so that NZTA would understand it because there's. I'm talking so plain English here. Yeah, um, I think just picking up, uh, sorry, having come in late, um, I think you're talking around the MPS UD and the yeah. work mm. that Jamie is doing in that space. Um, so certainly there does need to be a transport sort of plan of some sort in, in those um, circumstances. Um, this submission is purely about guidance from NZTA or Wakakotahi on how we develop a parking management plan. So this is kind but of much another level. A, sorry to interrupt, shouldn't you have a, I understand the point you're making, but shouldn't you have a reference to what the alternatives are then? Look, we, we, we uh, can. It's more I a workshop type discussion I'm trying to have. You, yeah, because um, you and I chair. raised the same thing when that submission came out in terms of alignment of all of the stuff that we're yeah. trying to work mm. on and we haven't finished and yet we are being asked for our opinion but on. That's probably the problem. I'm not, yeah. Yeah, and I don't know. I think um, somebody responded to that email chain just acknowledging, yes, there's, there's some misalignment here, but... We, you know, we've still got to put in that submission. So, does the draft submission speak to any of that? Um, I don't believe it does. No, in no. terms of it, purely references this document in terms of yeah. being a, a guidance document for producing yeah. parking management plans. But taking on board that yeah, there is, it would so be many deficient if it doesn't say what the other levers are. Yes, other yeah, transport absolutely. levers or alternatives are. Yeah. So it does reference back to the keeping cities moving, which is that whole modal shift plan that was mm. developed that has been developed as well. So yeah, I absolutely agree. There are so many different moving parts mm. at the moment. But we've tried to keep this submission purely about this document. But so if, if, if we end up in a no parking provided situation mm. and there's no funding for mode shift uh, <coughs> specific or just generally across an area, a, a district or city, then we're putting the cart before mm. the horse, are we not? Mm. So what I'm hearing is that that's probably something that's omitted from the current draft submission. It's the context, maybe, you know, of yeah. what, what's the transport debate going on and transport implementation going on yeah. that will enable a policy like this to be useful. Mm. 
So I'm happy to say that we can pick that up if you'd like, um, Madam yeah, Chair. Yeah, so um, I see the motion is um, delegating me as the Chair to um, finally approve, but obviously there's a bit of a, a process. So we'll, um, I guess if we, we all get together with staff and any interested EMs who want to further give some feedback on the submission, we can, we can look at explaining, I guess, to them or putting in the submission the work that we are doing, but the fact that it's, you know, we, are, we haven't completed any of that work yet. Pick up um, the Deputy Mayor's points and anybody else's points, come up with a draft, get that out to EMs again, and if I feel everyone's relatively happy, then that's my sign-off, okay. I guess. Is that okay? Yeah. All right, sounds good. And hopefully, yeah, we'll be able to pick up. It's just, just local government, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It just seems to be happening more and more of this misalignment and it frustrates us. Um, uh, Mayor Southgate. Um, to support this, I guess my view, although we can obviously can have this further conversation now so I won't go too far in it, but just to alert it, alert staff and the public to some thinking around this, where, where we're no longer required to have parking, um, should be an evidence-based discussion, an outcomes-based discussion. I know I'm going away from the RMA and all of that is stuff mm. as well. But for example, horse, uh, I support what Dave's saying, strengthening the idea that we might require of a developer or um, some additional um, connection with the existing public transport system, some shared car use, some bike stands and racks, um, um, a sheltered seat, any of those kind of things that make the use of alternative modes more comfortable. Um, the other thing is that traffic engineers in Hamilton City Council keep really good data on what's going on in our streets. Yeah. So it should be a data-driven discussion, and it doesn't look like it will be. So some streets might lend themselves quite nicely to a, a row of cars outside the, the development, um, and it would still offer the chance for visitors to get to local businesses, etc., etc. And other streets are going to be completely problematic without access by car. Mm -hmm. uh, I think um, if we've got a plan as a city to uh, do other things... Uh, like create designated off-road bikeways or lanes somewhere else, all of that should come into the mix. It shouldn't be disengaged. It's the strategic traffic management of the CBD. I'm particularly thinking of the CBD where the infill and, and nodes, of the, uh, nodes of our um, outlying communities where transport has to be. And that's what we've got to beef up in here, in my view. Um, it isn't blanket. You don't have to put parking in. It's around what else, what else is going on in that area. Does this have an impact on the nearest intersection that's unfavourable? Does this create a traffic safety problem for people crossing the road? Or can this be done in a way that moves us forward towards mode shift? I just think it's too black and white. We were, in, we were on debate, eh? No. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, Do you agree? <laughs> Madam Chair, you should have said question, please. I was, in, I was listening so, to what you were saying. I didn't realise that was debate. I thought you were giving... Was, really. so, but ah, I thought you, you were giving your okay, feedback on what you want to see in the submission. Here. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> sorry. No, no, that's fine. Um, <laughs> Councillor Gallagher. We were being, we were being awfully polite. Yeah. Yeah. The... Um, this is the one that the Jeff you sent the horror photos. Is that the one? Yes. And this is the frustration I have. We got we got Ryan Hamilton's committee about to happen around urban planning and intensive development. We've got realities which I think Jeff's photos showed us about. We have an ideal, but the reality is um, you have a whole lot of cars parked on grass verges all over the place, and then you're talking about living streets and lovely little kids being able to walk along the street with the cycles and safely play, and then suddenly you've got a backing car on a grass verge. You've got the terrible winter sort of mashing up the verges, the greenscape. So I, I'm just trying to get in my own head, sort of joining all the dots and then giving up, making sure that we have total local flexibility. And I pick up Paula's point, because if you do a sort of a development, yep, there will be places where you, you can have, um, you know, appropriateness and mode shift and mode change. But you're going to have, and, and what I really want with, with its Ryan's committee, I just want us to jump in a bloody minibus, and I've said this for years, 
go to Cameron Road, go to all our high density areas and let's see what, what is working, what is good. So it's, 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 it's design, it's where the cars park, it's where the public transport is, where the cycleways are. Let's go and see what, what, what is working, what is good and, and what, what's just um, abysmal. And I will say to some of you who may be, uh, you know, for want of a better word, living in a middle class lifestyle, I'm sure, and I mean, you know, some of my best friends are very <laughs> middle class, uh, but, um, you know, we, we have choices, you know, because we own a home or we can do a nice apartment or, you know, I do, I, I'm an apartment dweller, I even yeah. use buses now. But the point I'm making is a lot of people who live in the Cameron Roads yeah. and the yeah. high density... Each counter not up there. Uh, well, but... well, we're not in debate. Well, that's all right. OK, OK. I'm, I'm just saying, the question is, can you confirm that you would not think of imposing we were doing uh, so well. uh, that you will be very sensitive to people who have no yeah. choice but to live in a particular part of town uh, who, are, who are going to be no choice. They have to live in a high-density area and they have to weave around park cars and all the horror pictures that Jeff did versus those of us who perhaps have greater choice uh, of where we live. Because this is about people who live in part of town. They have no choice because of the rental, where they live. And I'm wanting to get that environment sorted. Could, yep. could you just say yes? Can you confirm yes. that? <laughs> there you go. So let's get back to the submission. <laughs> Not on the submission, but on the other stuff, yes. Um, so, Councillor Sarah, I'm sure you have a question. Yes, I, I do have a question. Thank you, Chandler. <laughs> um, my question is, to what extent do these guidelines uh, touch on the issue of illegal parking mm -hmm. on footpaths because and cycleways? Um, it's something that I'm noticing a lot of, mm -hmm. and when I posted about it, it got you know, a lot of feedback. People yeah. are really frustrated that... Everyone just gets away with it, and it's yeah. um, becoming so a huge issue. So that becomes a bylaw issue. So that's yeah. something that will be dealt with in the operational space. So in terms of John Purcell's parking management yeah. team, things like that. This is very much looking at how do you develop or write a parking yeah. management plan. So it doesn't go into that sort of bylaw level of detail, because that's kind of sits underneath it. OK. Is that a conversation we could have at some point? Just I know we're looking at the image recognition vehicles and potentially getting two rather than one and that kind of thing but mm. it's just becoming like really bad and I'm sure others will have noticed it too. Yeah. What bylaw does that sit under? Where's Robin? Tanya do you know? Oh there you are. Good morning. morning. Um, so that is covered under the traffic bylaw okay. so I can confirm that it is illegal yeah. to, to park um, in your driveway and block yeah. a footpath, to park, to park on a mm. footpath, mm. to park on no stopping. Um, I guess that's where it comes a bigger issue around a having it reported, yeah. um, and then the resourcing around it. So that's where the license plate recognition technology mm. freeing up um, our limited resource of enforcement yep. officers to go and deal with that will become an important part. Sounds like a good case for to have some bylaw officers that I've always wanted to have. But yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I know. <laughs> Okay, um, uh, no, <laughs> well, yeah, I suppose. Um, okay, no, so that's all the questions. So um, we're quite, I think hopefully we're, everyone's clear on the process going forward. I'll make sure that um, everybody gets um, their second chance at this or their first chance for those members that weren't um, able to. So De Deputy Mayor, you've um, moved this. Did you want to speak to it? Just briefly, if I may, thanks, Chair. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I, I think the poten potential impact of uh, the, the, the blanket removal of minimum car parks for developments does deserve a bit more scrutiny. And um, so I'd like to see our submission um, focus a little bit more on that. Um, I think it would be a bit irresponsible just to, to tacitly uh, make no comment on it and just let it go, because I think it is really important. Um, it, as uh, Councillor Gallagher has mentioned before the meeting, I sent around photos of uh, what's happening in parts of Hillcrest right now with cars parked everywhere um, on the kerb all over the place. That's also happening in Melville, um, Beda, uh, parts of Norton, Enderley. Um, and I don't just think it's a case of uh, things not being policed well enough in terms of bylaws. The fact is that there's a need for them to park their cars. They've got cars and they've got to go somewhere. Um, 
And uh, that is under present rules, where developers um, do have to create some minimum parking. So what's going to happen when you actually remove that, as things are at the moment? Um, whether or not you embrace uh, the whole mode shift idea, um, that we must get out of cars and into buses and, and bikes and walk, uh, and I do to an extent, perhaps not um, as much as some around the table, um, we are in a transition um, and we're not in a world yet where we can do that. We're nowhere near that. And I think implementing a blanket uh, law like this is just basically a recipe for chaos. And I'd also point out that the Climate Commission, the Climate Change Commission, came out very strongly about the impact that e-vehicles could have in New Zealand. And they actually said that in the next 15 years, that is our biggest opportunity to reduce emissions. So where do the e-vehicles park? Mm. Uh, if you get rid of uh, minimum car parking requirements. It seems to me a little bit clumsy um, and a one-size-fits-all, uh, lacking any sort of nuance. And uh, so I, I'm quite fearful of, of where that will head. Um, and I just think we have a, an obligation to object to something which we think uh, could well be damaging to our city. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Hamilton. Thanks. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, look, I sympathise with a lot of Deputy Mayor's comments, I think. We are in that transition, and, and this is our opportunity to influence what is going to be a, a significant change and just how we navigate that. I think that's the key, really. Not denying it, but just how we can nuance it. And uh, I think Mayor Paul also said, used the word transition. So this just gives us a bit more time. I think that's sensible. Um, to Councillor Martin's point regarding district plan, we're seeing a lot of overlap from these different things. and and local government and central government. And I just remind um, elected members, I think it's um, two o'clock tomorrow that all of you have the opportunity to be at a very initial sort of scope setting, read the district plan, and um, I'd love to get your feedback and input into that because that's going to be a significant piece of work. And I've noted Councillor Martin's minivan trip, and so we'll make sure he gets shotgun on that one. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Gallagher. Yeah, um, I apologise. Sometimes I'm not as um, concise or articulate <coughs> as I want to be. And what, what I'm trying to share, and, and sort of my humour may get to the better man, I might, so I'm very worried to the Deputy Mayor on this one. I am, that, but, but seriously, you know. Uh, but he raises a point. All I'm trying to say, to, we can have the ideals, and trust me, I want mode shift, and I want the livable, lovely city, you know, the Paris of Polynesia, etc. The thing that worries me is that we always have to be aware that a whole bulk of our community, particularly in, who cannot buy a house or certainly a rental, don't have choices about where exactly they live and the environments their kids live. And some of the photos that Jeff sent, I think, is, you know, I see them every day, but that's the unacceptable phase. And this is where we just have to have a, a holistic nimble um, thinking in it, and it is a transition, just getting, if you like, uh, that transition right. So I really think that this is so, uh, so, so important that we, we achieve that. I'm not against, obviously, mode shift. I'm not against uh, apartments that may have on-street car parking, etc. you know, all of that, but I think we just have to get in our sort of... because And one of the issues you have, we're not designing a brand new Paris Greenfields thing, you know, we're retrofitting, you know, we're taking old sections that were designed for the bungalow, the single bungalow, and then we're cramming in the, the multi-storey, multi-residence, um, et cetera, et cetera, and then we're shoving the cars uh, out on, onto the street. So those are things. So I just, I think we've just really got to have that degree of flexibility and nimbleness in, I guess, that transition. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor, Gall uh, Councillor McPherson. As my colleague, Councillor Ryer, just whispered to me during that last speech, bonjour and talofa, you know, the, the Paris of Polynesia. <laughs> you get it, Bunty? Um, anyway. <laughs> good, good, good. Uh, look, I, I also share, um, I have sympathy with um, Jeff's point. Um, I, perhaps I want the outcome we're talking about here more quickly than he does, um, but I recognise that he's a, 
a recent convert to getting out of the car and onto the bike. Um, the only problem is he hasn't got his bike yet, but it's in getting silver paint on it, I understand, at the moment. And then he'll have it. <laughs> um, but uh, the, end, the end result of a, of a one-size-fits-all law being brought in, or rule being brought in, will be that Jeff's list of working-class suburbs will suddenly expand to include all the middle-class suburbs in the city as well and you'll have about 40 different names to read out, Jeff, instead of 10 different names. Um, this is one area where putting in a rule right now clearly won't work. If we put in a target, and it's a funded target, and we get a share of funding from the, from the powers that be that want to make these rules, then we'll be able to work towards it, and we should have a transition programme. Jeff was quite right to use that word. Um, so, we, you know, we know Hamilton better than they do um, and what they're trying to do by bringing in a rule just won't work. Even if we supported it and it went in, it still wouldn't work. We all know that we're still going to have cars parked all over the place and we're going to have developments with uh, six um, small units, each of them with two to four people in, every person with their own car and car parks on the street uh, for Africa. Um, they'll take, they'll reach from about here to Africa if we let that run away with us. So we've got to have a better means of control and a better, and we have to have a transition plan. That's what's important, not a set of rules that um, the ministry or the department might think up. So perhaps we need to be putting that message in that they're going about it the wrong way. Not that they have the wrong end result mm. in mind, because I think that's the correct end result, but it's the wrong way of going about it. Thank you. Councillor Wilson. Yeah, look, um, Councillor Dave uh, has actually captured a lot of what I was going to say, um, and I support a lot of what the Deputy Mayor has said. I think, uh, in general, um, some well-meaning aspirational goals which they've suddenly unilaterally dumped in front of us um, too quick uh, uh, and without sufficient planning. Um, uh, so from my point of view, a clearly articulated argument back to them saying, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, we get the gist of what you're trying to do, but it needs to be more staggered. It needs to be more thought, th th thought through. Um, I have to say um, uh, very clearly, we're not ready to give up our cars just yet, and we're not ready to give up the convenience of having car parks. Um, and we can talk aspirationally about cities that have done parts of this around the world and feel really good about it. But if you do that in isolation and not realise all the other things that those cities have done to enable it, um, you know, you get the wrong outcome. So uh, I actually support Dave and, and the Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Mayor Southgate. I've had a long debate before, so I'm not going to get into <laughs> it, just to say that um, I'm strongly of the view that we take a strategic planning approach to transport and um, we need to stop picking off one aspect and one aspect and one aspect, but to go back to the to the um, str strategy that underpins it and how one thing... Imp I've, and I think Ewan's bang on with his commentary in that respect. When you look at what leads to success, it's not just the removal of parking spaces, a whole heap of, heap of other things, even the way that the pavements are designed and widened and, you know, all kinds of things happen um, to make that successful. We don't... We want to demonstrate... I'd rather do some things properly and kind of not be don't take this the wrong way, slow down. I'd like, rather do things properly than to do them in haste and to do them in a way that doesn't quite bring the outcomes that we intended. Thank you. Councillor Bunting, no yeah. more eyes closed, please. <laughs> <laughs> not even myself. No, no, no look, um, we've got to also remind ourselves too that this is not a transport initiative that was brought through by this. This is actually a response to housing um, and it's just mm. one of the consequences that we're dealing with. Um, so I'm, I'm right behind what we're doing here. Excellent debate. Um, I, I just have a few comments. I, I support um, strongly the Deputy Mayor raising this and um, 
I guess the, the first thing that I saw when I saw this pop up into my, uh, my first reaction when I saw this pop up into my email box was, oh God, why is the government now getting into parking as well? Um, but having read through it, and I understand in Councillor Bunting's right, it is about housing. But it's also, um, it's also a bit frustrating in terms of, and I'm just going to go just a tiny bit broader at the moment, since most of the debate has been, is the clearest example since my time on council of a consequence of a decision we've made is I, and there was myself, and if I recall, Councillor Gallagher and McPherson might have been Councillor Forsyth, who actually voted against the current district plan when it was adopted. Do you remember that? We were over in a, in a um, we were off-site. Yes, we were, and uh, it was a bit of a hairy moment, I think, for the current mayor at the time that um, there was a, a party of us that voted against it, and there were a variety of reasons. But one of them I remember when we went through that district plan review and we made the conscious decision, although questioned staff heavily at the time, of taking away the requirement for parking in the CBD for commercial developments and loosening it for our residential developments. And now we're suffering the consequences of that, of, of the pictures that the Deputy Mayor circulated to us and the frustrations of cars, um, intensified areas and cars on, on you know, footpaths blocking things. So if, if out of my 13 years on council, there's one really direct, frustrating example of a consequence of a decision that we made, it's, it's this. So we do need to take the time to try and get it right. This is a tiny, um, a tiny part of that. It does, it does cement our position. So um, very supportive of taking a little bit of extra time. Thank you for allowing me to go a bit wider with my comments. Um, Deputy Mayor, right of reply. <clears throat> I just thank, uh, thank you to elected members for their comments. Great. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. All right, let's um, put that to the vote. All those in favour, please raise your hands. How are you going there, Zoomers? <laughs> Um, there are none against. That's carried unanimously. Thank you. Right. Good work, everyone. And the last submission on page 105 for um, HCC was the drug driving. Hi, Robin. Um, I didn't see... This was emailed to us on the 4th of February. I didn't see any feedback. Did you get any direct comments from anyone? Uh, no, on this one? OK. All right. Um, you can take the report as read... Um, thank you, Councillor McPherson. Moved, seconded by Councillor Thompson. That's it. <laughs> I'll put that to the vote. There being no questions, um, raise your hands. All those in favour? Thank you. And there are none opposed. That's carried. All right. Now we're on to item 14, the external committee update. We're on page 111. Um, why have I got here plus a recommendation for the named EMs to What have I got there? Oh, okay. Oh, yes, yes. So um, you would have received an email from Robin around um, anyone interested in helping develop our submissions to the RLTP. And um, I think you've got a bunch of names already, so you'll follow through with that process to make sure we get a really robust one. Um, but as we normally do with this, we'll go to the, um, the members of this committee and get a verbal update on, on uh, their attendance at these meetings. So we'll start with um, the regional Waikato Regional uh, Council Transport Committee, of which I am the appointed person, and Councillor McPherson's the alternate, and Councillor Sarah. Um, was in attendance. You can read pretty much the report um, from me. Robin's covered that off nicely on what happened. It was the adoption of the RLTP, and as I said, we've got a submission that we want to uh, put forward. It will be timely for us to get that information of that David Spears promised us by Thursday as well to feed into this possibly. Um, I also attended a meeting and workshop with this committee. I think the last one was the 7th of December. Uh, that missed our committee round, um, and that was just around the order of priorities for that plan. Now, if I can speak on behalf of the other HCC um, members, because the three priorities of this plan are the strategic corridors are number one, and then safety, and then uh, access and mobility. Um, we did have some concerns you know, around that. 
in turn, and I know Councillor um, Thompson's keen on um, uh, access and mobility, but we sort of we didn't really raise it too much at the meeting. I think the government's funding and the GPS is uh, this plan has to align right to the GPS and the government's funding, which is which is um, priority on strategic corridors. So I think uh, look, that's all from me, um, Councillor McPherson. Do you want to add something? No. Oh yes. No, no. Councillor Thompson. Uh, only that I think the RLTP. Uh, so there, it was um, approved for consultation for yep. four weeks, um, and it will be really important that we put in a strong mm. submission on it. I've mm. um, I understand that for projects like. Uh, Eastern Pathways and things that we need to really highlight them mm. and show that this is a priority for the region. At the moment, I think it's a bit hidden uh, in that document. <laughs> um, and so that's stuff that can be worked through with um, our committee. But for the tiny slither of funding that's left for things like walking, cycling, public transport, we need to make sure that w these projects are really high priority in that document so that they at least get a good look at. Um, are we doing anything on the Connections Committee or after Yeah, we'll this? do that after this one. Yeah, great. Um, oh, Councillor Gallagher? Well, I have, I mean, obviously on the staff recommendation, of course you add Councillor Wilson because he's our, our rail component, you know, in terms of his role. So mm -hmm. I think it definitely needs to be in that, um, the submission thing. I have questions too, actually, <coughs> Councillor Wilson, when you bring that up with regard <coughs> to his... Um, the Startup Rail Governance Group. Yep, so when you're ready, I'll ask him some questions, if I may. Yep, great, thank you. Councillor McPherson? Yeah, sorry, there was something I admitted. To, that the Regional Land Transport Plan, which was discussed there and approved for consultation, yep. lumps all forms of transport in together, together. Mm -hmm. and which really yeah, limits yeah. the effectiveness of our lobby for alternatives, for mode shift, because they... Uh, not of any consequence to most of the uh, rural councils, to be honest. Mm. The only thing that perhaps is is, rec is recreational cycleways, which they're quite mm. well into, but they're not commuter cycleways. Different sort of animal from what yeah. we're trying to achieve here in the city, mostly, apart from Tiawa. Um, so we... I've certainly floated the idea that we really need to have... a two or three separate streams, one for state highways and one for mode shift or uh, one for PT and one for walking and cycling and uh, let the Waka Kotahi or the Ministry of Transport decide if we say which are our priorities in those streams, they can then decide which ones they wish to fund mm. rather than at the moment our ones are slotted in at number 13, number 15, number 79 and mm. so forth. Um, the only one we'd be able to get up high is Southern Links, which is another ro road mm. thing, uh, primarily. Um, so we suffer in those areas we really want to get funding for because we're lumped in with it. Everything's lumped in together, mm. uh, mm. even with um, cattle underpasses, and I'm not exaggerating there. So uh, we um, should be... Our submission should make sure it focuses on um, yeah. tactical ways within that system which we're legally obliged to be part of, the Regional Transport Committee, uh, tactical ways to elevate our issues, and I think having them together is mm. not a winner. It's never been really a winner. Mm. Um, even the uh, regional councils, public transport people, are frustrated, you can see, when you talk to them privately, or out of those meetings, with the lack of attention that that gets compared with highways. Mm. So that's the sort of the result of the sort of mix of councils we have there. Yeah, yeah. Um, Robin, is there anything you wanted to add to that no. from the last meeting? No. Um, question, Deputy Mayor. Thanks, Chair. Look, it, I may be completely um, unaware, but I'm just trying to check. There, there was so there was some discussion about changing the the public transport, the bus system, the way it works in the city to more of a demand 
approach. Is this part of that? that yeah, that's the next one. Okay. We'll, oh, okay. we'll go to right. that right Great. now. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, look, I, I just on um, Councillor McPherson's comments, it would be nice to have them the, them separated, the activities separated out. It is a um, very highway dominated um, motorway, what do we call them, group, um, and often discussions end up, if they're not about roads outside of our our city boundary, which is still important, then it's on painting bridges and <laughs> mowing lawns, and and so I, you know may, maybe it's maybe it's the process, it's the governance set up of the the whole thing that we might be able to feed into our new NZTA um, rep for for some review in the future. Um, yeah. Um, all right. So let's move on to fourteen. Oh yes. Sorry. Just on that. I agree with you because I sat formally where you, you're mm -hmm. now um, and we talked a lot about um, effluent dumping stations on highways and small bridges and even paint, paint, colour of the paint on a bridge and we really need to get past that but I do think there's a case to be made through um, NZTA and the metro sector for metros to engage differently mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. this topic. Yep. It's really quite different for us as the fastest growing, one of the fastest growing cities from a small rural community that where people can meander and cycle down the main street any time they like. So, mm. yeah, yeah, it sounds like we're all on the same page. It'd be great to be able to have a conversation to see how we can start yeah. lobbying or advocating for some change in that area. Then, yeah, we need to change the structure of those conversations, yeah. don't we, Madam yeah. Chair? To, otherwise, we'll just yeah, yeah, agree. Mm. Oh, Councillor Gallagher, on that. Uh, I mean, like you can, that's why the current model of the RLTDC. Uh, I'll stop there, is, is a flawed model mm. for the city of Metro Hamilton. It's flawed. Mm. It's flawed. Okay. I get to hear more about what uh, the Mayor Paula talks about than I do about Motif sometimes. Mm. Okay. Seriously. All right. Um, so let's move on to point 14 and on page 113, which is the update from the Regional Connections Committee. You can see the members um, there. We had a meeting on the 19th last week was the first meeting of the year. Um, I did have to leave early, so I'm going to go to um, Councillor McPherson and Councillor Thompson because I did, unfortunately, the first half of the meeting was, remember, was all sort of regional stuff and then we went, we named the bus, oh, and Councillor Wilson, we named the bus route and a few other things. So, Dave, can you give us a... Charles, the... Yeah, but no, yeah, so you were there for that, though? No, no. Oh, sorry. We no. decide unanimously to support the Meteor as the name. For the new east-west route yeah. bus. So we've got Comma, Orbiter and Meteor. Yeah, and the, the issue that Jeff raised about demand responsive travel mm. is meant to be something that's available in new areas rather than setting up a whole big bus yeah. service or air feeder areas to these north-south routes like the Comet, um, where when, when they've made the Comet, put the Comet in place and when they will put the Meteor in place, subject to funding, um, they often amalgamate routes, straighten them and put them in two routes into one and things like that. Mm -hmm. So there becomes larger areas that aren't directly serviced by bus routes. And the, the idea is that the um, those demand responsive ones could feed into them, but mm -hmm. also would be available for things like night shift workers at the hospital is one example uh, where you could, couldn't justify a full-scale bus service, but you could... Um, justify a small service, so that's the sort of things. But they, and there is funding in the coming financial year. They've, they've said again for that in the regional council's budget for that. They also identified for that there's a infrastructure gap at the moment. Uh, we don't have money for infrastructure improvements for those priority bus routes, including the Comet and the Meteor, which is something that. Chair Angela and some of us have been having a look at in the last month. Mm. Um, there was there's one other project which could well be in jeopardy, and that's the upgrade of the Lawn Street um, Ohopo Road intersection, which is an NZTA intersection, and they have to put quite a, quite a lot of money, yeah. three million or something, was it, yeah. or six million? I can't remember. Yeah. Into upgrading that, it's a comet route, it's an orbiter route uh, intersecting there. It's very hard for buses to get out of the hospital hill, Pembroke Street, mm. onto that. 
a whole lot of problems that need to be fixed and if NZTA is not going to fund that, it's going to remain jammed up. They've also identified a lack of um, bus stopping facilities up on Hospital Hill on Pembroke mm -hmm. Street, uh, which we would have to fund an improvement for. Sorry? Mm. Outside there too. Yeah, yep, yep. At Glen, outside the Glenview shopping, shopping centre, centre. Shopping centre. Mm. but also raised by Ewan, probably for about the tenth time, has been the airport link, mm. um, and whether that's to include uh, part of the Te Aumutu and or Cambridge services, uh, or an extension of the Hamilton services, we seem to be quite a way off making any decisions on, but has been sort of supported in principle. Mm. But the real problem is probably now lack of funding Funded. surety for anything new mm. Mm. so that's just a couple of comments councillor wilson did you want to add anything yeah look, uh, i think dave summarized it really well uh, there were two areas which i think i can expand on slightly um, as a consequence of a meeting i had yesterday with andrew um, and one other um, it's very oh the two andrews one's yeah. andy one andrew um, uh, both in regards to the airport and the on-demand pilot. Um, actually, if I start with the on-demand first, you'll recall in the past we had the night rider bus that was uh, unsuccessful for all intensive purposes. And when COVID came along, the opportunity arose for us to cease that. Um, but the first example of on-demand will actually be up and running later this year um, on a Friday and on a Saturday only during certain hours where anybody within Hamilton could call the on-demand bus to the CBD only and for a fee of approximately $10 per booking. So if there's three of you, it's split. Or if there's five of you, it's split. Um, and that would bring you to the CBD. What it wouldn't do is take you from um, Chart Chartwell to Dinsdale. It, it's driven at the concept to, uh, to bring people into the CBD. Um, they have ordered six vehicles. Uh, they're really impressive. Mm. Um, they've got um, uh, disability uh, entrance ramps. They look like a little bus inside. Um, the technology that drives the mm. app is the same technology that the city of Manhattan uses. Uh, the city of Manhattan, the, the, the app does more per day than... Um, than just about any other ride share app Uber. in the United yeah. States, including Uber. So it's mm. a tested platform. As you know, uh, I think a lot of us have spoken over the time about a connection to the airport. And as Dave articulated, uh, in an attempt to find a workable solution, we suggested they throw every option in the mix, including diverting a bus from Cambridge, including diverting the bus from TA that comes into Hamilton, um, to at least once or twice a day uh, visit our regional airport asset. Um, it's fair to say the airport company is lukewarm because they gleam a large amount of their revenue from charging people to park. Um, I wish somebody would turn on the light switch uh, and help them understand that maybe one of the reasons a lot of Hamiltonians choose to use Auckland as their preferred gateway to fly uh, to other parts of this great country is one, the flights are cheaper, and two, actually, things like parking, etc., is slightly cheaper. Uh, and you imagine if the airport embraced concepts where our people could mm. get to the regional asset, it may be become a more attractive option. However, um, what is being suggested, and I think will come to either this committee or maybe even the Economic Development Committee, is a pilot project where 
in this initial series of on-demand vehicles, since two of them won't be initially used, but their overhead infrastructure cost is already covered, that we may look at running an on-demand from the transport centre to the airport, but to negate concerns that the airport shuttle may have, who are a competitor, or taxis may have, we may limit it to one or two hour blocks per day, targeting the off-peak flight times, mm. because we know we're not going to get the, uh, the politicians and the corporates mm. out of the company-funded cars or ratepayer or taxpayer taxis. Uh, but if we could get mum and dad, who are likely to be on the least expensive fares around 10 in the morning, uh, flight mm. times in the mid-afternoon. So we're working on that as that is going to come to us, because wouldn't it be wonderful mm. if we in 2021 could actually have a public bus service <laughs> of some sort <laughs> to our, to our airport. regional <laughs> airport asset. Um, so that's my update as right. of yesterday. Thank you, um, Councillor. Councillor Thompson, anything you wanted to add from the meeting? No, I think that was a pretty good summary. Yeah. The only thing that was uh, already issued, Dave's touched on, but uh, I mean, it's just the misalignment of uh, LTPs, obviously, with yeah. infrastructure versus the frequent buses. Um, and what we heard was, in terms of the impact of COVID on public transport, mm. overall, um, we haven't climbed back up to the same levels mm. as pre-COVID, but except for the exception of when you look at the um, high, frequency high frequency routes like the Orbiter and the Comet, they've actually jumped back up to uh, pre-COVID levels. So you can see that um, there is more demand for those services and that's the, dire uh, you know, the direction we need to be heading in mm. terms of providing more of those. So that was quite interesting. But yeah, now with um, Waka Kotahi saying they don't have money for new mm. projects, it mm. throws a whole nother yeah. kind of spanner in the works. Mm. Yeah, thank you, Councillor. Yeah, I was just going to add too that um, the pre-COVID levels are still sort of 20% down, except what you say on those high frequency um, routes, which is really good. And I think the only other thing um, with the new pricing uh, structure that's coming that starts, I think, July as well, with the with the cap $20 for for a whole week of travel on buses and. I think the really easy messaging of a dollar in the CBD and two dollars outside is a really, um, I think that's quite significant and um, we have big expectations on their comms people to come up with something really exciting because that's, I think that pricing is, is significant and such an easy message. Um, question, um, Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Uh, just, I, just a question I didn't get a chance to, to ask because I was on the wrong report. <laughs> um, the, this, this two-part question, is the new six vehicles coming for the pilot, are they going to be electric vehicles or...? Um, I asked the same question and, yeah. and no, the answer is no, they're not. They, uh, this is done by the Waikato Regional Council, yep. no, they're diesel. Right. And, and the bus fleet, um, which has well, been refurbished in the last few years, isn't it? And, and, um, is, are there plans in place, given the Climate Change Commission's report, and also given um, some government ministers' concerns about respiratory issues from diesel, uh, is the Regional Council going to look at electrification of the fleet yeah, shortly? The, the bus operators, when they put in their contracts, they get eight-year um, tenders, you know, contracts for them, and uh, they effectively uh, amortise the cost, write off the costs over the eight years, and that contract is due... They start coming due for renewal, I think, from about 2025 onwards. It may even be 2024, Jeff. There's a there's two or three contracts that, and the first of them, second, they're a year about a year apart. It's a total of two years for three of them, I think. The or there's East and West and Orbiter uh, last time. They may change that this time, but they plan to get go all electric with the new contracts at that point. That's what um, the re the manager said. There is a capital cost implication, mm. but there's an operational cost positive implication as well. So if they can do it over an LTP life, they believe that it's managed. They've said he thinks it's manageable right. to, to, to switch completely the to... The entire fleet? 
year as the contracts come up for renewal that will still leave those other buses probably on school routes though and things like that being bought by other people so um, that's uh, sort of a, a flow on issue. Thanks Dave. Thanks Chair. Um, Miss Southgate? If I can just follow on from that because that was one of the brief things that did come up in the questioning with um, Minister Wood. Um, he recognises that transitioning public transport to electric modes or is, is desirable. He did um, caution me that the costs are really, really high, so it has to be done in a transitional way. I mean, I used them in Waiheke when, because um, they're all electric on Waiheke, which was a trial project there, going very well. But the upfront costs are really, really large for PT. Having said that, he was very interested in the mode shift of private citizens to EVs. Um, so, uh, you know, I just thought that we could be aware of that and it would be a conversation we could pick up with him when he comes. But, yeah, perhaps there's one other thing I forgot to mention. There's the infrastructure side of that. Out of the Rotokauri um, tr hub, transport hub that we've just built, they've got the... Um, the electrical links terminal slash in the ground below where the buses park to put in charges at whatever stage they needed. They don't have to retrofit the cabling and uh, supply, if you get what I mean. Um, plus, the other option is hydrogen fuel cell, which is also electric eventually, buses. And the, the, they've been in discussions, the regional council with Waitomo, who are doing a joint deal with Hiringa Energy, I think it's called, from Taranaki, mm. to put the first one um, in, I think the first commercial one in the country, in at the Waitomo station, just a couple hundred metres north of, of this, so they, they're they looking at the possibility of some tr trialling that as well. Mm. Okay, so that's um, the update on that one. I just want to say that I think um, possibly because there's how many of us? One, two, three, four of us that sit around the table. I think the committee's actually achieved a lot in the first 12 months, and um, you can be um, rest assured that your HCC reps are, are very engaged and persuasive when we need to be, and I think we've got some good wins, and of course Councillor Thompson got the um, B card plus one for the disability community as well. So I think we're, you know, for the first 12 or 16 months, we're doing really well, so I'm quite pleased. Um, okay, so now we'll move on to the Rail Governance Group, so we'll go to Councillor Wilson for an update. Always good news when it's about trains. <laughs> um, so, so we've now landed on a date for commencement, 6th of April. Uh, uh, we're excited about that. Um, you'll note in the agenda that it, spo it speaks about the... Um, uh, a ceremony for around the, well, sorry, on the 25th of March, and that's now in everybody's diaries, and um, hopefully you can attend. I understand um, the community. Oh, um, I was just helping you with sound. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> the community meetings on that day, and I understand you're going to adjourn. Yeah, squeeze it up. Uh, and yeah, so that, so that will be a wonderful day. Um, the, there are a few teething issues still being uh, resolved um, uh, at both Hamilton stations. Uh, Chris may want to elaborate uh, on that a little in terms of uh, Rota Cowrie um, uh, in a few minutes. Um, uh, in terms of Frankton, uh, the, on, uh, the ongoing discussion is... Kiwi Rail has raised some recent concerns at the level of antisocial behaviour around the station, uh, including people camping uh, uh, in uh, near the car park. Uh, they allege drug use. Um, uh, they also uh, raise there's a lack of CCTV coverage of the platforms. Um, uh, and the long and the short of it, they raised the fact that they would like someone to pay for it other than them. Um, I have been slightly less embracing of that premise on the basis that it's their asset. 
Um, uh, and if, in fact, we were of the mind to assist them, I suggested that the funding for this should come from uh, the Waikato Regional uh, Council in light of the fact that they has, have rated the ratepayers of Hamilton uh, for the last uh, uh, seven or eight months for a service that we've yet to actually receive. Uh, I've been advised that the Waikato Regional Council has in fact taken the unspent funds um, and uh, run it as a surplus and placed it into their <coughs> next 10 year plan. Sorry, uh, Councillor Wilson, did I hear you right? I'm not sure. Could you repeat that? I, yeah. I must have been so mistaken. My understanding from their <coughs> councillor, Angela Strange, that uh, they unilaterally have taken those funds and moved it uh, into their LTP as a surplus from unspent. Uh, in, uh, in this current year, having rated our ratepayers. So my point is, I think Kiwi Rail need to um, uh, uh, identify exactly the work they feel we need to do. We need to have a meaningful discussion about who pays for that. Um, but if, in fact, there is some uh, requirement for us to fund, when I say us, I mean the, uh, the governance group, uh, those funds should clearly come from the funds that the Waikato Regional Council have rated and not from the Hamilton ratepayer. It's fair enough to say that at least one of the councillors disagrees with my premise. Um, and so we had a bit of an exchange on that point. Um, uh, I think I've covered everything that I would want to, other than I, I really do believe... My final comment is, is this. Um, there are a lot of people in the community who are determined to see Tahuia fail. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of our community who actually held elected positions in this city in the past who want to see this thing fail. And I think that's a disgrace and I think that would be a, a shame. And I say to you as my elected colleagues, we need to be passionate advocates mm. and ambassadors for what will be, I believe, a transformational new transport enabling platform. And we've had our delays, we've had our complications, but I truly believe this will connect two great cities. And I, I just, I'm so excited to think that very soon we'd be able to jump on a train and get to, uh, uh, get to Auckland. So I really hope that when you're out there in your communities and areas of influence, you slam the naysayers and you support what we're trying to achieve and you encourage people to use it and you jump on it as often as you can because... Uh, it's, it's great, and it's going to be great for this city and for Auckland. Thank you for that update, Councillor Wilson. So we'll go to questions of Councillor Wilson or of staff on this rail item. Councillor Gallagher, you're up first. Yeah, I, I do reserve right for the commentary at the end, and I'm just wondering, uh, as part of my question, if Councillor Wilson um, may work with us to add to the resolution to the motion of this committee where we highlight the need to say to the regional council our, our expectations in terms of the funding issue that he, he raised, and I think we should be crystal clear of, of our position. Um, I note uh, that the Prime Minister's, I think there's going to be the official opening uh, at Rural Tukauri. Brilliant, um, a brilliant facility. Is that the Prime Minister calling now? She yes, will be there, hopefully. Is. Um, it's going to be a brilliant mm. facility. Frankton, however, confuses me. I just the first question I have is the, the signage. It's still called Hamilton. I understand the official name is now Hamilton Kirikiroa Frankton. I, I thought. Um, I just want to ask Councillor Wilson if I'm going to that facility to drop or collect people. Um, obviously, I'm going to be able to use the terminal. I can use the disability loo. Um, obviously, if I'm parking my car there all day, there'll be CCTV to monitor the safety of, of my car, and obviously there'll be a security presence um, to ensure that um, any antisocial sort of activities in the, in the station area uh, are not there. Uh, unlike the airport, the Rotocaria bus station, I, I do think the 
a bit of liquor paint could help. Um, so, Councillor Wilson, can you perhaps help me on those questions? Yeah, look, I'd be very happy to, to answer those questions, and I think Chris will be able to add any gaps that I um, uh, th that need filling. Can I first start by saying one of the things that I've been very disappointed about is the decision that the station will not be open uh, at Frankton for departures or for arrivals. There will be a period for 30 days when it first starts where it will be, but after that, it won't. And so the premise was to save some money, um, the train will arrive 15 minutes prior to departure and be ready for boarding at that time. So passengers departing would be able to get onto the, the carriages, have access to the toilet, have access to the cafe, have access to the Wi-Fi. And as such, it is argued that people won't need to have access to the station. Um, of course, if you're somebody who's dropping a family member off and you need to use the service of a bathroom, then you've got a complexity of potentially you wouldn't be able to get into the station. Um, and if you tried to use the toilet on the train, you'd run a risk of actually coming with us on the journey, um, whether you wanted to or, or, or not. I will say that in the event that the train is delayed, then after a certain period of time, the station would be open. This is a funding issue. It's one that I've raised. It's suggested, and I can't recall the quantum, but I think it's between 70 and 100,000 a year that we'd have to spend if we wanted to open it. Um, Chris may want to elaborate, uh, elaborate on that. My final comment in terms of painting of the, uh, of the station, yet again, the peculiar aspect to this is Frankton Station is not our asset. Uh, and when it suits Kiwi Rail, it's their asset. And when they want any work around it, it's somebody else's problem, but it's still their asset. Um, and, and hoping that someone else will pay. So we could paint it, but nobody could actually get into it. Um, uh, and it's not our asset, so I don't know why we would do that. Uh, obviously, I look forward to the comment. Thank you. That's helpful. Um, Councillor Wilson, I understood that the toilet there, you know, the two of you facilitated one or two of us. Thank you. And, we, and I think Sarah, talk, the others were, Sarah, was it, we were looking at the um, disability and access of that toilet. Was anything done to that? And now it's going to be closed. Uh, so um, the facility has had uh, a, a wonderful refurbishment. There is good quality uh, disabled toilets of, of a world-class standard, but no, you can't use them. So basically, how much was that? Uh, Can we, no, no, this is... So, uh, yeah, yes, no, 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 I know, I know. I know this is important stuff. So, Chris? Yep, look, if I can um, pick up on that. Um, so, so if I just sort of uh, go back a little bit, like, um, there was very minimal scope for Franklin Station upgrade right from the beginning in this business case. So yeah. in scope was um, work to the toilets um, and line marking for car parks, etc. So uh, a very minimal scope. So the, the things, things evolved through the project. Um, so uh, the toilets have been upgraded. So prior to the upgrade, um, they were very tired and uh, not very uh, friendly in terms of um, um, accessibility. Um, so that's now changed and the toilets look great and they have um, a, uh, not to the standard of the changing places. You can't use them. Uh, toilet not. thing. Yep, so the, 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 the premise in the business case was um, for service disruptions. So if there's a service disruption and... Uh, the, the train can't leave or arrive, a, a disruption plan will uh, kick into place where the station uh, is opened and you can use the toilets. So the general premise is that the train will arrive at Frankton uh, 20 to 30 minutes prior to departure. 
the train will be open and on the train are disabled toilets, uh, coffee machine, etc. So there is one view that most people will arrive um, in a commuting sense and go onto the train. Uh, that's now changed actually, so I think that's resolved well, we'll itself. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so that was the premise. So, um, and the discussions have been uh, ongoing about that issue, as um, Councillor Ewan's um, indicated. Like, it doesn't, you know, if we when we have Saturday services, it's a completely different ball game. We think it's a different market, and it would be good to have access to the mm -hmm. toilets. So, so I think there's a, a one month trial. It, it, it's a simple thing. It's a simple thing. People, irrespective of whether they have a disability or able-bodied, paraplegic, whatever, sometimes when they're waiting in the morning, they're dropping someone off at the station or they're receiving a station. Let's talk to the Chair of the Disability Persons Assembly on this one and, and say to Jerry Pomeroy, you're going to drive or take your loved one to that train, but we're stopping you using the loop. Or you have to get on the train in some way. How is that going to work with Kiwi Rail? Yeah, look, it's pretty. I can't say much more than I've already said. The, you will be able to use the toilets on the train. Uh, they're fully accessible toilets for disabled use. Um, the, the train uh, will be there 20 to 30 minutes prior to departure. Look, the, uh, I, I take your point. Um, there's a one month trial of it being open, and the option is there to uh, change uh, the business plan and have Cal it open longer. Councillor Wilson said there are naysayers who are dedicated for this multi-million dollar project to fail. Are any of those naysayers employed by Kiwi Rail or not? Look, that's not really a question I can answer, Councillor. Right, I, thank you. Yeah. Final question, uh, and Final it question. comes to the CCTV, because the other thing, we've, we've dealt with that issue, is you spend 100 grand to do up the loos, but you lock the door, you can't, you can't use them. That's, that's really good use of public money. Uh, the CCTV, what's the, the broad... Uh, Councillor Wilson talked about the platform. The car park itself, what, what the you know, park and ride, uh, because the Frankton station is going to be used by half the city. Half the city uses Rotokauri. Those of you who live in the southern part of the city okay. use Frankton. Yeah. So in the park and ride, what, what's the CCTV? Presumably there's CCTV, there'll be a proper security and people can be safe in the knowledge that they can leave their car all day there. Um, so one, once again, CCTV wasn't in the original scope. Um, so we have existing CCTV as a city on the Western Rail Trail, which skirts mm -hmm. past the yeah. station. Uh, Kiwi Rail have an internal CCTV system, uh, but it's not monitored. So uh, we, Kiwi Rail have been working with us to get a price to upgrade CCTV. Right. Uh, there's two parts to that. One is um, uh, monitoring the platform and the buildings. So that's one component. We have a price. Uh, the other component is some additional cameras, two extra cameras to give good car park coverage to supplement the Western Rail Trail. So we have the prices, and at the last meeting, uh, they were tabled, and there's discussions ongoing at the moment about who would pay and how we pay uh, for that. So I, I think it was uh, left for executives to get together and work on that. I got clear directions from my councillor there, and it's, it's heading in a an OK direction is what I could yeah. say at the moment, or um, in a you, direction that's better than what thank was you, presented. Thank OK, you. thank you. Um, thank you for those questions. Right, um, we're going to break for lunch at one o'clock because I fear we're not going to uh, move <laughs> very quickly on this one. Um, Councillor Van Austin. Thanks very much, and um, thanks, Ewan, for all the advocacy that you're doing um, on mm -hmm. behalf of Hamilton City Council and uh, our residents on um, the committee and the great work that you're doing there. Um, the, you've talked about the, um, the celebration uh, being on the 25th um, of March. Can you um, give me a bit of an understanding about whether there'll be some invitations to past uh, advocates who have done a great deal of work to be able to set up um, this uh, service and um, whether we might be uh, able to host them to come along. Could, sorry, could we not mm. take that particular question offline? That's sort of some semantics that I'm sure Councillor Wilson has, but... We should already have them. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah Rather I than trying I wanted to, to be sure that we've, have a discussion um, on who's some, going and who's not invited and who is um, in, in a committee meeting, if you can do that offline. 
with Very Councillor well. Wilson. Yep, that would I be can great. Do that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Bunting. Um, yes. Looking at things. Um, so the timetable is being confirmed, which is cool. Um, there was talk earlier on of a lunchtime uh, extension, yes. perhaps. And is there any talk of it being available on the weekends, or have I, have I missed <coughs> that? Yeah. So um, there is a significant desire to increase frequency, um, but uh, it's a function of um, uh, funding initially. Um, in, and when I say increased frequency, Monday through Friday, in terms of weekends, weekends have always plagued this project. Sundays sort of unilaterally was a no-go for the first three years. And that's a combination of the amount of uh, infrastructure spend that's required on the track network within the, the Auckland region, and most of that work's being done on Sundays. Oh, OK. Um, uh, the Saturday services are a little ad hoc because of the same reason. And I think what this simply tells us is this is what happens over decades mm. and it doesn't matter which political colour was in Wellington but over decades rail infrastructure and public rail was underfunded and as a consequence uh, there's lack of uh, infrastructure and, right. and they are trying to get a, a tray of eggs on a moving train, if I can tell you that. So, mm. uh, but look, we so know this, this, to make this possible. work, yeah, we yeah. need multiple departures each mm. day. We need seven yeah. days a week. Yeah. What this does give us is a start mark. Yeah, okay. Um, so that's possibly, okay. Um, and it's being discussed, so it's good to hear. Oh, very much um, so. So, for example, is it available if, like in the old days when there was a big rugby test on or whatever yeah, it is, it is that something that's, the door's open on that? Yeah, so um, charters and ad hoc additional services would always be considered. Right. Um, uh, we have sufficient rolling stock to enable it. Yeah. Um, uh, it will always need to go through a slot committee um, in the same way as if you want to land at an airport, mm. there's mm. a common user committee that determines the allocation of rail and slot times. Um, and generally in New Zealand, um, with the exception of it, the priority order goes AT, Auckland Transit, within the area, uh, then high priority freight, and then passenger. I think I've got that right. It's in that three. Okay. So we would be competing to the slot committee mm. to get an allocation to get in for an ad hoc charter. Right. But we are very keen to pursue that. Okay, cool. Uh, and cool. we would adapt if a request came or if we saw an opportunity. Cool. Thank you. That's all I've got. Thank you. I'm um, just going to go to um, our first Zoom question from Councillor Pascoe, and then I'll come back to Mayor Southgate. Councillor Pascoe. Yeah, thanks, Chair. I'm having trouble um, finding my raise my hand option today, so thank yep. you for um, getting my text message. Uh, look, um, the Waikato Regional Council, uh, Councillor Wilson, they seemed quite positive when we met with them a few weeks ago that they would have a desirable outcome to a credit for the $5 million that they've already charged Hamilton ratepayers for the service that hasn't as yet happened. Um, your comments earlier, have they reneged on that now and decided that that targeted rate is just going to morph into their uh, accumulated funds for next year? Um, uh, I wonder if Chris would like to elaborate, but I, I, at, at, at the sharp end of the discussion that I had with WRC, in particular uh, Councillor Angela Strange, was on that point. Uh, and my, if my memory is correct, she said that the, those funds have been moved into their LTP for the next phase. Um, of which I highlighted my discomfort about that. But Chris, would you would you like to 
Yeah, yeah, look, I um, can't add anything to that. That's what I heard as well, Councillor. Mm. Yeah, I, look, obviously, in that discussion, the, what I would say wasn't so much Angela Strange saying that as the general manager in charge of it, and Angela was just repeating what he said. So it, uh, this, of course, never happens at this council, but it appears that um, management have moved the funds there and the elected members are somewhat blindsided. So, that, so is it, that's a question perhaps that we can ask the Waikato Regional Council when they come it's in on their roadshow about their LTP? Yeah. Okay, because I know that there are ratepayers out there who have asked me the same question. Yeah. Second question is around Frankton um, and um, just the thought that uh, your comments, Councillor Wilson, that, that we don't own the Frankton railway station, um, but we did get a request from Kiwi Rail and we agreed that we would spend a substantial amount of money, council money, on their asset to improve it, which I understand mm. hasn't happened yet. Is that, is, that, is that a summary of what you were saying earlier on? Uh, Kiwi Rail we're very clear that it's their asset. If any work was to be done to their asset, they would manage it, scope it, and in an ideal world, we would pay for it. Um, I believe we had already set aside a quantum of funds. Um, maybe Chris would like to explain how ultimately the refurbishment of the toilets and the Frankton station, including the car park and the painting of the line, what counts, what Hamilton City Council has funded and what did Kiwi Rail fund? Be before he does that, uh, um, uh, my recollection is we agreed to spend that money. Um, and I think we had a budgeted amount in our annual plan for earlier on that was actually going to fund that work on their asset. So um, I'm really surprised that they didn't follow up with us if they weren't going to do it um, and, and actually spend that money and do the job that yeah. presumably behind the scenes both parties had agreed to. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm sorry, um, <coughs> Councillor Rob, if I've misled you. They, they did do the refurbishment of the the disability toilet. Um, it, it's a very good job, but it's just not going to be open no, to the public unless there's a disruption. Lock it up. There's someone who's quacking behind. No. <laughs> this is Monty Python. This is Monty yes, Python. Yes, okay, okay. We, we, we all, we're, all, we're all with you here. Yes, Minister. Martin, we yes, are. Yes, Minister. <laughs> I know, Classic. it is, but... Ah. Councillor... <laughs> Stop it. Councillor Pasco, is that all? So, so my final question then is, uh, and I'm disappointed, uh, Councillor Ewan, with your comments about people who are keen for this detail, but wouldn't you expect that to be one of the outcomes from all of the questions I've just raised and the ongoing demise and the ongoing continued service compromises that must frustrate residents who are paying for a service that really is, is almost a year behind in starting. Yeah, look, first of all, uh, uh, Councillor Rob, when I said some who would, you know, want this to fail, I, I wasn't including you in that narrative, so please, uh, if yeah, you... I, if I that, my position always very clear on that. Yeah, no, 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 I, I've always... Whenever I've dealt with you, you've always been very keen to... Uh, to make this work and and just hold us to account in terms of the funding. So, if if you misunderstood, I I I, I uh, that certainly wasn't what I was intending. What I say is that there were some people from day one who felt that um, a rail connection between Hamilton and Auckland would never work. That they feel that funds should have been spent on highways. Um, and what I'm saying is. Yes, we've had delays. Yes, we've had complexities. Yes, there are some frustrations. But we should not let those things uh, uh, undermine uh, or take away from what I believe will be a very positive 
economic enabler. And guess what? We don't have to wait very long to see if I'm right and a large number of people around this table are right or if we're all wrong. I mean, if we operate this for 12 months and there's nobody on the train, then I guess we've got our answer. Mm -hmm. But let's give it some time. Let's now embrace it. I think we've got a good product. Not perfect. There are some uh, challenges ahead, but I think, I think we will look back and say, why did it take us so long? Councillor Pascoe, is that... I think I have an answer for that, but I won't give that to No. <laughs> I know Chris wanted okay. to answer a couple of Chris, did you want to add to that? Only if you wanted clarity on those costs. Do, do you need clarity on the costs, Councillor Pascoe? Uh, I'm happy to come back to him he, offline with that. Yeah, actually... The, no, not really. I'm no. just wondering where that $5 million is going at Waikato Regional Council, that's all. Yeah, um, OK. And, um, and I guess we, we should be pursuing them mm. uh, for uh, some accountability around, around um, where, where they're proposing yeah. to, which pot they're proposing to slot. OK, in. so let's, let's, um, let's, let, um, let's let people, staff and... Councillor Wilson, uh, pursue that offline and, and report back to us. That would be really good. Um, thank you, you Councillor Pascoe. Mayor Southgate. Uh, my questions are just... Um, I'm also one of those people who doesn't want this to fail. We want it to go forward. But we do recognise there's areas in which we grow into improvement. This is a starting mm -hmm. point. This isn't your gold star. This is a good silver star starting up and we're moving forward to a better service. So just in terms of, and you, and thank you very much for being across these conversations. Mm. I know you've actually been quite busy with this portfolio because it's been moving so fast. Um, the Minister did ask a little about this. Of course, what's the next step? So um, what, what kind of conversations have you been having um, um, around what we need to do? I know you made reference, and I'd agree with you, to some of the problems that Auckland's um, lack of finished business kind of causes us. Um, where do we go next? What's the next? And also, I do remember you talking and, and trying to organise, I forgot what you call them, um, rides down to, from Auckland for events. Tell me what, you, what we call Charter. Thank you. Put, remember the word charter. I was going to go concession. I knew it was wrong. Uh, what's happening in the charter space? Because I do perhaps see that as a um, really excellent opportunity to use this... Um, this direct conduit between the big city and Hamilton for the amazing events that we hold here? Yeah, so um, thanks for those questions. So the first part is what are we going to do to increase, improve uh, the services in the short to medium term? And then I guess the, the latter part of the question is mid to long term. So in the foreseeable future, in the Waikato Regional Council's LTP, uh, what we're seeing a lot of funding uh, for is uh, additional frequency, um, including uh, operating seven days a week when uh, we're able to do that um, with um, when the lines uh, are available to be used and uh, 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 capital expenditure um, uh, and lobbying to ensure that a third line is added uh, that would take us much further into the city, um, including to a, a really close vicinity of the airport. We're never going to get to Britomart with a diesel train. We're only ever going to get there when we get electrification. Uh, the longer-term plan is funding for additional rolling stock because as we add frequency we'll need to add additional rolling stock. The debate will be uh, uh, whether that's uh, electrification and that as you know is part of a much broader business case driven by uh, central government. Um, when the regional council comes on the uh, long-term plan roadshow uh, it would be a great opportunity to speak at length or inquire of them in terms of each of the spending uh, and planning components they've got in their LTP. Um, does that answer enough initially, or did yeah, you want more yeah. detail? Yeah, I guess I guess that's something where this council needs to have a further conversation through you as our as our <coughs> spokesperson on this. 
to what we consider really useful yeah. direction? I, I, absolutely. I, uh, two things. Uh, first of all, it's very clear that the current um, startup uh, passenger management system committee seems to be going to have a longer life as we try to manage this ongoing, mm, um, uh, which yeah. is a double-edged sword, um, <laughs> uh, because I had two former elected members uh, talk to me on the weekend saying, get out, get away from this as quickly as you can. <laughs> um, because oh, once, can I guess who those are? Do you know? Um, um, yeah, so uh, there is no doubt that Hamilton City Council will have a lot to participate in, mm. uh, and you, your worship, will choose who you would like to be representing this council uh, going forward, I'm sure. Well, I'm assuming that you will continue in that <laughs> role. <laughs> um, just, uh, would it be useful also, another further question, would it be useful based on that uh, targeted rate conversation that we had um, just before that Rob raised to, um, um, to write for some clarity, write to uh, WRC for some clarity, maybe, Madam Chair, you could do it under your portfolio? Um, and then bring it back to all. Okay, great. Yeah, because yeah. I think we should keep them transparent. Mm. Very. About public mm. money. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Ewan. Okay, Ooh. thank you. Councillor McPherson. Uh, yeah, look, um, the, the problem that we've got with the whole rail issue is that Kiwi Rail, ever since the Labor government sold it off in the 1987-90 to 90 period, which a certain member in this room has amnesia about... Um, 1987-90. Um, <laughs> we did a lot in the 90s. Yes. And the um, government washed your mouth out. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> I can see I've hit a raw nerve there, um, which was the intention, of course. Um, ever since then... That Kiwi Rail is, has been set up as a freight train only thing. And they added a, they they cobbled together quite literally a couple of old passenger chains, tarted them up and called them scenic, uh, you know, scenic Rail, and that is literally a separate company from Kiwi Rail. Um, I raised by way of example that because the Northern Explorer comes through here. Uh, six days a week in alternating directions that we could at least cop add those services mm. into a, a Tahuya service in terms of timetabling and fares. And uh, you should have heard, seen the look of horror on the face <laughs> of the Kiwi Rail people there at mixing the two. Um, and that, that was an example of the sort of problem. They, the other problem we have is that we end in Auckland. If we were ending anywhere else, we might get more of a say. Mm. Or the decision to electrify from Papakura to Pukekohe was made with no reference to us, even though the, the, the electrification going northward finishes in Hamilton. The gap was not addressed, mm. not even thought about. And we're, we're left hearing these things in the media and saying, well, what about the rest of it? Why aren't you talking with us about that? The decision to set up Puhanui Station on the Auckland Metro service as the airport link was done without consultation with us. We found, again found out in the media, even the minister wasn't aware that we hadn't been, at the time, been included in that. And so we're, we're left with no say at all on the strategic services, all the timetabling. You've heard from Ewan, AT metro trains come mm. first. And I, we don't, none of us mind them having, we'd like twice as many trains mm. in there so it was easier to drive up the motorway. But uh, we're not being given any say about when that, we're, we're honestly getting left with the, with the, the sort of leftovers in terms of time slots up in Auckland. So that's one of the things, for instance, we have raised really briefly with Mayor Goff a few a year and a bit ago, and we should do that quite quite formally. That we need, they need to partner with us, mm. or else they're not getting our water, um, or something like that. We we actually need to. Well, nice words we've had. We need to get that needs to translate into some action from mm. Auckland Transport, who are their Quango, their CCO, 
and we uh, don't seem to be on, on the same page as them. They have lovely staff members who come down to our meetings, but they don't have any power to make these strategic sort of changes of directions, which is what we really need to get this going. And if you think we're having problems, wait until Tauranga finally gets its act together and says it wants a train service, mm -hmm. which it's starting to do now. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're going to have a much bigger problem. There's tunnels that have fumes in them that people, the passengers can't travel through, allegedly, even though they did for about 100 years beforehand. Years before. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I don't think anyone died. Well, there might be some skeletons in there, we're not sure. Uh, you know, seriously, we're... This service has had an uphill battle from day one because of all these obstacles. And we, while there's some good people in Kiwi Rail or one good person that comes along to our meetings, he gets blindsided by the other parts of Kiwi Rail. He didn't know, for instance, we had Saturday services every Saturday slotted in from day one. And then all of a sudden, about three months ago, we get a list of all the Saturdays over the next six months that aren't available, which is the majority of them, because they've suddenly, another part of Kiwi Rail has decided to do some work on them. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's an absolute mess dealing with that company, because it's not a passenger rail company, basically. Mm -hmm. And we have to, if we really want to get improvements, we have to start turning that around. We've been working on the idea of an interpeak service right from the start, and that's one of the things Ewan's talking about us having to continue on. The airport link is really important. We've ensured that the land capacity is there to build an extra platform so regional trains can also stop there and get the link to the airport. But in terms of actually building the platform for that, building the extra line through that station for that, they are not in the plan. Mm. The electrification is not in the plan. So there's a hell of a lot of, you know, strategically thinking, uh, we're not on the same page as either Kiwi Rail or Auckland in terms of this yet. They okay, wish we would thanks. go away, actually. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> thanks um, to both of you for that um, very thorough update. Councillor Gallagher, we've done with questions. No, I'm waiting for the debate. You're waiting for the debate, OK. <laughs> uh, yeah, I we kind of did, didn't we? Um, so uh, I'm going to move that this report... I'll second. Um, thank you, Councillor Wilson. Can second. I just seek if there's any substantive yep, motion so, there yep, so, we've added you into the passenger so, thing, but we've... No, we've, I'm going to ask Councillor Wilson, though, if he wants to. Yeah, um, he may a, not want to. No, no he doesn't want to no, be on I, that group for that you. submission. Um, so we'll leave that as is. So that's Excellent. been moved and seconded. <laughs> um, so, sorry, who moved that? Who, did I move it? I moved you it. Moved it. Um, no, I have nothing to say. I think absolutely everything has been said. Um, but, yeah, also echo the Mayor's words and, and thanking Councillor Wilson. I'm sure you're an exceptional uh, advocate for the city. And I wish you well in your next role as it starts operating. <laughs> Conductor. Um, Councillor Gallagher. I'll try and be brief. And, and we've got the Transport Minister coming to town and obviously Mayor Southgate you're going to involve the key players into because obviously that's going to be one of the topics I would like to suggest we take him to a, a visit to the Frankton Hamilton Kitagura uh, station I just want to uh? yes Order. Jamie Strange is coordinating the visit and I will try and dovetail with him as practical a, as work best I can to get mm -hmm. you involved Oh, no, no, that, yeah. that, that, right no, no that's involved. cool, that's good. But obviously we, we'll give them, the, you'll, through your office, obviously we'll give yeah, them I'll the shopping list. I'll do my best, list. but it's not that's cool. no. uh, But the, the, second, um, the second issue is I just want to, and forgive my uh, frustration at the Yes Minister Monty Python toilet you spend. This is the $100,000 toilet you lock up. So if, if you want the absurdity of, of, of public decision making of Kiwi Rail, spend 100 grand of your money or whatever, and then you lock it up. You can't use it. Um, and what I want to say is we're going to go to the opening, I, possibly the Prime Minister, I'm not sure, of the Rota Kauri um, interchange. We're going to do the, the you, know, you know, and that'll be great. And very clearly, uh, I, I know we're going to be inviting um, former MP Sue Moroni uh, Andrew King and even Dave Mack and Ewan, because these, you know, if you look, the great work that's been done on this. Uh, but my worry worry is, is why I get hung up about the Frankton bit of this, the thing, is half the city is going to use the Frankton Rail Station, and it just seems to be spent all this million dollars, 
and we want this. We have huge social, political, economic capital invested in the service, and but for a few thousand dollars, uh, it's, it's a danger to a degree of, of, of uh, compromising uh, the service. I will call out uh, that if you lock a disability loo for all people, irrespective of their needs, that is disability unfriendly. So don't talk about an inclusive city. Don't call about the five-minute city. It's for a sake of a bit of money. You can't unlock the door and at least allow people into a terminal. If you go to Hamilton Airport, uh, even with six plane movements a day, um, you know, you're at least able to go into the terminal and use it. Likewise with bus stations and this, that and the other. So to me, quite frankly, the decision-making process around Frankton Railway Station, beggars belief, I'm really grateful for Ewan's um, work in this area. Uh, but if you want the service to potentially fail, uh, you have to make sure all of the ingredients work and are consumer friendly, and I'll leave it at that. Very disappointed in what you've conveyed about the money in terms of regional council, and obviously, as Ewan has intimated, there's another way to skin that particular cat. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Southgate. Firstly, it's in the public interest at this stage for um, this service to succeed and to be the best service it can within the circumstances that it finds itself. Uh, there are some naysayers out there at a, a national level, and um, oh, I noticed that on national radio, that they, you know, will it work, will it not work? We're out to prove that it can work, and then from that base, that it can actually get better and I think there's a lot of exciting opportunities. Um, obviously, the government are now um, committed to climate action, and so they're going to have to really define what that means and what they step in and support, given that transport contributes a great deal to that, that issue. Um, we'll, we'll, we will work very hard with the conversation, follow-on conversation with Jamie and others to, to get the minister here to see our city and what we're facing in the full, including the opportunities about rail. As I said, he was particularly interested that we have an underground station. He wasn't that aware of it. So, Chris, you've got to sort the health and safety so we can get minister under the city in that station. Um, because I think seeing is believing, understanding how that connects to the CBD, the, the potential that has for east-west connection as well, and all of that is really, really exciting. I just want to put on public record, I, I think you and you've been doing a fabulous job. It's, it's a, like you say, it's a bittersweet issue because <laughs> you're driving change and um, there are always bumps in the road, so you're going to have some naysayers along the way. But I think you're, um, you're representing this council very well. Look forward to the open day. It's going to be a bit of a day, and I guarantee that whole day but will be very exciting. In terms of Martin's comments about the facilities, you can't have a good service with second rate facilities. We've got to do something about that. Um, it's a shame that people vandalise our public, public mm. amenities and places, but they do, and that costs council quite a lot of money, unfortunately. But for something as important as this, it's got to be clean, safe and accessible. Uh, and that's okay. the bottom line for me. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Councillor Bunting. Um, yeah. Um, good Lord. Um, this discussion's taken about as long as a train ride to Papakura. <laughs> um, you know, and I'm very enthusiastic and excited about the train. I'm excited, um, you know, for my family because uh, my son is really, really buzzed about going to going to uh, to walk on the train. He, he wants to see that as really um, as a good option. Um, and there's that whole generation of people who are ready not to have cars, and so thank you for providing the choice. Appreciate your work on that, Councillor Wilson. Um, let's just get on with it. For goodness sakes, if, if, if the train ride is anything as slow as protracted as this discussion as we've had, I'm walking to Auckland. But thank you for your work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Councillor oh, McPherson. Even <laughs> Look, um, I am <coughs> certainly support the thoughts and the of people around here, but I'm slightly less concerned about the Frankton Station situation because I believe that Rotokauri Station is such an accessible station compared with Frankton and such a new flash one compared with Frankton mm. 
and, and a more convenient geographic one for many of the people in the city that I think it'll have more users than Frankton. And uh, since its toilets <coughs> are open 24-7, I believe, um, then uh, Martin will have access to the facilities he needs. No, <laughs> um, seriously, the uh, uh, Frankton, there was some doubt about whether we even bother going to Frankton way back at the start, but we decided that we should have those two. It's a dog to get to transport-wise. You'd never put a railway station in a place like that if you were building one new. Yeah. Um, so I think it's only a temporary yeah. facility um, and that ideally the Hamilton City one has got to be in or as a lot closer to the city, not sort of out in... Um, the rail yards, <laughs> yeah, and we would own it if we built a new one, as Ewan's pointed out. Um, but there's always track access. I mean, Kiwi Rail is probably, you and I imagine would agree, there's one of the last vestige of the old public service in New Zealand, and they're extremely hard to deal with, and their own staff find them extremely hard to deal with as well, and we're going to have to sort of crack the whip a little bit more there at a higher level, I think, to, to break that. But this, I think what will make or break the service, to be honest, isn't the Frankton station toilets um, access, but the, um, the ability to have an interpeak, if not two interpeak services, and weekend services, so that people don't have to think too much about when they're if they're getting up in time for the train, yeah. they rock on down to the station and hop on the next one. Mm -hmm. And if any of you have been from Ballarat to Melbourne, which is, yeah. or um, Geelong to Melbourne, both of which are similar distances mm -hmm. as he this one here, you will know that with about eight to 12 services a day uh, between the big city and the satellite city, um, which are also big, in Geelong's case, bigger than us, uh, then there, you know, you're much less worried about timetables and things like that because the access and is, is much more spread across the day, and that's what we we know will make it long term work. So, I re if I was going to spend any money more than now, it'd be on getting that an interpeak service going. To be honest. Thank you. All right. Since I'm the mover, I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> Um, and we, I'm sorry to staff, but we are going to stop for lunch. But um, let's put that to the vote. Uh, the motion is as the staff recommendation on page 111. No, no, Ewan doesn't want to. Yeah. Um, so all those in favour, raise your hands. There are none against. That's carried. Thank you. Now we're going to stop for lunch. We'll be back at, oh, I'd say 5 to 12. Uh, 5 to what? 2. But we'll just say 2. So that's... Yeah, two o'clock. Yeah. yeah, exactly.
head in, into which committee, and we all agreed this was the right committee. Um, as the report states, this is not about the water reform, so no questions on that, but rather the projects um, that we are going to achieve over a quite a short period of time <laughs> um, with the 17.4 million that uh, we got from the government. Now, there's not a lot of detail yet. As I said, this is just the first report. So I'll hand over to Myri to um, present the report and then any questions on that. And just elected members, um, in talking with Tania um, at the start of the meeting, if there is any um, particular project, like I'm really keen on um, the um, security one, a couple of others there, not so much the operational runs like ones like the renewal of assets, but any other particular sort of new projects that you're interested in being involved in as we go along, um, then can you just let me know either via email or after the meeting and then we'll work out um, with the GM how we can um, make sure that your interest in those particular projects um, can be accommodated as we move forward. So, Myri, over to you. Uh, thank you. Um, so I'll introduce the report. Um, so as previously reported, um, central government has funded a program to deliver $17.46 million of additional three waters works. Um, in late 2020, elected members have been involved in endorsing the proposed list of 19 projects that have been identified. And this report, as outlined by the chair, um, provides an initial update on the progress of those projects. Uh, just, just noting again that the as per the funding agreement, all projects do need to be complete by March 2022, so we do have quite a strict um, time frame. And, and the projects are, are largely in the establishment phase, um, with delivery plan to gain momentum over the next couple of months as we really gear into this year. So other than that, I propose to take the report as read, but happy to take any questions between Myri or myself. Great, thanks Chris. Um, over to questions, any questions from the committee? Um, Mayor Southgate. Oh, seat number six. <laughs> Just um, on the basis of um, this topic, I thought it, if it's useful, because I was at Metro Sector and also at um, what do you call it, governance and uh, strategy yes, the, yesterday on Zoom, just to let you know some of the thinking, if that's, I mean, are you in, interested in that or would you prefer me to do it another time? Okay, well, I'll tell you that um, uh, in terms of the three waters, which of course is one of local government's um, key three issues, uh, the mayors of the metro sector um, were particularly concerned around the pace of change that government might impose upon councils and the ability to still propose models mm. of a different scale mm. and pace than the government may intend. Um, so there was a lot of reluctance. Uh, there was a reluctance from uh, Auckland, for example, to find themselves going north. Uh, Stevie Chadwick mentioned that she was working with Waipa on some parts and Taupo, Taupo on some parts of their water solutions. Still a great view that from government, uh, local government, that localism is an important consideration in determining any services for local government. Having said that, there were a number of people who also recognised that because of scale and economy, we need to move forward. And the overall view is that we need to start suggesting to government um, viable alternatives to the bigger board approach, if, we, if that's where we're heading, and that local government will support that, but we've got to demonstrate success. So um, the biggest problem uh, that they saw coming was not actually in the metros, the potable drinking water, because most, most of the big cities have got that sorted. Um, and wastewater investment has been reasonable in the metros. There are some that, including ourselves, that are coming to the end of the capacity for wastewater, which we all know about. But the biggest issue was stormwater and what the requirements around stormwater were going to look like. And everybody's hugely nervous of that. Um, all my metro colleagues are nervous of that. 
So that's where they're directing their attention in their conversations with the ministry at this point in time. So, Madam Chair, through you, I think it would be really interesting to understand how this council, how and when this council is going to talk about that portion of the work. We've talked a lot about the Southern Wastewater Treatment Plant, which I think we all understand is a collaboration. But where are we heading with the stormwater issue, or what do we see the pace of progress looking like, or the costs around that, Madam Chair, would be useful. Anyway, I hope that update was um, useful to you. Yes, thank you, um, Ms Southgate, that was. Um, any further questions? Councillor Hamilton? I'm just happy to move when you're ready, Chair. OK, thank you, well, Councillor thank you. Hamilton. Seconded by Councillor Wilson. Um, I just have a just a quick question on the um, Taitawa tai Arboretum. That I, I, hear, I see that it says works well advanced and nearing completion. So when there'll be a lot of people in the... Well, there'll be some people in the community very uh, excited about that. So when's that completion date? Well, we're, we're currently in the process of commissioning it, which means doing all the water quality tests to make sure yep. that it is fit Great. To, to return to service. So we're hoping at this stage, at the 1st of March, it will be, it will be available to the public. Excellent. OK, good news. Um, there doesn't look like there are any further questions. Um, so, committee, I'll just repeat myself um, in terms of <coughs> if there are projects that you are particularly interested in following or having some involvement, if you can let me know via email, um, then I can make talk with the G GM and make sure that um, you have a bit more involvement because otherwise this will... Basically, I mean, there's obviously some business cases and stuff, but this will regularly be reported to the uh, committee and there'll be some touch points at briefings. New Southgate? Thank you. Just to flag that I'm interested in the um, Rotokori um, approach to water and, and how that, mm. keeping a, um, an eye on how that's moving, the costs around it, the opportunity to enter into the partnerships, um, more cost effective methods of dealing with the water, etc., because technology changes is all the time. But there again, the, uh, the government is pretty um, keen on um, water solutions that have a corresponding climate slash environment wellbeing with them. Just um, put that out there. Mm. Um, so I'm interested in that. And the other part I'm actually interested is related to the district plan and this is how we draw the connection around what water wise technologies in our new subdivisions. Um, these could involve grey water tanks or um, or recycling of water in some way. Um, yeah, well, one, one of the projects um, in the in the 19 is all around rainwater storage and um, grey water reuse and just looking at what is required to incentivise that. So that's one, one of the projects is, is solely focused yeah. on that. So There's I'm interested in that because I think I could be a, um, a good voice and advocate for that if it yeah. comes to the point where government's funding, stimulus funding mm -hmm. is required to give us a little bit of a push forward. Yeah. And the other one would be the, the water sustainability strategy, mm -hmm. which is all looking at how we can better use you know, the decision making um, for future use of our you know, precious water resource and whether that is um, should be reuse, should be different sources, um, should be education um, or other water demand um, interventions. So, so they'd be the two that I think would, would best answer that, that interest of yours. Thank you. Just mm. hand yep. up for those pieces of work. Yep. Thanks. The, um, thank you. Um, Mayor Southgate, the, of course, the rainwater um, incentive scheme tank investigation was one of my, my babies in this, as well as the security measures. So those mm -hmm. are the two that I'll be really keen on having some oversight on. OK, um, but other than that, as I said, everything will come through this committee and there'll be touch points with briefings and things depending on the project, um, other than really the renewals um, stuff, which is just um, operational business as usual. Um, yeah. OK, so there are no other questions. It's been moved and seconded. Um, is there any debate? No debate? No, I'll, uh, well, let's do that on a show of hands. All those in favour, please raise your hands. And there are none against. That's carried. Thank you. See, everyone's quiet after lunch. Right? Oh, no. General manager's report. <laughs> oh, no. Yes. 
I've got all my questions all prepared. Yes. But they're dotted through the entire report. Now I, I don't go, want to. Which oh, one, you know, because you what, mentioned that you wanted yep. all the questions at once. But no, we'll still go item by piece item, by piece. dispose of that. Yeah. So Roger that. Uh, to try and keep this a bit more concise from our external committees one, which was very robust and went a little bit um, <laughs> all over the place. Uh, let's keep questions um, concise and answers concise as we move through, because there's a lot in here. Um, and also, Tanya's in the hot seat. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, so, um, thank you. I'll take the report as um, mm -hmm. read on behalf of Eva Lisa. Uh, but just note that the staff recommendation point C um, has changed, which I think Narelle um, yep. will pop that up. Um, that's just to reflect the briefing that we had on parking last week and the feedback that we received from elected members. So um, staff requires some more time to come back to you and then also prepare that report. Yep, right. um, And we've also got staff here to answer your specific questions on their items. Thank you very much, Tanya. Okay, so we'll start with um, Vision Zero, which is on page 135. Now, as there shouldn't be any questions, it's just an update and it is um, indicating that the future report from Robin on terms of safety that this committee talked about last year will be coming. So, um, Councillor McPherson? Uh, yeah, just briefly, in light, Robin, are you there, Robin? Yes. Yep, where is she? She's there. Oh. <laughs> um, in light of the uh, discussion this morning about no new funding, is the what's that small fund called? Is that going to be enough to to cut the mustard in this area, or we, have we got big projects that are going to be affected by a no funding in the NLTP period? Or do we even know that yet? Um, so for this financial year, and which is the last year of the current NLTP, um, we're all OK. Um, we are yet to hear back from Waka Kotahi about the moderation process for the low-cost, low-risk program. Um, and we have several funding streams under that sort of general heading. Um, and we have put forward a rather large program. So yet to hear from them as to what that actually means, but we'll certainly be sharing with elected members once we get some more information. So the statement that no new funding or something like that in the period, what, what, what would you take that to mean in relation to this programme? So, so my understanding, um, and I guess we'll need to clarify this, is that they are not approving any new projects in this current NLTP period, so over the next, the next three or four months. Six, months. Yeah. Um, and then through the moderation process, they will be looking at what, if any, projects will be approved for the next three year period. Yeah. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you. And um, yeah, I have made a note, and I'm sure the team have made a note that um, David Spears did say he would let us know by Thursday in time for. Well, it's not really in time for our LTP because we've made most of our decisions, but, yeah. All right, um, that's it. So let's move to the next one, the um, on page 136 from point six, Pukitaha in the Gordington and Dajon and Gordington intersections. Um, I think more detail is coming to the April meeting, so this is just an update on that. Um, Councillor Bunting? appreciate the heads up on this, um, but I'm um, just wondering, with our 10-year plans, the, the Bukitaha one in particular is one of the projects we've got up for the 10-year plan, and I think we've put a, a weighty three million in there for, for consideration. Um, I'm just trying to work out the timing. If this comes through and we find we can do something for a lot less, will we be altering the 10-year plan, or how, how does that go? How does that work? Because we've got sort of two pitches for this one job. Yes, so um, the, the timing of the report <laughs> will be such that elected members will have just had the LTP hearings, mm. yep. then we'll have this committee meeting, and we'll be able to feed into the LTP decision making, which is in May. Right. So mm. we will have the information to hand if we need to alter that and um, 
probably not likely that it's going to be less, but we can certainly um, you never know. take advantage yeah. of any of that. We can hope, yeah. yes. <laughs> okay. All right. No, that's, that's me. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Councillor. All right. Um, no one's waving their hands or anything, so let's move on to number nine, on-street commuter parking update. Now, please, I know we get very passionate about parking, <laughs> um, but this is just an update that there is a, going to be a delay that was requested by elected members at the drop-in session that we Zoomed in Level 2 the other day. And as um, Tani has pointed out, we're just reflecting that because there was a decision for this to come back to the 18th. So um, I don't want a big discussion on commuter parking because we've asked for um, the next step to be included. So do we have a date on when this briefing? I know it just says a future workshop, and I know spots are tight, but elected members are... Well, that might not be this one on the... Or we don't have a date yet. OK, all right. I'm putting you on the spot. OK, we don't have a date yet. All right, but Amy's working on it, aren't you, Amy? Amy. Yeah. <laughs> OK, um, so Innovating Streets from point 12. Um, that is also an update. Is Jen here? No, I don't, I mean, we don't. Oh, Martin's no, we've got here. Martin Parks Martin's here. Martin's here just in case you have yep. questions, but um, uh, the report says that a design workshop will be organised for us soon. Is that at a briefing as well, Martin? Yeah. And you might want to just quickly touch on the last workshop that was held with the community. Was that last week, the 18th or something? No, that actually got canned because um, oh, there was a two. bit of uh, COVID stuff oh. mucked us around. So the actual okay. next final workshop is um, Thursday. Okay. So you're more than welcome to join us. In fact, I would encourage you to come and join us. It's a lot of fun. Um, Okay. Yeah, it's the final workshop before we, you know, determine yeah. the way forward. And then the results of the four workshops with the community and stakeholders will come um, to uh, elected members at a briefing to be or a session to be organised. A session to be organised, yeah. yeah. I think we're okay. trying to sort out a, a, a date yeah. for that. But, I mean, the reality is we've got to move pretty fast because yeah. April is looming and that's the time frame that we need to roll the, yeah. the project okay. out. Yeah. Okay, um, questions, Deputy Mayor? Um, and does it come back to this committee for formal sign-off? Um, as I say, we've got, to, we've got to move pretty fast. I mean, it's, I think, essentially you've given, you know, formal sign-off for the projects to proceed. Mm. Not, the, not the designs, but yes, mm. we will bring the designs to you. But we've got to, we're constrained by time. So April is when we need to get the projects rolled out. It's question of what how we can bring you the final designs for you to approve okay well my question would be we're the ones who will be held accountable if things don't go well so can we get final sign off at this committee uh, or at a committee or at a committee yeah. a committee yes and it may be a community uh, community committee rather than infrastructure ops I'd say yeah yeah yeah, because our next one's not till April. Yeah, and that that's that that yeah, would be too late. But there'll be a couple of councils late. and. If we've given delegated authority, surely that doesn't mean that a committee comes back and approves. Is that a point of order? Because it is only a trial. Yeah, no, hang on. Yeah, so point of order on the process. Just let me check. Um, so Martin, your your understanding, actually, and mine was that. You were just coming back to us in, in an informal capacity, as you say. We've given sign off. Yeah, I mean the, the purpose of uh, the project is it is a trial, and you know yeah. we'd be testing things out. And if it, people are, are are unhappy, then we can move stuff around to, to mm. suit. Yeah. Um, you know, I think the key thing is the um, the way forward to a permanent scheme will be brought back to um, this uh, this committee at so some the, point the, in the future. The point okay. of order relates to not to the work that's going on to the process in our meetings. We've given approval to the staff. It's going to be a yeah. trial. They are designing it in the way they're talking about yeah, here. Yeah. And it comes back to this committee with the results of the trial. Yeah, well, that, well that's what I was determined. Excuse me, is that necessary? Do we know that that's the process? Well, we? so, that's what I'm asking, Jeff. Right. So, so that's what I was trying to determine with Martin. That's my understanding. But maybe we yeah. can just park this one. Okay. We can find the resolution. 
Um, Amy's looking for that now and then come back to it so we can close yep. that loop and understand exactly where we are in this process. Because my question would be, uh, Chair, if at yep. the end of that, uh, when it comes back to the councillor's workshop, if we're not happy with the results, yep. what happens then? So that's why I'm saying, you know, in my view, it should be coming back to a f formal sign-off. Okay, well, let's let's just park this one. Martin, can you go and sit at the back again? Yep. And uh, we'll come back to it when Amy has found the resolution, uh, and then we can address that. So let's go to what is next? Uh, Eastern Pathways on page 137. Um, hmm. It's Martin. Oh, Martin. Martin, you should have said. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, okay. All right. You can stay there for a little while then. <laughs> okay. So Eastern Pathways, um, there's an update there for us. Um, Martin, did you want to add anything? I don't, I don't think so. I think all the information is, is there, but I'm happy to take questions. Okay. Is there any questions? Yes. Councillor Bunting. Thank you. Just in light of the discussion we had with Waka Wakakotahi this morning with regards to their, you know, sudden... Um, and surprising funding shortfall. Um, does that affect what you've written here about um, what we've approved? Oh, I mean, it, it's potentially going to affect the, the the rollout of the program going forward, depending on what funding becomes available in the you know in the next uh, three uh, three years. Um, we will continue with the work on the business case. We will complete the business case. We'll bring that to. Uh, this committee on the 27th of April, that's the plan, and then we will submit it, if, if all goes well, we'll submit it to the agency uh, mid, mid yep. to late May uh, for their consideration. So um, so the, the second bullet point, though, which scares me, the delivery of this mm. stuff, that seemed to be what they were hinting that they weren't that keen on playing with. Yes, yeah, essentially, but we don't we don't know for, for certain what what the outcome of the uh, NLTP is going to be at this stage. Right. I mean, they've indicated there's going to be a shortfall of funding, which may impact on this, mm. but we just don't know yet. Okay. Sorry, just to um, just to add to that. So the two key uh, touch points moving forward. So uh, Waka Katahi have already funded the current stage of the project, being the business, business case, case development. Yep. Uh, we plan to go back to them on the 22nd of May um, currently to, to seek an approval for the next stage in terms of the, the approval of the business case. So in, in light of their um, advice that they're um, not pro actively progressing any uh, further appro funding approvals this year, we're trying to understand that in terms of that time frame for that um, next stage funding decision. And then obviously in terms of the moderation of, of the long um, the NLTP process affects, I guess, the, the longer-term delivery aspects as well. So, mm -hmm. so there's, there's two pieces at the moment around the overall funding contributions and also the timing of seeking those approvals yes. from them. Okay. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, Ms Southgate. Thank you. Just in terms of... Um, oh, my screen's gone off. Um, the Eastern Pro Pathways Programme, notwithstanding um, Waka Kotahi's decision um, about not new work... Uh, can you alert me where this has landed in terms of Clyde Street versus um, through the back of Boys High to Rokura over the new bridge? Because I'm optimistic the new bridge will occur. How, um, what, where are we sitting with that? What's the what's the proposal? So Is so we, we we've uh, been through it. An assessment of the various uh, routes, and um, you know, bearing in mind that uh, this uh, committee had already made a, a, a strong decision around the, the future transport use for priorities for Clyde Street, so we looked at alternative routes for um, a high quality cycle link from the university to Central City, and through that assessment process, we we have um, determined there are a couple of key routes that we would uh, focus on in a bit more detail going forward. One of them is via uh, Hamilton Boys High School and um, there is a meeting with the board tomorrow evening that I, I'm attending um, with um, one of the consultants to just talk that through in a bit more detail. And, and the other option is down via Cook, Cook Street. So. Um, 
we uh, so we've we've identified those as as as, as potential routes going forward. Uh, okay. With regards to Rakura Road, then um, that's a potential future link that's coming out of the, the wider biking and micro-mobility uh, network plan. So that's, uh, that's another identified route for the future. Okay, good to see those options there. I will talk to it in debate. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, Councillor McPherson. Yeah, um, maybe a question to whoever is speaking to NZTA. As part of your formal business case, are you including the evidence that NZTA in 2018 submitted to this council in support of the Eastern Pathways being in the uh, starting in year two of the current LTP? Not talking about the one going forward, because I uh, the reason I ask that is because I think the historical context and commitments are important. Yep, um, we're certainly in the in the process of developing the the final stages of the business or the, the business case at the moment. It's certainly something we'll um, will incorporate into that component. Yeah, the um, be, the as part of that a written approval. submission, I believe they made, and um, the transport improvements program was the the item that included the eastern pathways. Okay, thank you. Thanks. That's good context. Yep. Okay. Uh, that's questions for that one. We're going to move back to Innovating Streets because um, Amy has found the resolutions, so I'll get her to um, speak to those. Sorry, oh. I'm just trying to um, delicately do the right thing here. Um, I had some more questions on the shortlist of options. I thought that was the next point we're going into. So well, no, because that back was to all Eastern Pathways, the whole thing. So. That whole thing was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so. no, all right, so you go ahead and then we'll come back to Amy. Is right? While you're there, Martin, because I don't hate to see you getting up and going down. <laughs> I'm um, not going to kick him out yet. Just on point 22, um, a couple of things there. So can, first of all, can you give me an assurance? Because as you know, for well, you know, um, the Tiaraha Eastern Rail Trail, effectively, uh, that we're talking about is pretty close to doable. Uh, of the end of Claudelands, um, can you give me an assurance that that is not at risk by putting it into this other pot of money, into the connectivity program as opposed to the Eastern Pathways? Because I thought we gave you a reasonably strong steer. I, I, th I you know, depending on funding, it, it everything's at risk. So um, it, it's down to priorities at the end of the day, and it's the priorities, I suppose, that you know, the community place on things and you, you, you place on things as a, as a group of elected members going forward. So um, whilst we'll develop up a citywide um, biking and micromobility network plan, um, obviously there's a lot of linkages and routes within that that can cost significant dollars. Um, and we'll have to sit down and work through a priority list with you about who, which routes get funding ahead of yeah. others. OK. Yep. So, so I just want to tap into your rationale of the Clyde Street um, thing, because we, I thought we were pretty worri all pretty worried as a collective of Clyde Street being used and ANZAC yep. and the likes. Um, what was the rationale of going with Clyde Street as opposed to further north? Um, it, a, serious, a series of um, um, sort of criteria were looked at with regards to uh, potential uh, usage of a particular routes. And through that um, analysis, um, that Clyde Street corridor came out uh, higher than the Rurikura link with regards to eastern pathways. Right. I'm not saying Rurikura link is ruled out, but that will form part of the wider biking and micromobility network plan going forward. OK. Um, so what data have you got that students want to drive or ride to that end of town as opposed to the centre of town? Yeah, I mean, that's a piece of work that's, uh, you know, the engagement process is currently underway for Eastern Pathways. Um, so uh, we have a, uh, an engagement session with the university coming up fairly soon in the next couple of weeks that's particularly targeted at the students of the university to determine, okay. you know, how they currently get around so and what their future aspirations may be with regards to, you know, transport in the future. Yep. So I got a, I think it was a flyer in the letterbox regards this, um, and the only option we were kind of asking them about was Clyde Street anyway. So are we getting? Oh, I wish I had it with me actually, but um, yeah. are we actually getting a fair representation of the the other routes? Um, well, that's coming out through other engagement. You know, we did the citywide uh, engagement for biking 
uh, and micro-mobility, which gave us a huge amount of information around uh, potential routes in other parts of the city, right. plus within the, the boundaries of Eastern Pathways as well. So we're currently collecting a huge amount of data on people's views about cycling, how they want to bike, where they want to bike, Mm -hmm. um, why they don't bike, that, those sorts of things. So that's, um, that's all being collated at the moment, which will be shared with you very shortly. Right, OK, cool. Um, and finally, um, in the report here, it says that 67% of respondents want a bike, but they're too scared. Um, we've heard from Bike Waikato. Um, we've talked with various student groups and the likes in schools. What are we doing to reach those people who have got bikes hanging up in the garage and are too scared to, to ride? How are we finding them with our engagement? Uh, they're the ones that we're building this for, right? We are, yeah, that's correct, yeah. I mean, those are the people we want to attract to, to cycling. I mean, it's not the likes of me who will cycle anywhere and I'm not yes. bothered. Yeah. But uh, it's the people that are interested in cycling but concerned. And through the engagement process, we are tapping into that, uh, those areas, definitely. But so it's the feedback we're, we're getting. Yeah. I mean, through various means, you know, the med social media, media, radio, community right. drop-in sessions, all those sorts of things. Okay. Websites, yeah, it's all out there. Okay, all right, thank you. Great, thank you. All right, now we'll move back to Innovating Streets and over to you, Amy. So I can confirm that we did have two resolutions from last year, the first one from the 26th of May Infrastructure Operations Committee meeting, uh, which was approving it, and at no point does it um, have it coming back until it's such stage that there was to be permanent works. And then there was a second... Uh, report to the 30th of June 2020 where it was the approval of the proposed project for round two and again no report back at this time due to that being the trial. Okay. Yes. Um, given that we've got a central city advisory group which aims to work cohesively in the central city and not kind of be blindsided by things and, and know exactly what's going on should it not, can it not at least go back to that March 11th um, meeting of the advisory group so the members can discuss it uh, and then make some, sort of make some sort of informal, they are informal because it's an advisory group, some sort of recommendations back to a council committee. It seems to me if you're going to have an advisory group then it should, ha it should have some oversight of these things. I'm going to go to the Acton GM for that one. Uh, yes, we can, Deputy Mayor. We can bring that back to you. Okay. Um, noting that we need to kick that work off in April to meet the timeframes for the trial as well. Thank you. It's getting confusing for staff and confusing for council elected members as well. Is that a point of order? Yeah. Point of order, it's getting confusing. The process. the process is being done on the fly. A councillor is asking a question and we're changing the process as a result of a question from one councillor. Um, now, I, I certainly appreciate Jeff's feelings, but we put these things forward to go through certain processes. There's been the meetings have been open, yep, okay. and Jeff has actually attended so, some of them. Yeah. Um, I don't okay. know whether he attended this so one. So that's I, enough of the point of order. I completely understand um, your point of order. It is coming back to us for a design workshop anyway, informally. So I don't see any. Um, objection to any elected member having a look at that or being involved in that. Um, if there is time to do it, and I'm hearing that there is, to pop into the advisory group as well. I mean, they, I guess they're entitled to ask requests for any information. They're not a decision-making body, so I, I understand the point of order, but I don't really see an issue with it, as long as the general manager and the staff are happy and it can work through. Well, they can't change I'm, anything I'm, other than their elected yeah, member briefing. But, but now, look, there are being discussions held in more than one place about the same subject. Yeah. Councillors are having to okay. attend twice as many meetings if they want to stay involved. So, um, But what's yeah. the point of having a central city advisory group okay, if you're going so, to yeah, have these look, matters not even going to yes, it? Yes, yes, but uh, possibly we should have... We should have done something about that back in the 26th of May or, or in June last year. We were in lockdown in the 26th lockdown of May. Um, so, look, uh, how about just... When, when is the design session with the elected members? So this is... And, I, I, look, I just have to say, committee members, that remember this is 90% funding from the government and they have very strict criteria on the process that we must follow. 
um, and that that is their that is their process. So we are we are constrained by that as well. But Martin, when are you planning on having a session with EMs and Mangai Māori? Yep. Okay, right. Um, so the workshop's on Thursday evening, four till seven. Once we've got through that process, we can finalise the designs, because we can't finalise the designs till we've completed the co-design workshop process. Mm -hmm. That's a requirement of Waka Katahi. That's right. Um, at that point, we can give you um, an executive um, update, just to tell you where things have got since we completed the, the, the final uh, co-design workshop. And then we'll obviously need to work on a time frame to provide you where, you know, the designs, the, the final designs, before we go out and put the stuff down on the street. I don't know the date of that at this stage, to be okay. honest with you. All right. But I would encourage any elected member, if they're available, Thursday evening to join us, because that's going to be quite a crucial session with, yeah. with the, the community groups and yes. businesses. Sorry, Kate. Sorry, and I, look, I have to, to try and um, um, put some context around the conversation. Also, uh, it is under the contract that this is designed by the community. Not So if whatever um, the team bring back to us, we can't then just redesign the whole things ourselves. Be uh, ourselves because when the Mayor and I and Blair were on the Zoom call with the then deputy... No, um, anyway, some minister, <laughs> I remember. Um, we were talking about this, and this is, um, this is a, a new way of engaging yep. with the community to get their views to design their streets with their money. So, um, It's definitely community-led. It is definitely community-led, yeah. 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 If I can also add, um, Chair, is that um, I believe that the item of innovating streets is already on the CBD agenda for the next meeting. Oh, there you go. It's already on your agenda for the next meeting. Oh, which, which next meeting? On the, CB, on the CB, CBD advisory. Can, can we have it, it clear be. when we're sending, because uh, I appreciate Jeff's point, actually, yeah. Uh, yeah. have it clear when we're sending off a piece yeah. of work to be done what the process is being followed, even mm -hmm. if it's not a resolution mm -hmm. somewhere in the uh, staff report yeah. about exactly what's happening so we don't have people jockeying for, I want it at my group yeah. or I want it at mine or, we, you know, what about this, what about yeah. that no, good in points. advance. Um, and, and excellent discussion and Tania is writing down so we will make sure um, in the future that we cross over everyone and make sure everyone's involved. Thank you. Okay, so um, let's move to, where are we, page uh, 139. So we're at the biking and micro mobility update. Is that you, Martin? <laughs> Just stay in the seat. See, I didn't tell you to leave that time. <laughs> so do you just want to give us, um, there are no questions yet, but just want to give us an update on the um, excellent response from the survey. And Yeah, I mean, it's been really, really positive. Yeah. I mean, the community have been, been um, well engaged and the people that have turned up have, um, and um, provided feedback on what they would like to see around biking and scootering in the future for the city has been really positive. Mm. There's really strong support, 80% uh, plus for, you know, good um, city-wide, cross-city connected, super mm. bikeways, bikeways <laughs> whatever we're going to call them. Yeah. Um, so that, that, that's good to hear. Uh, and the key, key messages coming out of that engagement is, you know, council, please provide safe, separated, well-connected facilities and we will get on our bikes yep. or we'll go and buy bikes and we'll get our kids and biking. So I think if we, you know, can start to you know, roll some of these projects out, we'll, we'll get some really good um, feedback from the community on what we're trying to achieve in the future. And so, so clearly, um, overwhelming majority are supporting, you know, when we had that workshop and we, as a group, um, our two priorities were the super super bike ways and then connecting the neighbourhoods and clearly yes. that feedback's come back. And so about approximately how many responses did you get from the survey? Uh, look, I I think, uh, I can't remember. We're, we're around about 
over a thousand pieces of yeah. uh, feedback uh, through different forms that's come back to us, written email, you know, stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, it's been it's been really um, positive. Now we've got a, a summary of the uh, the engagement uh, and submissions that will be coming to you very shortly. Um, so that will be shared. That that report's just being finalised, and that gives a good breakdown of of the feedback received. And then we've got another uh, workshop planned for I elected think, members in March. I think it's the 12th of March, rings a bell, okay. but I'm not 100% sure. But it's around about that time, yeah. Yeah, so that's good news. We are, our passions and our direction that we're setting yeah. is, is supported by the community so far, so yeah. it's a win, eh? And, and you'll, you'll see at that workshop, you'll see, well, prior to that workshop, you'll get the information, but you'll see the, the citywide um, biking and micromobility network plan that's yeah. been developed for you to have your say on, it's a draft. Yep. So I'd actively encourage you to have a good look at the links, make sure we've got the destinations, the linkage is right. There'll be a lot of interest in that, I'm sure. Ca yep. Councillor McPherson? Yeah, what this doesn't say, this thing is, um, it doesn't give us a lead on a, a question that, um, sorry, I can't remember his name from Bike Waikato raised. Richard. Richard, Richard yep. raised this morning about where's the link from um, the Western Rail Trail to the Claudelands Bridge cycling link and that. Uh, now that one of these street trials may or may not be um, a little bit of the route, but I didn't think ungapping the gap meant sort of uh, doing a little bit every three years until we get there in 30 years' time. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not seeing tangibly, I'm seeing processes, I'm not seeing tangibly when the gaps are being ungapped. Um, and in this particular case, that gap that was raised in the submission this morning, uh, which I know that this council has been asking about, the last council was asking mm. about, and uh, it's... But isn't what you're asking for what Martin just said is coming yeah, to the workshop? It's coming to the workshop with the plan that we've developed to, for you to have your say on. So you'll see the, you well, know, the okay, gaps. OK, but you didn't mention specifically that gap. Oh no, I was just talking about the citywide network plan that we've developed for you to see and that will include central city linkages um, and key links from p pieces of infrastructure like the Western Rail Trail, linking up other other key pieces of cycling mm. infrastructure. So yeah, 12th of, I think it's the 12th of March is a key key date for this is project. There a, is there a budget for it in, within the LTP? There is There is some funding. Huge. Yep. Whether it will survive or not, I mean, it depends on Waka Katahi as well, what they, they provide to support can, us. Can that be identified to start, That's to councillors, sorry, but ahead of uh, Thursday so that we, if anyone gets into axing, we know it's being axed and not, because it's not by, there by name, I don't, I'm pretty sure. Uh, it's there as the citywide biking and yeah. micromobility project citywide. Years, how much of it is that? Is $3 the, million dollars in the first no, year. how much? for the link between the Western Rail Trail and Claudens Bridge? No idea at oh, this stage, because it's not been designed. So, yeah, is it, look, I don't need to know the exact dollars, but I want to know that there's enough in there, or yeah. that it's all going to be needed in order for us to do it, that sort of question. Yeah. So we can do that on for Thursday, or at least if you can email... Uh, sending it out or whatever. Yeah, send it out beforehand to make sure. Thanks. So, sorry, just so I'm clear, Councillor McPherson, you're wanting a... a a bit more of a detailed costing for that particular connection? Uh, I, I don't need to know the detailed costing. I'd, I'd probably start weeping if I did, but I would like to know that there's enough in that budget to mm. cover it mm. and whether there's going to be stuff left over after just a gross amount for that and we've got enough to cover it or it depends on NZTA funding. I, I, I've got no sense yeah. of whether the LTP, if passed in its current form, is going to allow us to complete that that part of the yeah. central city cycling network. That's what I'm trying to find out. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, and and I, I I understand um, sometimes with some of um, the reporting here, uh, some of the elected members' frustration with not so much detail. But remember, again, this is um, the business case with NZTA and. You know, staff are just keeping us in the loop as we go along. So we haven't had a lot of detail yet, which is why I mentioned to the NZTA um, director this morning that if there was a way they could review their processes and make it easier for all of us, um, that would be really welcome. Um, 
Okay, so Tania's made a note of that, Councillor McPherson. Right Thank there. Our Zoomers are okay, they're quite quiet. Okay, Crosby Road mode shift improvement. So page 140. Oh, wait on. This is just saying there's more information coming, right? That's correct, yeah. yeah. Be shared very soon with elected members. Okay, yeah. yeah. But it's a voting project. Yeah. Okay. It's where the fire station is, I think, isn't it? That's correct, Volunteer yes. fire station, yeah. So um, when you get that information, elected members, have a really good look at it. I've um, glanced at it, and I, there's a lot of detail in there, and it is kind of like the first stake in the ground for us in terms of what our new approach to cycling in the city and mode shifter. So um, it'd be great to have everyone's feedback. Councillor Bunting? Yeah, just a quick question on that, and I'm really excited about that too. Um, just around the Crosby Road, Hukunui Road intersection, so say we encourage a lot of cyclists down there and we pull them onto Hukunui Road, um, what is there waiting for them at the moment, or is there any plan to...? Yeah, I mean, the, the information you'll get shortly won't include the design for the Hukunui Crosby intersection. Intersection we're, tr we're dealing with that separately. Obviously, it's got mm. a link into it's whatever cool. we determine the future of Crosby Road is going to be. So we're, we're working up a couple of options for that intersection at the moment. So that's going through a process. Right. So that that's, will happen roughly concurrently? Yep. That's yeah, the great. plan. Yep. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you. All right. Um, let's move on to the um, Victoria Street Cla Claude yeah. Lynn's Road Traffic Signals Cycle Connection Update. Martin, do you want to introduce this one? Yeah, look, I, I'm really excited about this one because it's um, it's been a bit of a thorn in our side for a while. So we've had a few cracks at this to try and get a... Uh, a workable solution going forward and we finally after months of trying we've got approval from Waka Katahi to do what we're showing on the plan which is basically a dedicated um, right turn um, facility from Victoria Street into Claudeland so that will avoid cyclists having to either you know dismount and try and cross at the traffic lights or cross over and use the footpath on the other side to, to, to join up with Claudelands Road and onto Claudelands Bridge. So we're, we are excited about getting this one across the line because I think it will help unlock the, the uh, potential of the investment that we've made in Claudelands Bridge already. Great. Thank you for the introduction. We'll go to um, our first two keen cyclists, Councillor Thompson. Thank you. And Thank you. Us. Thanks, Martin. Um, this is, has been sorely needed for a long time. My only, I guess it's kind of a design question, maybe not for a committee, but it's here now. So um, I'm just wondering if you've got shadows and you're behind cars, but you, like, do you, what happens? Do you have to wait till you get to the front and then you step to the side and wait till the next cycle of traffic? Or how do you actually get to the point where you... Turn. Are you talking about in the right the right turn lane? Yes. So the right turn lane is just purely for bikes, not cars. Ah. Okay. Yes. So cars oh. will cars will be cars are currently banned. Wow. From, well, all vehicles are currently banned from turning right there. Yeah. So the only vehicles that will be able to turn right there will be bikes in their okay. own dedicated, so be a dedicated, separated, protected lane. There you go. Oh, oh, oh that's so fancy. <laughs> Councillor Bunting. <laughs> Of the table. Um, can I just channel my inner um, dear friend Martin Gallagher here and and say, would you agree that this is fantastic? No, no. no Come okay. on. All it's right. ten to three. Don't pull him up. <laughs> okay. Um, just with regards. Thank you. I, I share your enthusiasm, obviously. But um, <laughs> just with regards of uh, Claudine's Bridge, um, is there? I've, I've been asking for a couple. Of, I think it feels like a couple of years now for just a simple sign on the other side that says, "Share the lane." You know, on the Claudelands Bridge, is there any move to get that done? I'll probably Robin, I'd sort of fire at that question at both of you because um, I, I heard. Yeah. So, um, so we've been wanting to redo the um, the right. Shero, uh, education components yep. and have been looking to hook that in as part of that. Um, I'll just need to follow up with the team on that because yeah. that's certainly something that we've been, um, and this is probably a really good time to redo that as we roll out some more mm. shower treatment. Mm. So we'll, we'll put, put the two together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Hamilton. Um, Martin, I understand that this is just for cyclists to turn right and not cars? That's correct. Okay. What was the rationale for that? Well, cars are currently banned from turning right anyway. 
So it was look at an opportunity to, you know, connect cyclists into an, a facility that we've already invested quite a lot of money into. Um, and movements currently for cyclists in the area are either um, in conflict with vehicles or in conflict with pedestrians. So this new facility will provide cyclists with the opportunity to safely make that turn without conflicts with either pedestrians or other, other vehicles. Could we um, then put out some signage or something? A similar question I asked with Richard this morning. I'm seeing cyclists not owning the road and cars overtaking cyclists That's despite question. this bridge. So could we at least have big signs that help to communicate that message to both drivers and cyclists? Because otherwise it could be more hazardous than helpful. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk said. to Robin about that, yeah. yeah. Thanks. Um, uh, Councillor Pascoe, you're up next. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm still having trouble with raising my hand, but I do raise it physically. Yep. Look, I, I um, where is the cycle lane in that northern part, the, the part that heads north towards the bridge? Um, I, my recollection is there are two car lanes there and currently no cycle lane. Is it intended to build a cycle lane in there? Uh, through the chair, that's correct, uh, Councillor Pascoe. So basically we go from two vehicle lanes down to one vehicle lane and a, and a dedicated right turn facility for cyclists. You're joking. Okay. No, uh, so, well. So how, how are you going to deal with the, the motorists who go straight through and do a right hand turn at Bryce Street, Little Bryce Street, in order to get onto that bridge? That, uh, so after the intersection, it will go back to two two vehicle lanes. So those um, motorists wanting to turn right into Bryce Street can then uh, merge out and use the two vehicle lanes beyond this intersection. And will the traffic signals be changed to signal when the cyclists can do that right hand turn? That, that's correct, yes. So why don't you make a lane there for cars also to turn right with the cyclists and go onto the bridge? Because I think that would have a wider impact on uh, traffic flow in the area, plus it also means cyclists are then sharing a facility with the general traffic, which is what we're trying to avoid. We're trying to create a safe connection. Yeah, so, so will we get a chance to discuss this on the 12th of March? Or is this a, is this a fait accompli now, like the Cordon's Bridge was it, 20 years ago? Uh, through, the, through the chair, it's not a fait accompli. I mean, it's, uh, again, it's a decision that, that uh, we would obviously like your support for, but it's taken us some time to get a decision out of Wakud Kahatahi. This is the the project okay. that they've approved, yes. Okay, well, I'd like the opportunity for us to discuss it. I, I think it's, uh, it's, I, I think it's going to create more problems than solutions for the very, very small number of cyclists who use that bridge. Um, I, I, okay, so we'll just keep. It's going to take another lane out of. Councillor Pasco, you're debating, so let's. No, I'm getting into debate. Yeah, but yeah. I, I'd like to make sure that we've got the opportunity. So let me let me just check with um, with Martin in terms of process. There's nothing, um, and this has been on the books to be to, for staff to come up with a solution for this for a very long time now. Well, since I've been at the yeah. council, yes. So in terms of process, though, um, today you're just updating me. Uh, sorry, updating us. Oh, stupid thing. Um, is there any? Oh, it says work will take place in June 2021. So that's what we're hoping. Yes, yeah. I mean it's. We've still got to go through the hearings committee to get this into a to a bylaw as a facility. Right. Okay. Thank and, you. And, and the other the other part of that process is um, the what do you call that? The, uh, sorry, no. The hearings and engagement committee tomorrow sits and meets and makes the decision because they're delegated to uh, for this right hand turn That's to go ahead. So tomorrow's the day, Councillor Pascoe. Goodness me, talk about notice. <laughs> uh, okay. <Yeah. laughs> right, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gallagher. Um, can you confirm that the uh, picture that Councillor Pascoe is displaying is no longer an accurate? representation of that oh, no, intersection. <laughs> no, you don't have to confirm that. Well, no, I'm just, I'm confused. No, but that's just as Are you bringing a train him. back? There's a train service for Do you Franklin. have another question? Uh, yes, I do. And a very important question. Right. Very important question. 
Uh, has uh, staff thought of a major media release featuring the chair of the Community Services Committee and the deputy chair of the Environment Committee uh, in launching this new uh, turn? I can just see a very okay, excellent so photo again, opportunity. Again, a very serious. That not a serious question, but it's I'm a sure very it can be question. answered. Come on, people! It's three o'clock. Staff have been here all day, as we have. So, Councillor McPherson, well, for a very no. So. Uh, what is your exact point of order uh, from the The point of order is the that book. the chair did no, no, uh, cut off the member in mid-sentence. <laughs> the is member not was a merely wanting to ask about are yes, we going to have an adequate that comms is not strategy a point on of this order particular to project. Deputy Chair of this committee, as you well know, is just withdrawal being no. No. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I have oh, you withdraw. <laughs> Um, let's go to a very serious question from Councillor McPherson. <laughs> it is. Um, <laughs> so, Martin, can you confirm that if you're northbound <laughs> oh, that on, I'm looking at your photo here, northbound yeah. on Victoria Street mm -hmm. at the Claudelands Road intersection, the bit that you're showing pretty much right in the middle there, that um, it's... Uh, a, there's still two lanes for cars to go ahead at that point. No, there's only a single. Well, what's car the lane. what's the? I'm seeing two lanes of cars there. One's on the left-hand side is parking. Uh, in the middle lane is general traffic, and in that right-hand lane, this is just an aerial. It's currently showing as cars, but it will be bikes. Well, is it not possible to give uh, the Deputy Mayor the choice of removing three car parks and putting an extra uh, car lane in there and still have two going ahead, plus the cycleway right turn? I think we've looked at that and there's a number of technical reasons why that can't proceed. I think one of them is due to that location of that canopy that's quite close to the edge of the road there, the potential of being struck by a large vehicle. Yeah, but the a cycle right turn lane wouldn't require the full width. Look, I, I don't. The part of the problem, Madam Chair, is that we no longer have the ability to look at details like that, in the because this committee is not the right place. I accept that to to have this sort of discussion, but we don't have that sort of opportunity um, to thrash around some of those. So by the time they come here, they've had a good airing with yeah. elected members who are then puzzled by some of the outcomes. OK, so I... Um, I mean, if we... We, if we can't... We sorry. can't do anything about it now. Well, if we're worried today, about queue lengths and car, you know, congestion, we've, we've had, we have had a look at that, mm -hmm. and um, we anticipate, you know, the wor worst times that we've looked at it, there's about um, ten, 10 cars waiting to get through the lights in a queue. If we take out a traffic lane, that potentially could double to 20. That's, that's, that's the impact. Actually, so, so what I, I apologise for what I just said, because it's not true, is it? Um, we, could, we could remove this. We could put a motion to hold this, which would mean it would hold it from tomorrow's hearings and engagement committee as well for more discussion. If there's, a, if there's um, considerable concern... Process, then I, I do, and this is a very serious as the chair of that committee. I do want some advice as to how yeah. that would be done appropriately. Yeah. I, I'm so, um, very um, open minded. Do you have any? So, the point of the hearings and engagement committee tomorrow is to give us the, the bylaw permission to enact the change. Um, if we are to redesign the area, the staff would need to go back and look at the options available and then bring those options back to the next hearings and engagement. They can't do this. As for any reason seeing a delay, then tomorrow's particular hearing becomes a superfluous until such time as there is a clear policy position of council. Have I got that right? Yes, I believe so. Yep. And this governance has a different... <laughs> we'd need to defer it tomorrow mm. at yep. the meeting because it is a separate agenda. Yeah. OK, thank you. So um, members are welcome to pop something on, uh, add something to that recommendation, uh, if that's what they um, are seeking. Councillor McPherson, I'm looking at you. Yeah, uh, well, I would like to... 
move a motion to restore the excess Hamilton committee, but no. I don't think that's the <laughs> right place to do it. <laughs> um, this is this is members. This is one of the one of the reasons, as well as we just can't get any space in briefings that um, the general manager is has is putting some dedicated transportation workshops, briefings in the diary, and we're going to have those on a regular yeah. basis, so so that we can get into exactly. the. The, the detail of the kitchen on the things that are really important to us. So um, it's not going to solve the issue today. Um, no, but look, I'll go I'm, I'm happy to I'm happy to put something into the recommendation that defers yeah. this item, Councillor Hamilton. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to um, chair. Um, yep. I just don't I just don't have comfort around. Okay. The fact that it's the first time I've seen it and some of the rationale. We've got this the Memorial Bridge supporting tr uh, bikes um, mm. and cars, and yet here we are just endorsing bikes yep. and not cars, and then we're, we're having a huge impact on Victoria Street. Yep. I haven't seen some of that, okay. ne that network consideration. All right, look, there's yeah. enough concern around the table for, um, um, for me to propose something. So um, I will work on the words of that, but can we keep going through... So that'll be my intention will be to delay this item, um, so the elected members can have uh, a more robust conversation about the detail. So can we carry on? Otherwise, we're not well, going to I'd get really anywhere. Like Along yeah. that, for context. With well, this not of Councillor Hamilton, no. No, 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 of, of Martin. <laughs> oh, on on the item yeah, just, or just, on the process? Yeah, just because everyone's getting their their, um, their their undies all tangled up about the this two lane to one lane thing. And how how far is it two lanes anyway? Isn't it just from Alma Street? It's one lane all the way down to Hill Street, isn't it? Uh, I mean, part of Victoria Street it's already one lane, isn't it? Where it was narrowed up a number of years ago. I understand. Um, yeah. So uh, it's basically a, a continuation of that. Yes, it does yeah, impact. Okay slightly on the number of cars that we're waiting at that set of traffic lights, but um, from a wider network perspective, it's quite minimal. Okay. That, that's my professional yeah. opinion mm -hmm. on that. Yeah, it's tiny. Um, Mayor Southgate? Yeah, I was just trying to get a handle on the process. I agree with you that um, not, some more space needs to... I've, I've tried to get some of the workshops and some of the community things, but I can't get to all of them. As you could understand, I just wouldn't have all the time. Uh, the last one was very interesting. But, but in terms of getting elected members, we I know you're saying there isn't much time for briefings. We do have a process through James to mm. propose briefings. And if it's really important, we do find that space. So we should find that space. But I think by timetabling something regular, that's probably the way forward. Mm. It doesn't help us with this. No. So, but um, should yeah. help us avoid this yeah. going forward. But the, yeah. Um, Councillor Thompson? Uh, thank you, Chair Angela. I just wanted to flag that I'd like to move an amendment to uh, your motion to move the staff recommendation. Great. Okay. Thank you. So, okay. All right. So the, the, the motion is going to be a... Um, I'll carry on with questions in a minute. The motion's going to be um, A and B and C and a D that says that. And we'll get that up on in a minute. What does C say, please, ma'am? Okay, yeah. Whatever you need to, to cover off. And then uh, Councillor Thompson and Councillor McPherson. Is seconding the staff recommendation as is on page 135. So, Madam Chair, a bit confused about that. So, the staff recommendation is the three. You're adding an additional D. They mm. can't put amendment. They can't put an amendment that's a direct negative to deferral, can they? Yeah, it's not a direct negative. It's just not included. It's not saying. Yeah. Okay. It's just not included. Well, the next case, we might as well put A, B, and C, and just leave D as a additional. case, we might as well put A, B, and C, and just leave D as an additional. But, um, but no, you can put well, a procedural motion. No, because A, motion. B and C are accepting the report as it is and everything in the report. So we do need to have a the, motion the alternative, uh, Is the alternative, Madam Chair, to put a procedural motion that this item lay on the table? Then that part doesn't get debated. Are you, are you doing that? No, I'm just asking if that's an alternative. Oh, it's always an alternative. 
it, oh, the the other um, uh, the other change there is C, is to C as well, which is just moving the date for on street commuter parking. So you're okay with that in your What's the amendment? Proposal for, proposal for that? Um, just to be referred to the next available yeah. workshop. I thought that was already the situation. Sorry, no, it is. So, it's got so, so it is, but in the resolution that was prior to the workshop, the reports were confirmed. So from the workshop on the 17th, it was to be deferred back again. So the commuter parking was due to be um, reported to the 18th of March council meeting, yeah. but with a drop-in session the other day, elected members want another um, update, another Correct. briefing, another discussion. So I thought the staff were just going to do that anyway without it having any well, they are, but, because but I understand this, what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, because this is just box ticking and tidying up the resolution. So, in a sense, Paul is right. It's either it's the, the most no one's disagreeing except for D, potentially. Yep. Yes. Can we put it on the board? Or? Yes, it's yeah. going up on the board. Amy's typing. <laughs> there is. <coughs> Could we congratulate. Okay, look, while we are um, while we are dealing with that, uh, let, oh god, do I, do I? Um, let's not do the biking and micro mobility connectivity projects because that's just an update. Surely, um, we could go to project watershed. Point forty six. While we're dealing with this, which is just another update as well. Water. Yes. Ask something about process of stuff with the watershed thing. Yes. Um, this there the, there are issues with disconnect with watershed. That not, it's not our fault here, but the course regional council disbanded their, their watershed committee. I think originally Margaret was tagged to do yeah, that, and now they've re-established mm. those um, catchment committees. And we've always said that we need a better way to connect with the annual funding or the three yearly funding through Project Watershed. I suggest, and I don't know what the right motion would be, that we put a process to re-establish some representation from Hamilton City Council on that and it could be Sarah it could be Margaret but I think it should be somebody who's really passionate about the impact of the catchment especially um, the ecological yeah I know the general manager was having conversations with WRC but Myrie can update us mm -hmm. I think the last meeting um, which would have been in November, I think, last okay. year, there was a staff action to go away and, and look at how we could re-establish that, um, that line or that connection for Project Watershed between uh, Waikato Regional Council and Hamilton City Council. So, so I'd like to make a motion that we write to WRC suggesting that we have a representation through Sarah Thompson as Deputy Chair of Environment on their catchment commit the appropriate catchment committee. They can say no, of course, but let's try that. So have they put the catchment committees back together? Yeah. They started this term without them, didn't they? Yeah, they did, but they've just recently gone back together okay. in a slightly different form. And I understand, in fact, they've detached mm. some of Hamilton City from from some of the wider catchment issues, but I might be wrong on that. Yeah, I'm not sure on that. I was talking to Stu Kneebone, but... Okay. Mm. Anyway, my intent is right. to have someone there. So yes. I'll move. Is there someone to second that? Yes. Okay, so it has to be a recommendation to council because you say that. <laughs> so oh, yeah. that one will need to be a recommendation to council. That okay, so we'll request that the he hearings engagement. What? No, we have said no, 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 not this one. Sorry, this committee recommends to council the establishment of a representative on the appropriate catchment board of regional council and that Sarah Thompson has expressed an interest in that work and she would be our preferred Okay, candidate. so we'll take, we'll take that as a that separate motion. <laughs> yep, once we've dealt with this one on the board. Which is this? Which is this? I think Dave this has, one. thank you. Okay, so um, we've still got a couple of other items in this um, general manager's report. Know, let me try. You know, so let's deal with... I've got just let's one question. Regarding the watershed, watershed. Yep. Um, the question, sorry, Mary. Um, the question was just in terms of the ecological impact of the works we're doing and ensuring that going forward, the designs and the way that we approach this is more ecologically sensitive. How uh, is 
going being uh, a representative on the catching catchment committee going to be able to achieve that or does there need to be a separate conversation uh, the reason I'm asking is that um, s looking at some of the works uh, there has been some concern from someone who has expertise in this area that it's uh, yeah these outcomes are being detrimental to the life within these streams so I guess the the work program or the work activity is is something that is agreed between Hamilton City Council and Waikato Regional mm. Council at a staff level. However, if there was um, certain things that, um, or methodologies that um, that weren't deemed to be appropriate, um, that would certainly be something I would assume could be brought up at the catchment committee okay. at, to, to set that, that standard and, and drive that direction. Okay, thank you, Mary. Yep. Great, okay. All right, um, let's deal with the last item and then we'll deal with this range of motions that are up on the board. So we've got an update from um, Trent. You're in the hot seat on the rubbish and recycling service update. Not the items that are in the PX, but just the standard service. Welcome, uh, Trent. Thank you. Uh, it's just a, a brief update on just where the service was at. Um, obviously, sort of end of the year. Um, few months into the rollout and just obviously that we had a few issues at the beginning with a lot of uh, customer requests coming through. Um, we seem to starting to move a transition out of a project phase into a, a business as usual. Um, we're still having a few little things pop up and now, now and then but um, I guess probably the things to highlight is just I guess the results that we're getting that are um, in terms of the diversion rates and um, volumes of food waste still continuing to be diverted. So. Great. Any questions. Thanks, Trent. Any questions from committee members? No, they're in. No, Nick, what? Well, no, I mean, I'm only allowed to ask this question. Uh, can you confirm that you will convey to the whole team our, our huge congratulations with the massive overall, the really wonderful service? That's not a question. Yes. Thank you. Councillor Van Austin for a question. I do have a question, and it was with regard to um, a, an online petition and um, uh, with regard to the size of the bins, and has council received that petition formally at this point? No, we haven't. Thank you. All right. Good answer. <laughs> nice and direct. <laughs> okay, right. <coughs> Let's uh, deal with these um, motions. So we have first up. Can you scroll down a little bit, please? Oh, there we go. So, can I just so some wording on that motion with regard to Sarah's moment of moment of destiny there. So ha hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, everyone. Just wait a minute. So the first motion is not mine. That you're taking D separately. Okay. So what's the first one? How is that different from Councillor Thompson's then? It's not. So the. First motion is the staff recommendation. Then there would be a second motion in relation to the Victoria Street. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I get that. A third motion, so no amendments at this point, in relation to the appointment of Councillor Thompson. And can I just add, having yeah. reflected and had just had a side conversation, that we say Councillor Thompson and Mangai and a, a Mangai representative. Yeah. Okay, so, but the first one, Councillor Thompson indicated she was moving the staff recommendation with the change of um, the date for the commuter yeah. parking, right? Uh, what's in the staff yes, report? So, well, I'm, yes, I guess I thought that the delay was going to be in your motion. So, no, let's ignore yeah. the delay for a yep, moment. So, I'm just happy to move. So, this is the staff motion that your uh, staff recommendation but just with the changes to the date for commuter parking and C. Are you happy with that yes. to be yep. your motion? That looks fine. So point of information question. Yes. Uh, the, the effect of the delay with regard to coming to the hearings engagement No, committee. we're not there yet. All we're right. not there yet. This is just the top motion. A, B and C, moved by Councillor Thompson and seconded by Councillor McPherson. The, the thing in your motion 
had it coming, still going to workshop, that's a good idea, but they yeah. had it coming to a council committee meeting on 18th of March for a good reason. Staff advised us that if we wanted to get it, the information side, I think, I can't remember the exact conversation in the for the LTP, we needed to have it by the end of this month and that was the only available formal thing after the workshop. That's what Eva Lisa said. So, so that's been taken out for some reason. Mm. So, so I'm not now. I'm not sure. Sorry, it, I'm. I, see, I, um, the C that's in there now. Yeah. It's it, still in. It does. It's not no it's longer. It, that that doesn't. It, the last half sentence there and confirm should actually be go back to reading what the staff one here mm. reads. The staff, the general manager spoke to me about this. She said it can't make the 18th of March if there's to be a briefing before it. Why not? I don't know. Well, that's, we had that discussion, we had that exact discussion at the know? workshop, or the, the briefing the other day, and we said, yeah, it can, that we can arrange with governance for them to have the same uh, dates as council chairs do. Uh, even with organising the dates, it's more the availability of your calendars to get said briefing. Um, our options are deferring items that have already been identified as having the higher priority a example, plan change that's been booked after being deferred from Christmas. Uh, it would mean deferring the other biking and mobility well, programme. Yeah, and I'm, so and I've got I'm no sorry, dates. Amy, but there's a political consideration Absolutely here. Absolutely. And the political consideration was relates to the revenue that's going to come in from parking or not, and making sure whatever the answer to that is in a formal council meeting is um, factored into the LTP in time. That was what the discussion the other day was about. So, okay. to, uh, so for someone to say it's not the higher priority, um, it's not just calendar time. It's not biking and micro mobility. It's um, it's the LTP. It's, yeah. This is an LTP revenue. So it's a case of so, identifying a date or a time that might work. Whether you might want to consider that this is a topic of a catch-up call. Sorry. I, might want to and so it's more finding a time in which we can actually organise this in your calendars. We haven't got any gaps to put such a meeting in. Well, there are things that we've been discussing in the last month that aren't um, LTP related. Yeah, I'll bet you there's some in the next couple of weeks. Can't we um, bump one of them? I can continue to go back and see if we can remove anything. Okay, so, you know, six um, o'clock, seven o'clock at night. <laughs> yeah, if we're open to going longer on briefing days, or... It can still be deferred, though, right? Yeah. Hang on, it's just, just a case of yeah. locating yes. an option that works for everybody, or a majority. So, yeah. if we take... We take extremely, in fairness out of staff, it has been extremely hard to find additional time for elected members, given all the requests that we get for workshops, briefings, yeah. and so on. It is pretty hard, but we'll have a look at it. I don't think, um, I mean, if there aren't hours in the day, we'll have to um, agree to potentially, like you say, going after our normal working hours. Yep. And okay. that may just be the way it is ahead of the LTP. You can have a really good holiday after the LTP, of mm. course, so we may just have to dig in a bit. Okay, so look, I'm going to adjourn for five minutes because I'm quite confused on dates and all sorts of things now. So take a breather for five. The, well, we can sort the issue, out. Paula, is that this so, has been um, hanging. This says, a, so we've said we were going to defer it to the 18th, but that's wrong because of, oh no, why? So we originally were going to defer it to the 18th, because yeah. the report was due back to...
about my general frustration. We've talked about a timeline to wrap up all of these park the, the parking um, uh, precinct plans, the parking management plan, the changes the government's wanting to see, commuter parking, the whole lot by the end of this year. So staff are, <laughs> staff are working on that timeline. Calendar year, calendar year. Um, to, so that next year we could just get on with it, let staff do the work and not talk about parking. <laughs> That's my dream. I'd like to share that with everyone. I've shared it with the Mayor. <laughs> but anyway, um, look, Jason's going to talk to... Are we putting the new C up? Um, Jason, over to you. Save us, please. From the, from the briefing that we had um, with you all last uh, Wednesday, we took away some key learnings or some key insights from that. One, that um, the commuter parking initiative that we're looking to roll out this year on its own is something that needs to be linked back or... or give effect to, you know, what are we doing in the walking uh, micromobility space as well as um, PT. It was some of the feedback that we've got. So we were asked to go away and have another uh, workshop with elected members so we could bring back, I suppose, a comprehensive um, overview of where we're at with all that. And so that's what we're trying to do. Um, the I'm sorry, Jason. I can't hear, sorry. Thank you. Carry on. So... Uh, in an effort to, I suppose, streamline the process, our intention was from last week's briefing to go to, go to the 18th of March uh, council meeting to have the fees and charges for the on-street parking, I suppose, approved. But we've taken away that we're just not there yet in terms of the, the scope of the commuter parking that we want, the fees and charges associated with that, but also you know, how does it link back to the, all the other um, transport modes, uh, specifically around the central city. So we need more time in that space. And so the um, recommendation that you will see in front of you is really looking to, one, give us more time to uh, engage with elected members and make sure that we've got, we've covered all the bases regarding the on-street commuter parking as well as the micromobility and maybe any PT um, uh, questions as well. We're looking to, I suppose, time stamp that now that we need to come back to you all and have a decision made by the 30th of June this year which will allow us to begin the new financial year with the on-street um, commuter parking initiative, which is key for us because we've built, we've built it into the this year's annual plan, $400,000 that we are now trying to find from another lot of um, initiatives that we're trying to deliver. But um, also going into the first year of the LTP, that 400000 is already built in there. So we need to start delivering on our on-street commuter parking initiative. So we're really now focusing on trying to get that up and running um, all, all agreed with you all this financial year so we can hit the ground running in the new, in the new financial year. So. Thank you, Jason. Yep, I've seen one, one nod. Yep, two nods, OK. So each of these we're doing individually. No, we'll do this, this one. This is... As one a, motion. B and C. Let's forget all the, any of the others right now because they are separate motions. Wording, wording because so I've this also is Councillor Thompson and McPherson's motion, so you need to check with them if you want wording changes. Well, no, no, I'm, I'm just through the chair. This is about grammar in English. Uh, it's just, it's not about that. It's about the the the, the, the um, Councillor Thompson's moment of destiny in terms of going on the catchment. No, we're not there okay, yet. No, right. right. We're not there yet. Right. We're dealing with this separately or debating them all at once? Well, they're all separate motions, right. so uh, sadly we'll be debating these yeah. separately. Okay. And Madam Chair, so I still have a procedural question. Yes. Um, I have a question relating to one of the motions, not the one there. Okay. I'll have an opportunity to oh, ask absolutely. that question. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. But people focus on okay. this one. This one. How, how does that achieve <laughs> what Jason's just eloquently put to us? How does that make sure that we make a decision in time for you to start with, uh, this before yeah. the end of this financial year? Yeah, look, I suppose... Um, I, don't, I don't understand how the timing works, yeah. sorry. So the... the yeah. We're just trying to map out the process there. So we want to go back to um, a, a briefing or a workshop where we can just... Yeah, I, know, I, understand, have that. I understand what we want to do with them. Yep. How does the timeline work? So that we, you know, when does it come back to... What council yes. meeting does it come back to to get the formal decision made in time for you to enact it? 
I, I suppose I haven't mapped out that because initially we were going to go to the 18th yes. of March council you said meeting. That was, you guys said that was the last meeting available to make a decision in time for you to get the implementation. So, Jason, yep. do we need on at the bottom of C where it says and confirm which committee council meeting should receive this item by 30th of June? And that was the, oh, that was the problem. Mm -hmm. gonna, yes, we yeah, we need to, we had to do it we by need the time stamp it. Yeah, yep. by the 30th okay, of so June. if we can add that yep. to the motion. Well, Councillor Thompson, answer. is that okay? It's your motion, Councillor McPherson? Yeah, as long as there's a timeline so we yep. get the thing done by yes. in time to yep. do Jason's job for Yeah, Yep, him. agree. Or allow him okay. to do it. Much appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go. By June 30th, June 2021. All right. <laughs> yes, councillor. Did you have a mover or a seconder for that second motion? No, let's just deal with this okay. first. <laughs> Focus, people. Oh, you didn't say you were cranky. Yes, I am. <laughs> I am never cranky. Okay, let's deal with this. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any debate? No. Excellent. No, councillor. Sorry, clarification. Yeah. The on-street commuter parking, there's two aspects of it. This motion is a little unclear. There's the CBD parking, I think we called it. One, there's those two areas that are currently free, which are converting to park ones, the north and south precincts, if that's the name for them, Jeff. North and south, oh, yep. Um, that's one part. And then there's the donut around the outside of the CBD, which is also, that's a different class of commuter parking. So is this covering both of them? Or just one, one of those. Ah, uh, just one of them at the moment. Just the areas north and south. Correct, and that's what was approved through this year's annual plan discussions, and that's oh, what the four hundred thousand. With the four hundred thousand. So there's going to be okay. some separate work happening. Yes. Uh, on the other one. When you say separate, we want to uh, uh, grip it all up. So when we come and talk to you about the on-street parking, we're talking about the initiative that's going to be. Realised in year two of the LTP, which is what you're talking year about. Year two, but the budget had it in year from year one onwards. Some of it did it not. No, from year two. You're talking about the 1.6 million now. Oh, it was 1.2 like, oh, plus one plus 400,000 yeah. mm. from this. Yeah. So we were going to have 400,000 in year one. Correct. And one point, an extra 1.2 on top of that from year, year two, two onwards. Yeah, which is um, related to the donut that you keep you're talking about. So we're going to do none of that enacted in year one, because I thought we were. No. And that's what the budget shows, yes. the LTP budget? Correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, quest questions on this? Councillor Hamilton? Oh, debate. Sorry. Okay, you're waiting for debate. Councillor Bunting, you're waiting for debate <laughs> yeah. as well? But, uh, okay. If I can just be really clear as to what... So the receiving the report, if we're debating on all the other stuff on the... No, we're just debating on this one. No, but receiving the report and captures the whole report. That's yeah, yeah, I'm... yeah, but we'll deal with it and the other separate motions arising from the discussion of the report. Okay, yeah. all right. I'll hold all right, off. I won't leave anybody out or anybody behind. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we've got this one. Councillor Thompson, did you want to say anything as the mover? Um, only that it's really good to see in the report um, some good biking connectivity stuff underway because we've been going on about how we haven't actually seen anything on the ground for, for months and now it's actually happening, so it's great to see. Thank you to staff Martin over there and others. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I've only just... Thanks, Councillor Thompson. I've just understood where um, Councillor Bunting was going. Yeah. Yes, anything in the report you debate now. <laughs> Councillor, <laughs> Councillor Hamilton, it's been a long day. Yeah, look, thanks, Chair. Look, initially I wasn't going to support this because I, was, I had some concerns around that right-hand turning lane, but I'm glad you adjourned because it gave me the opportunity to, to talk to staff and get, a, get comfort around the network um, connections and um, potential underutilisation of that bridge um, by v vehicular movement. So um, I have a lot more comfort around it now, and I, I, I do want to support it. Um, and but, sorry, there is a motion. There's a separate motion for that. No, but I'm not, I'm not going to be seconding that motion either. So I, I originally... OK. That's why I was trying to find if you had okay. a mover and a seconder. Because effectively, that motion's not even on the table yet. Well, it hasn't no, got a mover and a seconder. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, yeah. But, yeah. That's, that's good on you. But thank you, everyone, thank you, everyone, for interrupting me. <laughs> I, I hereby end my debate. <laughs> No, we're not. No. Yeah.
That's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Councillor McPherson. I can tell that uh, Councillor Ryan is feeling much more comforted. <laughs> His body language right next to me has completely changed. Uh, so that, that's all, it's all good, Ryan. <laughs> Glad you're with the program. Um, look, uh, I think the debate, and if you can call it that, and discussion and questions shows that we are missing some opportunities to have to thrash out some design work outside of these meetings. And if we don't get them outside, we'll use the inside the meetings, which is far <laughs> less than ideal. Despite the fact that we're all traffic engineers, it's not the right place to do it. Um, so uh, I've got some issues, questions about the designs, but I'm happy to go with staff now because I know we're going to work on a better sort of process going forward to thrash this sort of thing out. Um, so that's why I'm seconding it. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Bunting. Thank you, uh, Chair Angela. Um, yeah, and, and I'm no traffic engineer either. I've been around long enough to get extremely overpassionate about it, but uh, um, I would... I want to thank the staff for the work they've done up to this point. It's obviously might be quite frustrating for them to, to watch us in action as well, and that's, that's largely due to the situation that Dave brought up. I just want to briefly speak about um, the reason I do keep banging on about that Ruakura connection, and if, if it does put it in con uh, context, it's nothing to do with the Claudelands Bridge or the you know the jobs you get about the Bunty Memorial Bridge, etc. To me, it makes a lot of sense. Um, I'm happy that we've got the assurance that this is looking like it's going to go ahead too. But it is a Unilink, uh, Unilink um, regardless. But it also, for the very relatively cheap price of connecting from the end of Claudins Bridge up Claudins and three blocks of Te Araha, suddenly we've got a link from the university all the way to town. That's it. Whereas our eastern pathways are a whole new project, a very expensive project, which is great. But again, it's another great big, uh, big project which I don't see connects to anything. Um, so it, once we do connect that, and we do get the cross from Claudins Bridge to the Western Rail Trail, by crikey, we've got a path that goes from the Gallagher Building at one end of the Western Rail Trail all the way to University, all up there, just for the small price of those few blocks in Taraha Street, Claudins Street, uh, and along you go. Um, so, look, I'm a little bit frustrated that it dropped off the, the Eastern Passways brochure, but I'm reassured from the staff that this is going to, it, it's being taken seriously. So, I'll go with the staff, you know, and, uh, and be supportive of that. Further in the report, too, I draw your attention to um, the excellent work that's being done at Mangaiti Park. Um, there's a bridge that's just gone in there um, due to some really good work um, from uh, Melissa Clark and the, and the team um, last term, actually. Uh, in getting that bridge in there, it's really quite cool, and it's being really well received from the the, the conversations I've had with the people of St James, Huntington, Rotterdam North. That now they can get through Mangaiti and along, and don't have to travel along Gordon Road. So <clears throat> that's, I believe, opening in a very short while. So, you know, while I, I sometimes feel like I'm taking one step forward and three steps back, it's really exciting to see these these uh, connectivity projects happen. So all in all, I'm happy. Um, yeah, and I'll speak more at the Claudins Bridge part. Thanks, Councillor. Oh, Ms Southgate? So is this Claudins Bridge as well? Thank you. Just um, also mm -hmm. speaking in support, um, the Pukataguha Gordonton um, connections, well done to those councillors who've taken a lead on that area. And, and um, you might, you're one of them. I know there were several others that have been intimately involved, Dave, I think, in terms of that connect and putting safety first. Just in terms of the biking connections, which is in this motion, right? Yes? OK, yes. so um, I asked my question about the options one, two and three. Um, I am particularly concerned. I understand that it gets used now and cyclists do will continue to use it, but I'm particularly under, un, um, concerned about anything that gives priority uh, to Clyde Street as a preferred <laughs> cycling route uh, or Cook Street. Look, I've lived in that area for many, many years, maybe 15 years before moving, and how many intersections dissect Cook and Clyde Street? Um, and there's some complicated intersections. They're, you know, they're crossroads, and the giveaway signs have been changed from this way to that way to another way to stop signs in various times in the in the in the past. 
at the end of the day, it's never going to be anything other than um, a, tr a road that dissects with many others. So that's not ideal. That's why I'll just continue to advocate for the off-street um, options wherever possible. Ruakura is um, a sitter for it. I hope we can make some progress with Hamilton Boys High. I really support the idea of a bridge other than Victoria Street Bridge. And I know there's medium and long term and there's short term. I get that. I do understand that. But I'm just going to keep going until we get as much separated cycle lane as possible connecting our main points of our city. The Western Rail Trail, I know it is along the railway corridor and that was discounted in this was um, a stroke of genius in that respect. Uh, it's one of the most used commuter mm -hmm. cycleways and it's used on the weekends as well. And actually gets you from west to centre. Now what we need to do is get from centre to east. So um, well done to the council before my time for the Western Rail Trail. I understand, Councillor O'Leary, you had a key part to play in that as well. So um, yeah, that, that's where I'm trying to head. I'm not trying to put a barrier in the way but I'm trying to stop doing second-rate options and get to the gold star options as fast as possible. There you go. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Taylor. Thank you, uh, Chair. I'll be quick. Um, just a little mishmash here, I believe. I can't talk about Claudin's Bridge, is that right? Because that's the next motion? Yeah. Mm. Okay. All right. Um, just in terms of the innovating streets thing, I just want to kind of reiterate the point about that. Um, you know, tactical urban, urbanism is fine um, until it goes wrong, um, and then it's the politicians who, who get it in the neck. Mm, and uh, recently, you know, we've seen some work done in Queen Street in terms of the lane that they created there. Uh, I've just come from Dunedin in the weekend and witnessed the uh, spots on the road, which are fading and everybody's laughing about. Uh, they recently put planter boxes in the octagon to stop traffic and those have now been removed and placed in other parts of town because they were so unpopular. In fact, I saw some at the airport as we were flying out. So uh, it's that type of ad hocery that, that can cause problems. I understand what we're trying to do and I understand their temporary trials uh, to see if it actually works. But you've still got to take a bit of care about what you do it, or how you do it. And although it may have buy-in from enthusiasts and people immediately around it, does it have buy-in from the wider community? And do the, um, the elected members in charge of that particular area, have they had sufficient oversight? And so that's, that's my only point about the innovating streets thing there. I want to get a good look at it first before it goes ahead. Uh, in terms of the Claudelands Bridge, which I'm not talking about now, um, the... I will be supporting that because I want to see um, I want to see some real energy going into a dedicated cycle way, something that we put all our energy into um, instead of some squeezing things in along which we seem to be doing an Anzac parade and always tinkering around the edges. I think if we're going to do it, let's create one, let's and let's finish it off. We've got the bridge, so let's do the connections at either end and make it work. So I'll be supporting that. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, just a couple of comments from me before I go to Councillor Thompson's right of reply. I'm going to comment. Hi, cheer, cheer. Sorry. Oh, oh Councillor Pass. Okay. You think I th <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't see. No, no, no. Count I, my rule is the chair always goes last in debate. Um, Councillor Pasco, then you, you're up next. Yeah, thank you. I was, I was going to talk on the on a motion about the um, Victorian Bridge, which I think others have already done so. Well, no, because um, that motion's coming up. Well, I well, yeah, but anyway, if I can't talk about it now, I would let's move the motion. OK. Oh, OK. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Pasco. I can see your blue hand there now. So my, my comments are going to be focused on um, the update on the rubbish and recycling service um, excellent work on the customer number requests I can see trending right down now and I know and I'm not going to name them in case uh, customers decide to ring up and ask for personal service but I know that some of our staff that do not collect the rubbish they are not the contractor personally have gone out and picked up people's rubbish and taken it to the curb and gone way 
over and above, and that person knows who I'm talk uh, that I'm talking to them. Um, so, look, really, really excellent uh, work again. We should be um, we should be really happy at that trend uh, dropping right down. So, well done for for um, all of the team. So, Councillor Thompson, right of reply. Thank you, Chair Angela. Um, I just wanted to reply to a few points that were made. One of them was around Claude, uh, Claude Street, Clyde Street. Um, Mayor Paula mentioned uh, the Western Rail Trail and its success, but I do want to provide uh, a slight counter argument to that, which is the Western Rail Trail actually kind of, it's good at getting people from A to B, but it doesn't connect very much stuff into it along the way. So the catchment that it serves is actually very limited. Um, particularly because you have railway lines along one side, nothing connects into one side of it uh, the whole distance, basically, other than where you've got a road intersecting. So uh, I think when we're looking at the um, options for the university link, I would really like to urge members to be open-minded for now and to look at all options and their benefits and disadvantages really thoughtfully and carefully and listen to the community feedback too. And at that point, I think we can make uh, an informed decision. But uh, when we're looking at those options, some of them will connect more people than others. And we've got to just be open-minded about what we're trying to achieve with these um, as well. And in terms of innovating streets, uh, I think we should give staff and the community that have been working with a lot of credit because hours and hours and hours have gone into designing these and getting them right. And in the case of Dunedin, it was a bit slapdash, it was rushed, they wanted to get stuff out for a COVID response. Um, but in this case, I think it's very different. We have spent months and I think we have staff that are excellent and skilled working on it. So I do want to just say that I have confidence um, in what they're going to be doing. Um, that is all. Thank Excellent. You. Thank you very much, Councillor Thompson. Right, um, debate is being done, so we'll put that uh, to the show of hands. All those in favour, please raise your hands. That's, uh, there are none against. That's carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Now, um, if we can move on to the next uh, motion, which is simply that this committee requests the deferral of the Victoria Street uh, matter to a future meeting or request the Hearings and Engagement Committee. Councillor Pascoe has indicated he would like to move that. Um, Can I just um, suggest a minor change in the wording? Sure. It is the matter of the Victoria Street um, right hand cycle turn. Yep. Is, it, is that a way to describe it? Yeah. Right, um, right hand cycle. So we're very being a little yes. more specific yep. about what's been before. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, right hand cycle turn onto Claudelin's Bridge to a future meeting of the committee. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So Great. Thank you, Councillor Pascoe. So, that's been moved by Councillor Pascoe. Um, I said I would um, move it, but now I will second it because I thought there were concerns around. The committee table. I'm not sure that I actually support it, um, but I am, for the purpose of, of good uh, democratic debate, going to make sure it's up there. So, um, Councillor Wilson, are you on the board for debate or question? For debate? Okay. All right. So, let's debate this issue. So, Councillor Pascoe, you're the mover. Yeah, thank you. And I'd like to start first. And I hope, um, in terms of my arguments in the debate, I may convince you, Councillor O'Leary, to support it, and any others who might be uh, teetering on uh, realising that it probably needs a little bit of time for a rethink. Now, look, it's mind-boggling to me that we spend hundreds of thousands of dollars, some of it ratepayers and the rest of it taxpayers, and sometimes we push that to one side as if it's not really our money, but it is, in piecemeal redesigning of a very, very busy part of Hamilton Central City, when we have absolutely no evidence of the number of cyclists who will use it. And when I say redesign, we're going to bring the network down to one lane, and I suggest respectively to our expert 
that he doesn't think that will have any effect, it will, because all you need to do is, is, is hop into Ward Street and try to do a turn there from into Victoria Street at a reasonably busy time of the day, which is most of the time, and how difficult it is, and how much more difficult it will be if there's only one lane to turn it into. And secondly, resetting traffic lights only for cyclists and not for motor cars. And I see the number of, of cars that go down to Bryceford do a U turn so that they can get onto the bridge. So I think they're going to be pretty muffed around. But one of the one of the sad outcomes of this is that this is the very reason why the CBD as a destination is struggling. When we make travel in, out, and around the city more and more difficult by creating cycle lanes that up until now very, very few cycles. The other concern I have is that this report comes to us today and we're being asked tomorrow uh, to, to support um, this advancing to a start date in three months' time. And that's, that concerns me. I know that councils don't move at significant speed, but it seems in some areas we do and we will. And this is another reason why I think we need to just hold back and give the matter good and serious debate, not just talk to the cyclist community, but also talk to the motorists, talk to the AEA, talk to the police, talk to, to everyone who is affected or will be affected by um, this quite significant change. So um, I'm, I'm advocating now for a, a delay and, 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 and a chance to talk, and hopefully we'll come up with an outcome which will be beneficial to all the parties who need this. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Wilson. Yeah, um, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, look, I am going to take a different position uh, on this matter to my good friend, Councillor uh, Rob. Uh, I frequently uh, give Mark, uh, Councillor Mark, a bit of a hard time over uh, his memorial bridge uh, and the million odd dollars that was spent uh, in. Uh, uh, enabling it to be a shared space and to encourage cy uh, cyclists to use it. But where I'm at is we have already started this journey. We have already invested and we've already started to send a clear message that says CBD and roads are no longer the sole domain of cars whether they are EV or, or, or petrol or diesel, and that they have to start sharing with pedestrians and cyclists. And I'm yet to be convinced that we need to keep doing this on every bridge. But if there was one bridge where we should trial it, and if there was one step that would support in seeing this could work finally, it's on Claudelands because we need to go the next step and really see if we can make this work. Let's remind ourselves the current status quo. If you're heading north and you're in any type of vehicle, currently you cannot turn right onto Claudelands. So we're not taking anything away from those who are using a motor vehicle. We're simply empowering cyclists to use Claudelands as the preferred bridge across the river and we're making it safer for them. I would also go to say that people who are in motor cars who use Victoria Street to, to bisect the city going north or to south, actually, you should be using uh, uh, Anglesey or Tristram. Um, and a lot of people who are currently on Victoria Street aren't using that for that purpose. They're just using it to go north-south. And if I can encourage them to change their habit, I think that would be great. It would certainly free up access to uh, more shops on, uh, on Victoria Street. So I am convinced on balance that this is something we should try to do, that we give Mark's bridge one more chance. And if, we, <laughs> and if we see this working, we can look forward to seeing Sarah and Mark cycle in and out of town every day safely and others will follow and if they don't then councillor rob you've got your answer 
but we will have at least given it 100% effort. And in a year or two, we can sit back and say, Councillor Rob, you were right. Or Mark and Sarah were right. Let's have a look. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Bunting. Thank you. And I'd like to thank Councillor Wilson for that. You, you nailed it so articulately and well. Look, um, I find a delicious irony, in, or an upsetting irony, in, in the fact that, that Councillor Rob um, often complains that he doesn't see bikes on the Claudens Bridge. And when this solution comes up, a, a well thought up solution by experts, um, he opposes it. Um, so, yep, you'll, you'll still see no, car, no bikes on that bridge. Just this very morning, let me tell you, I was sitting on that bridge for a good long time because there was so much traffic because um, I was in my car because I didn't have time to go home and get my bike after dropping my kid off at school, but that's a whole new story. And I counted seven bikes on that bridge. Two of them were coming, and I watched them come across from the west to the east, and the only way they could get onto that bridge was along the footpath and along the side, and they were trapped off the road, so they couldn't actually use it. To turn right into that bridge at present, you have to go along, across the road, onto the pedestrian crossing, hope you don't hit any pedestrians on the way, and then jump onto the road to get across. It's unnatural and it's not right. Um, it's not being used well at the moment. I'm first to admit it, and I think Ewan's right. Let's, um, let's make this thing work uh, properly. Rob said um, an, expert, an expert says the difference will be marginal, but I disagree. I'm just going to leave that at that, actually. Um, Ewan is right. There is not, we're not taking anything away from people. At this point, if you're driving north along Victoria Street and the cycle lane turns green to go right, it's not going to change anything. You'll go along in phase and you'll go ahead just as quickly as you would have done if we hadn't done this. And uh, Councillor Pascoe was talking about those cars who are going to be very annoyed because they can't do a U-turn um, at uh, Little Bryce Street. There's a, there's a no U-turn sign there, Rob. They're not allowed to do it at the moment. It's illegal. Um, so I don't mind disappointing those people at all. Um, so, look, thank you for your support um, uh, so far, councillors. I really... And, look, what didn't come out in the questioning from um, Martin Parks was that this is the solution uh, after a series of solutions they've tried, and NZTA finally said, with this one, you've nailed it, you know, um, take that to a safety audit. So there's still work to be done, but this is the one that they have agreed with at, the, at this point. So, yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that before I do myself any damage. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor McPherson? Yeah, there's another delicious irony here. Um, a few months ago, this council approved work on a, I think I called it at a, my recent meeting, a bloody great roundabout, Dixon Road roundabout, for cars, $14 million worth. There was no discussion wanted by councillors about the design there, and it's always ironical to me that um, some councillors would love to debate cycleway and pedestrian crossing designs, but we never seem to worry about car designs on roads for cars. That's just a given. We let it happen. So I think we need to sort of examine our own uh, um, thinking here. Uh, I'm quite certain people have... Uh, legitimate concerns, there's nothing wrong with that, but to bring them to a meeting and discuss in detail designs of cycleways shows to me that those councillors are inconsistent at, at the very least. Uh, and I would never use the word hypocritical in relation to that because that's not, a, not parliamentary language. But uh, I think people really have to think about the, the context within which they discuss those sorts of issues. Ewan said it very well. I'm not going to repeat the uh, reasons for supporting this particular one. I don't support the resolution. I, um, I have my own concerns, but also had my place to raise them, and I'm not going to win all of those issues. I'm not going to try and second-guess the fine, detailed design here in a meeting, nor should we on any of these projects once we give people authority and the resource to go away and do them. Councillor Thompson. I wasn't going to speak, but I did want to respond um, firstly by thanking uh, the councillors for the support for getting on and just doing this. Um, but I did want to respond to a couple of comments around uh, 
the impact that this will have on the number of people using Claudelands Bridge and the number of people using it currently, we actually haven't received statistics or, that I know of on how many people are using the bridge. Um, and so I think that would be really helpful to actually inform our discussion because one of the things that um, I've noticed with, with cycleways is that because you're so efficient, there's no traffic drams, you often actually don't see people on there because they're not sitting there idling, waiting to turn or waiting for the traffic jam to move on. So, and I see a lot of people using the bridge. Personally, I find it has been a game changer. There's a few things, you know, I might complain about, um, but ultimately, it gives me the confidence to get from home to work more than once a day, sometimes several times a day, and I can tell my mum who worries constantly about my safety, that at least there's some cycling infrastructure between home and work, so don't worry, it's okay. Um, and the other thing is just, we still, in terms of waiting to see, will this suddenly have a whole influx of people using the bridge, unfortunately, we still need to get people connected from other places onto the bridge, and if you look at going along Grey Street, the cycle lane is literally this wide. Uh, if you look at coming along Heafy, we have cars parked in where a cycle lane could be, but it was actually removed because it was seen as being kind of ironic that you had green lines and car parks in the same lane. So my point being that uh, we won't see an overnight success even with this, but we are incrementally improving things, and this will make a difference. It will encourage people to use the bridge and make life a little easier for those using it, but we still need to do more to connect things in in order to see something more transformational in terms of the numbers using it. Um, but once again, thank you for the support for making this go ahead. Woohoo. Councillor Gallagher. Yeah, th thank you very much. And um, uh, one of the key determinants of whether people cycle or not is literally worried mothers and fathers. And, you know, and, and it's a very good uh, point that uh, Councillor Sarah made. Uh, the irony, of course, is uh, Councillor Rob's previous screenshot, you know, with the train, is exactly at that intersection in the 1950s when the train went across uh, Victoria Street and across the then Claudelands Bridge. And, of course, it's illustrative that cities evolve, all right? Transport patterns evolve. Um, and we, we now are serious, obviously, via the LTP as well, around multimodal, you know, that there are different forms um, of transport. I, I do actually want to give a very quick shout-out to Councillor Max Ferson's point when we talk about, you know, let's be consistent. If we're going to be really into sort of micromanaging this, these things, these cycleways, let's micromanage the entire transport uh, network. And... Um, you know, if we're talking about the 20-minute city, uh, we're talking about multimodal transport, uh, you know, there are a whole range of, of tools in which we can uh, do that. I actually personally, even as a motorist, like the Claudelands Bridge. It is no big hassle to be slowed down. I actually like that new kind of model as a multimodal um, transport link, just as my neighbourhood street with slow streets, street humps, making the sl streets slower in, the, in suburbs, not the principal streets, so that, you know, we can have multimodal with cycling and walking and all of that. So basically this is all about uh, safety and um, I'm going to be strongly supporting, the, well, I, 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 will be, I will be supporting the original intent. Uh, just in terms of tomorrow's process, obviously with a very open mind, uh, the Hearings and Engagement Committee will consider uh, the, you know, the proposal in terms of the bylaw and the regulatory uh, aspect. And I do want to assure that Councillor um, Pasco that there was, this went through the normal due process of, of noting and advertising as per any hearings and engagement, and obviously we'll, we'll apply a different set of criteria tomorrow, and we certainly, with a very open mind, will consider the, the, the regulatory aspect of this proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Pascoe, did you want to exercise a right of reply? Uh, oh yes, I do wish to. Yep. Look, for those of you who listen to me, um, I'm not opposing the change. All I'm asking for is to
time for fair debate and discussion rather than to get the rushed decision that we might, which might like, likely be the outcome similar to that described by Councillor Taylor uh, with the experience he, he uh, shared with us that they had recently in Dunedin. Um, to respond to Councillor Sarah, yeah, I agree. I've been asking for many, many, many months for statistics on bridge use by cyclists, and uh, I've yet to see any stats. So part of my concern is always around the evidence, and the evidence does support, and I think Councillor Dave probably overlooked that in his critique uh, during the debate, that Dixon Road was supported by not only demand but also evidence that the roundabout was getting a significant amount of use on a daily basis, hence the reason for the upgrade being necessary at that. And if you do look around our loading system in Hamilton, much of it is, <coughs> is the outcome of predetermined demand before any significant amounts of um, money is spent. What I'm hoping to ensure, and I know the criticism is still there, about how the changes to the uh, Claudens Bridge happened during the last term is to make sure that there's plenty of, um, there's plenty of um, uh, knowledge in our community and there's opportunities not only for the cyclists and the pedestrians to participate in this debate, which is what I sense has already happened, but also to involve uh, motorists who are, to, to a large extent, uh, shared users with cyclists and with pedestrians, and who, unfairly at the moment, pay the lion's share of all of those costs because it's funded from um, from petroleum tax. So that was my reason for the deferral, and it's not that I'm opposed to it, but I think I'd like to see some more evidence supporting uh, the change and what the likely outcomes are to be. Thank you, Councillor. Um, now we're going to go on the board for this vote. Um, Councillor Pascoe, if you can use your uh, either um, yes or no button, that would be helpful. So let's vote now. Was that you, Councillor Hamilton? <laughs> right, let's um, <coughs> vote again. Oh, no. Oh. Sorry. I just, yeah, I just. <laughs> I'm going to blame Ryan. <laughs> yeah. The motion is lost, and noting that Councillor Pascoe voted in favour. Okay, all right. So there'll be no deferral of that item. Okay, so we have one last motion, I think. This is why um, the general manager decided to have the day off. <laughs> Not that it was a day off for... Uh... Madam Chair, I've got a procedural question yes? regarding the next motion. Yes. Oh, no, I don't, well, this is gone. That's gone. Well, yep, here we go. So this is around the watershed. Yes, Councillor Wilson. Yeah, so my um, one is in relation to cost associated with adding a Mana Māori representative. I just want staff to explain to me uh, when councillors are asked to do extra work, it's part of our general role. And I just want staff to explain whether or not it triggers an additional meeting uh, fee and cost to the ratepayer for additional representation. Representation is becoming quite a hot topic. Yep, okay. Uh, and yep. I, I want to start just okay, raising so, some of that. Um, I think the only possible staff member in the room would be Amy to be able to answer that one. And she may not be able to. So, uh, generally speaking, when there is an additional role added, at that point, Mangai are within their rights to talk about a further contract variation. 
whether they believe it would right. be covered within their current role at the time, or and therefore they wouldn't request a variation, or whether they found that the hours required to do that role would require so th More. thank you. To you, Madam Chair, that, that for me is really helpful, and it's not specifically just on this item. It raises the whole spectre yep. that we frequently, in the pursuit of uh, democracy, quickly add Manga Māori, but we don't have a side discussion about actually the financial consequences and whether or not we've budgeted for it. So I wonder in this case, oh, Your Worship, uh, Mayor Paula, you would consider putting that aside until we've actually had that discussion and discuss the cost implication. And if we all agree, then we allocate more of a budget rather than just yep. having done that without having that meaningful discussion. I saw this, and I just want to check with Amy that this is appropriate, was that Māngai norm is already on the Environment Committee, so he wouldn't be expected to be paid more for attending something that he chose to attend on behalf of the Environment Committee. Is that correct? Yeah, that's unpopular. No, keep, no pressure. No, I thought, well, you know, we can't keep adding and adding, I agree. So I assume this was within... So you need to be specific. So in which so case, Your Worship, I, then... What, what we, would I do about that? We need to add an additional clause um, that... Um, this would not be an additional cost to the... We're just going to have clarification, that's my point. Because mm. otherwise we're unilaterally adding people and not having any comprehension as to the financial <coughs> ramifications. And if we're saying that it's assumed to be part of the current duty, then we just need to acknowledge that. Does this need to, does this need to be here, though? You could pick this up in a, uh, at a council meeting once those questions are asked. It might be a, a bit more appropriate than trying to discuss it here. Well, no, just just remove the motion and pick it up at um, you would be I don't want to move it. the council meeting. Well, we could we could just note that staff have come back with a recommendation around uh, representation for the um, for this committee at the next council meeting. So then anything can be worked out in terms of questions okay, so, and stuff. Okay, so all right, rather than is us trying a, to design this, this is, let's take yeah. a, let's take so a five minutes. So let's minute. take everything out after oh. representatives, and then we can discuss the detail at the council okay. meeting. Okay, yeah. perfect. So yep. Those two comments. Yeah. Councillor yeah. McPherson, you're seconding. Is, are you happy with that? Yeah. 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 Okay, let's do that. No more discussion on that. It's quite clear. Yeah. 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 All right, there we go. That's better. Um, Councillor Gallagher, question? Uh, no, I, for quite some time I've been trying to just get the, the language right. Request the establishment of council representatives. All right, this is an external committee, so you're putting council representatives. Yeah, yeah. All right, so you just put establishment of council representatives. All right. Mm -hmm. Yep, okay. Could you put my name on it so that it's clear when it will come back to us? If you're happy with that. Well, mm -hmm. it'll go to the next council meeting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Okay. All right. Um, uh, Mayor Southgate, your motion, would you like to um, speak to that? Thank you. The reason I'm doing this is um, just twofold, really. First of all, I, I um, was surprised when the catchment committees were disestablished, but that's within the rights of the Waikato Regional Council because immediately, and I was the person who, who represented council in the last term, I shall be on catchment committee now for about 15 years or maybe longer um, in one way or another. Um, and there's a lot that goes on there that relates to our budgets around our watersheds and council gets paid that money and does the work on behalf but we don't have very much voice around the allocation of budget attributed to the council other than through a technical, technical lens. And we've had very good staff sit alongside me at that meeting, so it's no criticism of them, but it's being able to have that political voice and apply some pressure to the priorities. Um, and Sarah rightly pointed out to me that um, um, when we rely only on technical view, we miss some crucial elements and we have a particular interest in the ecology not just the engineering management of our catchments pipes and 
bands and all those sort of things, we're actually interested in improving the biology of the area, the biodiversity, the water quality, and a whole heap more. So by having a voice around the table, that will enable us to have that conduit, um, and it's consistent with a lot of our aspirations about looking after the awa, and I think given that occasionally there are issues around discharge into waterways by accident and this and that. I think there again, it's really important to have a voice around the regional council table. And, you know, look, I hope you very much enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> I second that. I've been there, done that. Councillor Gallagher. Yeah, point of process. So I presume we're recommending to council. Council will tick this off, but it would be good to get an indication from the regional council that they will be open to having two council representatives on the body. And then I would hope, um, whether it's via a mayoral report or whatever, that you then recommend to Councillor Sarah and Mungai Norm that, that then are the two reps. So there's two things. You get regional council, do you agree yes or no to the two reps from the council? And if that's a yes, then I would assume with the appropriate discussion that councillors here among our norm then are the added people and we do it that way is that, is that my that's mm -hmm. that yeah and we we we, we um, get on with that and um, I, I will be very um, anticipate I will anticipate that the regional council will rep will receive this with with absolute open arms thank you councillor Thompson um, one of my concerns and the reason why uh, I'm raised this with Paula was just looking at some of the photos I was concerned by the way that we're carrying out this erosion control work that it's very much about a engineering uh, approach and we're not giving the right um, thought to what impact this hard infrastructure is actually having on the life within these streams um, and Ewan and Margaret and I heard from a freshwater scientist from the regional council a little while back last year and opened our eyes to not only what's within these streams but our impact uh, on them as a city um, and when I sent him these the photographs of what we've been doing he expressed concern that what we're doing is creating a net loss in biodiversity so we're not even having a neutral impact we are uh, having a causing a net loss on biodiversity potentially so I mean he doesn't have all the information but I'm I'm just keen to have more of a uh, overview from someone who can come from that, um, come with that kind of expertise to have, put another lens over how we approach this work so that we can actually end up ensuring that, that uh, the majority of the work that we're doing actually has a positive impact on our environment as well as achieving those erosion control goals. That, yeah. I think it's quite clear you'll be the right person. <laughs> um, right, that's all. Um, Mayor Southgate, it's your motion. Do you have a right of reply? Excellent. Okay, we'll put that to the vote. We'll go on the board. It's easier for the team if we do it on the board. We'll try and do it right this time, won't we, Councillor Hamilton? <laughs> hmm. Oh, no. Right, that's been carried unanimously. I'm doing your job for you. That's been carried unanimously. <sighs> right, that is the end of the general manager's report. Excellent. Right, let's move on to um, the last item in public, uh, which is on page 163, which is a recommendation from um, Councillor McPherson's Committee Strategic and Growth. Now, it's not actually in the agenda. It never made it on there, so it is... Is it at the end? wasn't at the end of mine. Yes. Is that? Is uh, I've updated and updated. Okay, I, d I did up. No, I don't believe you. <laughs> oh, mine goes to 164. I did update it. Anyway, I know what it is because it's here in email. Well, no, so, sorry, so can Have you got it on yours? No, it's just let me find it. Is this still fresh? Yeah. Just chuck it up on the board. Just so I can see. I have refreshed and refreshed. Yeah. It's really poor governance if you would actually contemplate moving something no one. Well, no, excuse me.
I didn't say that at all. No, I'm just making a general comment to us all. Okay, now I've got it. <laughs> all right, so we're on page one six. Three one six four one six five one six six no one six oh one six seven right okay so you get yeah look yep or you can just go up to the little um, no the squiggle for the update we'll just wait for everybody to catch up. Yeah. Has everyone got it? Has everyone, has everyone got it? The agenda's there. Or well, the agenda link is there. What I mean, what page is that on the I mean, I, I'm, I know I'm challenged on this area, but... Um, I'll get Amy to come I'm, over and help I'm, you. I'm, I'm coming in and I'm now on a strategic thing and I, I don't want to... We've just really got a few briefs here. Which, which item in the study committee? I mean, mate, here we are. Sorry. Was it Peacock? Was it road stopping in Peacock, wasn't it? I don't know, I can't even get there. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, it was passed unanimously, so yeah. you all bloody voted for it. That's the first thing. It was to do with the peacocks. Remember when we were discussing peacocks, uh, uh, Andrew Parsons explained with a map the areas we, the road that was crossing some property, and we had to make sure that the only bits that were left as road were those that were going to be used as road, and the rest were going to be stopped as being yep. roads in a legal sense. Yeah. Remember that sort of T shape, yeah. uh, cross shape thing? And, and, the, the and this, but it's required that the full council, oh, sorry, that this committee, that this committee. makes the decision yeah. because of our delegated authority. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm, uh, I'm moving. So, yeah. Jeff seconding. Yeah. Jeff's desperate like I am to yeah. leave. <laughs> uh, no, I said you couldn't leave if you read your okay. message. <laughs> the, uh... All right, so that's been moved and seconded. Um, there is no debate. <laughs> We've decided there is no debate. This is not a democratic <laughs> committee. <laughs> um, so we'll... we'll vote. All right, Martin, you've proved your point. Um, it's it's a sense of humour, Martin. I'm using a sense of humour, and we're being collegial. Don't start with me. Um, so it, it's it's been it's been moved and seconded. There is no debate. <laughs> All those, let's do it on the board for the team. It's easier for them. Um, we'll vote now. Yeah, do it on the board. Okay. The motion is carried unanimously. There we go. Thank you very much. Uh, I will move that we move now move into public excluded. Seconded by Councillor McPherson. Thank you. All those in favour? Any against? That's carried. All right. We will get the room organised. Dave, are you do you, you're going?